All right. Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have a very special, special, special guest. Mr. Andrew Huberman is with us. How are you? Yes. Great. Great to be here. Great to have you here, yes. man. Listen, we're super excited you came, dude. And, uh, you know, to all the people out there that are watching, they're probably like, wow. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've been talking about this for a while. We though. have. True, we yeah, have. True. So people that tune in will definitely know yeah. who you are. But you do have a vast past in skateboarding. Grew up in Embarcadero, San Francisco uh, stuff. But uh, professor of neuroscience at Stanford. Is that right? That is right. I got it right. Nice. Whew, God damn, that's, <laughs> that's right. that's only here, one I'm keeping. Uh, we're going to grade I got one. I'm taking notes. I'm not Listen, keeping score. I mean, <laughs> if there's one part of this interview that I was stressing on was that right there. But uh Dude, thank you so much for coming. This is going to be fucking yeah, fascinating. I Like Kelly said, we've been looking forward to this ever since you did that Jankum piece with Carl Watson. Yep. Right when I saw that, I'm like, I need this guy on the show. And I became a huge fan, subscribed to your podcast and listened to you. You've been on Joe Rogan a bunch of times. I went back and listened to those. Like, I've been trying to catch up, you know, so... Great privilege to have you here. Thank oh, you. Oh, well, Definitely. the privilege is mine. Thank you. Yes. I'm a fan. Thank I actually you. listened to the entire Mike Valley Damn. episode. Ooh, nice. I only learned how to say his name <laughs> properly because of that episode. Yes. I think I it was one of these people that just resisted ever saying his name at all in case I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that was a great episode. Thank Super you. interesting guy. Uh, love your show. I'll and I'm, appreciate I that. was listening to it long before all of... All of what you just said. I so. love it, man. Oh, it's Thank you so much. Did you listen to Mike V's in one sitting or did you have to break it up? I did. Bit? Actually, I was doing um, some work on the house. Okay. Plugged in and uh, listened to the whole, what was it, four it plus was like hours? It was like five hours. Yeah. But it, the whole thing is Mike V is such a great storyteller. You can mm -hmm. actually envision what he's saying in your head. You mm -hmm. could visualize it. So the whole thing was fascinating. Yeah. I, I loved it, man. It uh, was really great. And I'm old enough to remember the, you know, the, the street plant cover yeah the Asher. i was like you know i think it was probably the first cover i've ever seen of somebody really hands wait right. wait so let's 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 uh, where, where did you, you grew up in san francisco no no uh, south bay south bay yeah okay so right on the edge of like so when you say palo alto people think you know tech and it was sure, it, sure. we were from south palo alto wasn't poor but it was kind of more on the middle class end okay right on the mountain view border mm. so got into skateboarding gosh probably 11, 12 years old when everyone got one, when Bones, mm -hmm. Bones Brigade took off. Mm -hmm. And then uh, everyone quit uh, come, you know, like seventh, eighth grade, yeah. except me and another guy named Paul Zuwanich. Okay. He might, uh, rode for Earth. That same name sounds yeah. familiar. And for yeah. Think and for well, Race. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Think. Okay. So, yeah, so grew up there, mm -hmm. skateboarding in Palo Alto, Stanford, front five. It's a nice, you know, 10 set down the hallway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you dolly it? No, the five, yeah. No, oh, okay. the There's an eight <laughs> okay. stair near the chemistry building. My colleagues, if they ever hear this, are going to be like, this is where I walk around at work. Uh, there's a hubba <laughs> right now that's at um, the Paul Allen building. Uh -huh. Never did that. No? Uh, no. Wasn't there and, and probably wouldn't have anyway. So disclaimer on the skateboarding. I'd love to tell you that I was an amazing skateboarder. I was not. <laughs> okay. and, so, and so since skateboarders are incredibly cruel, if you... Uh, step out of your lane too much. I just want to be very clear. I was never slated to be one of the, the big guys, <laughs> um, but I enjoyed it. I loved it. It's very much, um, I feel like it was my first family outside my biological family. There you go. So okay. it was growing up going down to San Jose sessions, Joel ran sessions in Sunnyvale at that okay. time. And then Palo had a skate shop. And then it was really in late junior high, Paul, and this other kid who became a really good graffiti artist, they call him Orphan, Aaron Curry. We huh? started taking the train up to Embarcadero. Wow. And then Jacob Rosenberg went to my high school. Hmm. He, wow. he was the first one to get a driver's license, started going up to Embarcadero with Jacob, and then we can go down that yeah. rabbit hole. So grew up with Jacob been, and known him a long, long time. So you're at Embarcadero. What year was this? This was in the height of Embarcadero. Yeah. So, well, it was actually right as it was taking off. So quick note about Paul. So Paul Zwanich was just this kid. I grew up with him. I knew him since we were six. Mm -hmm. He was one of these guys that uh, was just an amazing athlete. He played soccer. You know, some other kids would get two or three goals. Paul would get like six goals. He just, they should have just taken him out. <laughs> like he's just unfair advantage. Um, just natural athlete, super smart. He was like a national merit finalist in, in math. He's just wow. good at everything. I, actually, I remember one time skating with Paul 
you know, just doing some feeble grinds on this curb at Sears that we would always hit up. And then I was like, you should just do feeble to backside tailside. It was kind of a joke. So first try, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, wow. back smith of the rail, first try, one of these guys, but he would get hurt a lot. He oh. didn't know how to fall. Mm. He was always damaging himself. So, but Paul sent a sponsor me tape, he did, to uh, Planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And Chris Miller called him up and was like, let's put you on. Wow. And so he was the first kid that we knew where then the Earth video comes out and you're like at your local skate shop and it's there our he friend, is. You know, it's right. kind of the first example of that. But basically what happened was we started going up to Embarcadero. And I remember the first time I rolled up there it was a big Sunday session. And then there were the, there was the greeting committee, what I still think of as the greeting committee. <laughs> okay. It was Carl, Car Nick Lockman, oh, and sweet. sorry, Sam, and Sam Smythe. They, gotcha. were, they were little. Uh -huh. They were physically smaller at that age. I don't know how they've grown. I mean, Carl, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, I'm, I'm assuming they've grown. So, um, but they would show up and they were super friendly and make jokes and, um, and some of the other people there weren't so friendly. So Carl pulled me aside early and he was like, hey, look, like that guy, he's cool if he's not drinking, but okay. if he's drinking, just that, that was Kelch. Okay, right? yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And so for whatever reason, I don't know why, because I wasn't particularly good skateboarder. I, I didn't, you know, there's nothing about me that would lead to this, but Kelch was always cool to me. Oh, he yeah. was always really cool to me. I don't know why. So that helped. Yeah. Yeah. The mayor of Embarcadero yeah. was cool. Yeah. I was like, what's up, what's up? And then I got to know <laughs> Greg Carroll a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would go up there. And then when Jacob started filming, that's when I started going up there a lot. Right. So I was around for a lot of filming, uh, doing my thing over on the side, not, not much of anything, just trying really hard, okay. but not getting uh, too far. <laughs> but I was there, like we, I would can remember a long full day or even a weekend of filming Javante oh in the city up at Lincoln High School and uh, Ricky Bassetta's part for New Deal. Damn. So I was like front and center for all those. Um, I became good friends with Danny Sargent. Danny nice. Sargent. Yeah. Nicest dude. Amazing. Yeah, dude. nicest guy. And um, so I saw a lot of that. And then there were the big, crazy mayhem sessions with the van. We won't talk about all the craziness <laughs> that was happening in there. It just, I mean, there, it was sure. kind of a, it was insane. And actually the one story that kind of leaps to mind about just how crazy it was there. I, I don't want to get anyone in trouble for this, but uh, I remember Paul had started riding, I think it was for Think or some other company it wasn't earth mm -hmm. and we got up there and wingding oh yeah my cow the filmer yeah uh no oh no, skateboarder oh kind of like skateboarder yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah korean yeah. guy it was yeah, kind yeah. of thick i'm right? thinking of a different guy yeah. he rolled up and uh said to paul he was like hey you know give me a quarter and paul's like i don't have a quarter and he just just you know decked paul out and paul's like we're on the same team and he kicked him. No way. <laughs> and, Paul, and so Paul got took his skateboard, took the 7F bus home. And I tell that story because I'm sure Wingding is a, is a very nice, kind adult <laughs> now. Sure. But it was a rough place. Yeah. But it was kind of rough in the, in the sense, like, once you made it past that first wall, mm. you were good. Right. I mean, you couldn't leave anything on the ground. It was going to get taken. But once you made it past that first wall, it was kind of a, a hazing process that I everyone did. went through. And so... Um, yeah, I saw some amazing, amazing skateboarding. The Henry Sanchez and his oh my first God. burst. And then, um, you know, just kind of fast forward and then put close the hatch on on this was at some point I started hanging around Deluxe. Okay. And um, a guy named Steve Ruge, who's still in the scene. Steve Ruge. Yeah, Steve. Shrugi. Okay. Shrugi. Um, yeah, Shrugi. He was the one actually who pulled me aside and said, hey, like, we'll, we'll start giving you a little bit of this and that. Mm, you know, it's a little bit of product. But he said to me, I'll never forget this. It broke my heart. <laughs> but he said, just remember, you're never going to be one of the big guys. Wow. And I remember thinking, ugh. But then it was, actually was really useful because it did two things. It, it reminded me to enjoy skateboarding because uh -huh. everyone at that point was just so sponsor hungry. Yeah, sure. Okay. Making sure. tapes and just, you know, because our friends were getting boards and showing, you know, people you were hanging out with were suddenly showing up yeah. in magazines and whatnot. So he said that, and then uh, Jeff Clint, who unfortunately yeah. died, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he was cool. Jim was cool. Okay. Jim Thibault. Jim, I mean, Thibault. Nicest. Course, Jim yeah. was cool. Jim, Jim was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, you know, he is the he is the true uh, heart and soul of skateboarding, oh, and, yeah. and you sort of have to be in it to know what that uh, means. Hundred percent, yeah. of course. So oh, you guys yeah. all know what that means. But then basically that was it. And then um, I can talk about how I got out of it later. But uh, and I have. I could spend, you know, 10 hours of all the things I remember very clearly. I have a little bit of a, a, 
I don't have a pure photographic memory. You see snapshots. And I have a really good memory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's um, and there was some amazing, just amazing skateboarding, yeah. and it, it was incredible to see. Well, back then, I mean, people were inventing tricks, yeah. especially Henry. Really? He was just going around inventing tricks. You know, he was a super aggro guy too. He was. I don't know where he got all that energy. I think he was angry about something. Okay. Well, it worked just, to his advantage. Oh, big time! Well, he showed it on, displayed that on the skateboard. Yeah. Amazingly, for oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, it was. People would sit down, start drinking. Um, hanging out, making jokes, and he would just get, you know, 50, 50 takes at the block for everyone else's two. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. It was kind of funny because there was really a pecking order there. When you think about it, it was, it was, um, you know, you had Kelch and then, but I think Mike Carroll and Henry Sanchez had sort of like first rights on the yeah. blocks. So, okay. Like if they were pushing right. toward them, people wouldn't push toward them. <laughs> right, right. And if you showed up from out of town and you had barged in on that, then it Ouch. got ugly. Good luck. So, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's also those blocks, I don't think people remember how round they They're were. Super round. Like the edges weren't, mm -hmm. you could almost ride up them. Right. Yeah. Right, they were just like so <laughs> round. And that's when, we, you know, Carol would do like the no side crook, no side crook, you know, and I'm like, and I'm trying it on like a red curb and I'm like, I can't get this. What they had, but you must've had super loose trucks, yeah, you know, like, yeah, Definitely. it was, it was great. And there were these really enormous sessions that would happen on Sundays, like hundreds of kids. And there were, uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was incredible. Yeah. 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 And, um, and there were all, all the characters, all the people who hung out there who didn't skateboard. Sure. And they were really the ones that caused the most mischief. They mm -hmm. were the ones that were always like stealing tourist handbags and yeah. mm -hmm. starting fights and selling skateboard gear. Mm -hmm. It was like they had the little shop going. <laughs> right, 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 and then there yeah. was the tantrum era. Yeah, oh, oh, like, and oh, I don't yeah. know if that was like rubbish heap and focusing boards, but there's this thing about tantrums that that actually I, always bothered me. Yeah. I never understood why mm. grown-ish <laughs> People would throw tantrums. I went through a phase. Oh, yeah. I you? went through a little yeah. phase. Yeah, I did. I did. Sure. I did. Sure. Because you know, in your heart of hearts, that you could do something, and it's it's it can't be me. It's a board. You yeah. know, and you focus. You get a little frustrated. Yeah, you throw the board. But I got out of that because then I would see other people do it and I'd be like, "Geez, that's what I look like. Like, holy yeah. shit, I look like an idiot." Mm -hmm. Well, know? don't you think trying the same thing over and over, you would casually go that way of yeah. like don't they call that the, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting a different result but getting the same yeah no absolutely and and look uh no judgment it was just there just became this thing where like throwing a tantrum was associated with i don't know being a good skateboarder oh. or something. <laughs> right, right i think it was I also break oh, there was this saying. whole thing yeah. that i'm glad passed it was i remember javante told me he said uh he didn't like me very much by the okay. way i just want to be clear <laughs> <laughs> But amazing skateboarder. He didn't like a lot of people. That's okay. I mean, we got a lot. I mean, I get it. You know, I, I was I was younger than most everybody else, mm. and I I wasn't a city kid as much as they were just then. And uh, you know, it makes sense. But still, to this day, one of my favorite skateboarders to watch. Right? Yeah, he could make good. anything look amazing. Oh my God. And I used to study it. Like, what is it that he does? And I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. I just I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out. Does he keep his upper body stationary? What it is? But. He could pop everything much higher, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember he told me, he said, you know, I never wear the same shirt twice. And wow. he was serious. <laughs> he just, he never wears it. He'd finish it out, done. You know, so there was this whole thing around clothes and then breaking boards. There was this kind of, kind of a gluttony in skateboarding. And I think it was because you had a lot of poor city kids mm. who suddenly were getting product and it was just a way of feeling wealthy. Oh, yeah. from, I, think, I think that's what it was. That even yeah. translated down to like myself and like seeing all these guys with like the crispy white wheels and the new board and the white shirts. Like I was trying to replicate all that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I was trying to have all the new stuff like constantly, you know. Luckily we had people around here that were selling shit, you know, like yeah, Costin yeah. and Gavin and all that stuff. So, <laughs> But Embarcadero was, was incredible and, and look for every... Uh, story about a fight or this or that. There was just so much incredible skateboarding, especially then they started doing the back to the city contests mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. in the fountains. And um, actually, I remember first back to the city. Everyone was down in Barcadero. I mean, Derdick showed up, and I was like, you know, who is this person? Like, if someone was new, you, you felt it, you know, right? They, right, you right. Because they they didn't quite know how to how to slide in, mm -hmm. and. Um, there was a guy skateboarding around doing daffies and he had an Afro and he had an Israel Hatikva shirt. And I was like, this guy's going to get murdered. <laughs> it was Gons. Oh shit. What? And I remember thinking like, this guy's going to get murdered. And then I looked at him. I was like, 
that's gone. Because, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know, if you showed up kind of kind of goofy. Right. You just you worried for that person. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, he was fine. Um, no, it's just gone. It's just it's gone. Just gone. <laughs> it's just gone. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the Back to the City contests were when, um, that's actually when Jacob, you know, because he'd always filmed. Mm -hmm. But that's actually when he started really plugging into the whole Ternaski thing right. and all of those shifts that were happening around who rode for who. And then we started going down to trade shows in San Diego and those were insane, <laughs> wild, wild, wild parties. Hell yeah. And yeah, um, yeah, so it all it kind of flows together. But I, I mean, I was skateboarding. I was doing the castle contest. Okay. And that kind of thing. Oh. How would you do? Uh -huh. eh, mm -hmm. eh, okay. I would do this. At least you enter. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, so out of pure disclosure, so would do the freestyle and would do the, cause I like flat ground. Oh, nice. You know? Okay. And I would okay. do the street and just get n murdered in both. But yeah. <laughs> Long um, fun, I refuse right? to yeah. go on up on a rail. I just Dead felt like, the, the, like I don't, I just don't never understood standing on the side of the board yeah. or on the truck. And the, um, and look, I had the desire, I had the drive. Mm -hmm. It's actually mm -hmm. is a little bit of what led me into neuroscience, frankly, is I had the drive, I had the will, like in my mind, I could do it all, mm -hmm. but then I kept getting hurt. And right. I think what happened was my body wasn't strong enough yet, quite honestly. Yeah. Like I'm kind of a larger dude now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. for a skateboarder, I would be, but um, I just didn't have the pop. I didn't have it. And I don't know if I hadn't hit puberty yet properly or, sure. or what was happening. I just didn't have the athleticism. Interesting. And so that was very frustrating, constantly mm -hmm. getting hurt, constantly getting yeah. hurt. But I was going to those contests and then, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many stories in the lab. I was hanging out with Billy Waldman a lot. Wow. We met at the Linda Vista Voice Club. There was a, a, a contest there. Everyone left, and we were the only two people that didn't have a ride. So this is crazy. Frank Hawk took us. He said, you guys, I was like 14. I don't know how old Billy was. Um, and he said, well, where are you guys going to go? I'm like, I don't know. I'll take the bus back to the Bay Area or something. He was like, you can't do that. You know, you're a minor. <laughs> Frank was like a very orderly guy. So he took us to their house. So we stayed in Tony Hawk's room. Whoa. We were like 14, all these tro the trophies for days, just what? everywhere. Yeah. And Billy was robbing the place blown. Oh, oh my so, gosh. And I'm like, you can't do that. They were really nice. And I'll never forget Tony's parents. Um, we had dinner with them and they drank black coffee after dinner. Oh. And so, the, and then they took us to Tony's house the next day and he was there with Ray Underhill and all this. So we're like, I was just wow. a kid getting yeah. thrown into all this. And, um, a couple years ago when Tony's dad died, I actually wrote to him. And when his mom passed away recently, I wrote to him and said, you know, I was taken to your house. Your parents were super kind to me. They took me in. I think they must've flown me home. I don't know how I got wow. home. Yeah. And, um, and I said, and if you don't believe this story, your parents used to drink coffee after dinner. And that's when he wrote back and was like, absolutely. That's, that's the thing. So, you know, I think people forget that there were a few people whose parents were actually involved in skateboarding, mm -hmm. but I wasn't one of those. I was one of the feral EMB kids. Got you. Um, and the last I'll say about it is I was good friends with LeVar. He started coming down to Palo Alto. Paul had a, had a ramp in his backyard. Okay. Paul eventually started riding for Think. First mm -hmm. it was Earth. Dogtown, okay. Red Dog. Oh, yeah. We had this friend, Johnny Ferrer, who rode for Dogtown too. Unfortunately, he passed away too, mm -hmm. like a lot of those guys. But he, um, he had a ramp in his backyard. And so it was Dogtown and then Think. And then Paul started working for Fausto. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was the thing. And then I eventually got into other things. Mm. I got hurt and got into, um, just stopped skateboarding for a long time. Would kind of pop back into it. Mm -hmm. In my 30s, I started riding Transition. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's funny how when your body gets stronger, you grow. For sure. You can become more resilient. I worked out a few kind of things. My feet were always messed up. Once I worked that out, then I was like, I can actually do this a hmm. bit. You know, I'm never going to, you know, kill it. But, right, right. And it got fun again. And, um, and then... A lot of people don't know this, but I actually worked for Thrasher for a while. Oh, you really? really? What were you doing? So when I was a postdoc, so in graduate school, you basically go, and I got an undergrad degree in biology and okay. neuroscience, and then did a master's in endocrinology type stuff. Then did a PhD, which is the doctorate thing, and mm -hmm. then you do a postdoc, which is kind of like a residency. So okay. a lot of schooling. Um, and when I was a postdoc, I was getting kind of bummed out at, constantly being on campuses. I love doing science, but I just was missing something. Mm. And so a guy named Mark Whiteley, you mm -hmm. know Mark Whiteley? Oh, yep. yeah, magazine. Absolutely. Yeah, grew up with Mark. So I wrote to him and said, um, can I take some pictures, do some music stuff for Slap? So I started doing that for Slap and then got picked up by the guys upstairs at Thrasher. Wow. So got to interact with Jake a lot. Um, and 
yeah, I was writing under a slightly different name, but did did a lot of the music stuff for Thrasher and Slap. Amazing. For wow. So from 2005 to about 2010, I was writing for Thrasher a wow. bunch. Go up there, meet all, you know, grumpiest office in the world. <laughs> you know, go up there. I knew Schmitty since we were kids. But by the way, Schmitty, I've said hello to you so many times and Schmitty's like, hmm. Oh really? What? <laughs> I've known him since I was like this big. Yeah. Now he probably, I love that guy. <laughs> and, or, you, you know, or um, guy who was an editor there, Ryan Henry mm. was super nice. And then uh, Phelps, yeah. who actually was cool to me. I'm, you know, he, which is, was surprising. Pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. Damn. So, so I've been kind of in and out of it for sure. years and I occasionally still get out and ride, but um, mm -hmm. that that's a long monologue, but uh, that's sort of how I got into it, out of it. And I, all the while I've watched Jacob do what he did with yeah, Waiting for Lightning yeah. and with Danny and um, who I'm in touch with again now. I was at a, yeah, I got to see that whole Red Dragons crew, yeah, Shrugi yeah. and Sluggo. And I mean, there are millions of stories, but so I was in it, but you know, I knew that I wasn't really going to be a professional skateboarder. Okay. So I never found my niche in the mm. industry. Right, 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 right. So I went and did other things. And, I mean, it sounds you know, like you had like school and all this stuff. When, when you were a kid skateboarding, did you have that learning and science in you already? Or did you discover that like later? Yeah, so the, the quick version of this is that uh, my dad's a scientist. Oh. So, and he's from, he's first generation immigrant. He's from South America. So I grew up with a lot of discussion of science in my home. And then my parents divorced, my dad moved out. And so that's right about when I got into skateboarding, right? Because mm. it's perfect sport if your parents aren't mm -hmm. around. Yeah. No coaches, no parents, which go. frankly is kind of what makes it a great sport to me. Yeah. I mean, look, if your parent is involved in your skateboarding, terrific. But what I love about it, or what I loved about it is you just did your thing. Yeah. You know, com yeah. you know, I'd push out the door at 11 o'clock at night and go do my thing. Yeah. You know? It's just such a way to express yourself that you didn't have to wait around for anybody else. Absolutely. So but I was exposed to science. I've always liked biology, hmm. animals and um, animal behavior and this kind of thing. And I've always been pretty good with my hands, um, maybe better than I was with my feet for skateboarding. So I mm -hmm. um, always wanted to do something where I could work with my hands a little mm. bit. And neuroscience, well, let's just say I've dissected a lot of brains of a lot of different species of animals wow. and humans and this kind okay. of thing. So um, I didn't really do that well in high school. Okay. I was really into the skateboarding thing. And then when I got hurt, I kept breaking my left foot five uh, times, geez. five times. And I wasn't into video games. So there was like, there was nothing to do. Huh? So I got a girlfriend. Okay. You know, and you know, and that was good. Uh, got a girlfriend, got a driver's license and really asked myself, you know, what am I going to do with my life? Obviously not going to be a professional skateboarder. Mm. Didn't really see myself working at deluxe or high speed. I loved it up there. I love those guys, but I just didn't know what I would do. Hmm. Um, and I wasn't part of that set and things were kind of moving on. Paul was hanging around a lot with Phil Shaw. Oh, I guess I'm okay. mentioning all the, all the guys that passed away. Gosh, I guess I, skateboarding's lost a lot of people. A yeah, lot. Yeah, a lot of people. Know, and when you definitely. talk about that, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, part of that is just a sheer volume thing. When yes. you know, I should tell people this, what, the longer you live, the more people you're going to know that commit suicide, die and have cancer and unfortunate things. Sure. But if you also think how many people do I know that are, have had kids recently mm -hmm. or got married or are doing great. Yeah. What you find is that it's actually, the numbers are skewed towards the positive stuff. It's just that negative stuff sticks out in it our does. mind. That's totally. just the way the brain yeah. is wired. Yeah. Yeah. We're wired yeah. to think about a suicide as, you know, it takes up our whole consciousness, right? right? Yeah. That's just about the brain trying to keep itself safe. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you can remember a bad event. Yeah in what we call one trial learning. Hmm. It only takes eating a food once and getting sick, Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You're not gonna touch it again unless you really wanna overcome that. Sure. Whereas learning other stuff, to, it's it's harder. Oh. So, huh. um, but basically had this girlfriend, she went off to college in Santa Barbara and um, I wanted to be near her. She was kind of like my family because my biological family was very fractured. Mm. My dad was gone, my mom was doing her thing and so I started hanging out down there. Okay. And then I eventually decided to take the, what it, whatever it was, the SAT, it's, it's, I know, it's amazing. I, I had barely <laughs> gone to class. And, um, and at the time I remember, because I'd hurt myself, there was a, a football coach at our school who said, you know, you have to get yourself stronger. This is the issue. I couldn't do one pull up. Right. I was just weak. I don't know what it was. I don't think it was genetics. I think it was just stressed and weak. I don't know, my body was weak. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I started running and I started working out, mm. which no skateboarders did. Mm -hmm. Back then, right. Yeah, oh right. my goodness. Mm -hmm. if, I mean, if you said that you lifted weights or you ran, right. I used to run through the Stanford campus and the front five sessions were really big, hundreds of kids. And I used to, I was worried I'd get spotted running. <laughs> You know, I was really like, I was like a closeted runner. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I noticed that I had a really solid drive. Hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. I could, to this day, like I'm, I'm not in great shape right now for running, but if I realized, unlike skateboarding, where you can actually be stopped by physical damage, mm. with running, you just keep running. Mm, I mean, yeah. my legs aren't gonna dissolve sure. eventually, but that's, you know, on the, <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. So started running, doing a little bit of weightlifting. I got really into Thai boxing. And that's actually because of a skateboarder. There was a guy, unfortunately, he's dead too. Goodness. Oh, no. Pat yeah. Brennan. Pat yeah. Brennan? You know Pat Brennan? Yeah, Powell. Car yeah. Car so I was going down to, yeah. to uh, I went to the first Quartermaster Cup. I remember that. Mm. Um, but I met Pat at one of the indoor sessions when they moved it inside. Mm -hmm. I think I went down there with Jacob and Salman and a bunch of those guys. And um, I met Pat and he was like, yeah, I'm getting really into kickboxing. He was into like kickboxing and weightlifting and fast cars. And we were friends, he was the nicest guy. And so guy. when I got back, I started um, Thai boxing. And I um, had like one or two fights, recreational fights. And I was like, this is fun. Like I actually can do this. Unlike skateboarding where I felt like I was always getting damaged. Sure. I couldn't do it. I'd see Henry or Mike do something. I'm like backside tails, I'd do it. And it just like, <laughs> just crush myself. I'm like, it didn't have it. So um, Thai boxing was like, you could drill stuff, right? You're not getting tossed to the concrete all the time. So mm -hmm. got into that a little bit. And then when I went down to Santa Barbara, uh, I realized, well, if I want to stay here, I ought to do something. And eventually I enrolled and got in and that's when I got hooked on biology. Interesting. Wow. But while I was down there, a little bit of skateboarding weave in, um, my girlfriend who we, at the time we were always breaking up and getting back together, she lived in this house with a lot of attractive women. Mm -hmm. And so, Ty, sorry, Ty, he's married now. Ty Evans and this whole crew of Santa Barbara Church of Skating guys started living at that house. <laughs> okay, I mean, so, I don't blame them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And they introduced me to a lot of local girls and so they were good friends to have, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like, mm -hmm. I think the guy's name was, um, was it a John Nye? John, uh, John uh, definitely Asian guy. Nagai. You could do all the tail grab Nagai? one foot on. Nagai. Nagai. George the guy? Yeah. George the guy. George the guy. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of, again, an, another sort of like uh, freestyle guy crossed over the street a little bit when okay, that yeah. started happening. Lines got blurry there for a little bit. It was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> with, with the whole skateboarding, the whole freestyle to street thing. Um, and, I, and actually that reminds me, I'd, I had been going to skate camp. I was going to the Visalia skate okay. camp. Mm -hmm. So we didn't pay. Yeah, All the Embarcadero guys would just show up yeah. and just stay. Like no one was monitoring anything. And the, and the counselors were all across the lake at the girls oh, camp. Okay. Yeah, this was the, it's amazing that camp anyone ever survived. Good parents would pay good money, send their kids there. And yeah. basically there were no, there were no counselors. It was, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> really a mess for sure. Yeah, it was oh, chaos. Oh, yeah. It was but great. fun at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was another guy that rode for Spitfire. And to be clear, I didn't really ride for them. They were just doing it out of sympathy. They would give me some, <laughs> some wheels now and again. Uh, this guy, Andres Camacho. H Street video, pressure mm -hmm. flip on transition to mm -hmm. fakie. And I remember LeVar came up to me. He's like, you got to start doing all your stuff on transition. And it was the first time I'd heard about a pressure flip. So like, what a terrible, terrible idea yeah. to start doing pressure flips, right? So <laughs> people brought pressure flips from skate camp. It was this Camacho guy yeah, from okay. Texas. You know, leave it to the freestylers to just mess up everything. <laughs> And brought that back to Embarcadero. There was a short season of pressure flips oh, when, I it, yeah. when it was permissible. Yeah, yeah. And then it- I fell victim. Yeah, well, then it was a punishable offense. <laughs> Look, they're, they're fun to do. They are fun are to they? do. I, I, like, I throw out a pressure flip all you know, occasionally. Hmm. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> yeah, there's a time and place. If you're at Embarcadero, for sure. Yeah. They, well, nowadays, anything. You could, yeah. you could do anything. You could do anything. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's yeah, I've noticed acceptable. that. Yeah, I, I've noticed that. Acceptable. It's it's sort of like certain, everything's in now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back then, there were rules. You know, how, how you dressed, how you spoke, what you did. I mean, you could not go outside the lane line. Sure. Yeah. And I remember as I tr started getting out of skateboarding and into neuroscience, mm -hmm. school and biology and getting really excited about that, of course, kept an eye on it. And I had still had friends in it. So Paul Zwanich was coming down to Santa Barbara with um, Jamie Telch. I grew up with him. He's still, in, he's still around when he, he was little. So we called him Squirt, then he got big. And then Paul married a guy named Dave Rosenberg's sister. So these are all these like San Jose skateboarders. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I would pay attention to what people were doing. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it seemed like things were starting to expand in terms of suddenly you saw more, you know, like in videos you started hearing hip hop. It wasn't just punk rock music. Mm -hmm. There was more room. All of a sudden, right. like the, the people started dressing differently, and and that's actually when I think skateboarding got better. Mm -hmm. And had I gotten into it then, it actually would have been a good thing because I think when I got into it, it was either you stuffed yourself through this little keyhole or you weren't allowed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I watched it grow and flourish over the years. And even when I was in graduate school, I eventually went off and did a, a PhD and I would do experiments late at night and I would, you know, watch skateboard movies in the back, you know, I'd let them play or and I was always keeping an eye on what mm -hmm. was happening. Do you still keep an eye on it? Do you follow the Instagram? I watch the nine club. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. I, I do. I mean, Instagram years later, when I started teaching science on Instagram, mm -hmm. just out of a kind of, a, I have sort of a scientific Tourette's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, if I see something or hear something exciting, I just want to tell the world. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's like yeah. the coolest thing. We all have this technology and it's this biology. And I just feel like people should know what's, yeah. what's literally locked inside them because it's pretty easy to access once mm -hmm, you know what it is. Mm -hmm. So start teaching on Instagram and then can't help yourself. You know, you yeah. check the Thrasher feed. Sure. Um, and actually the guy who it is the operations manager for my lab, mm -hmm. incredible guy, his name is Gary Hall. He basically is the reason my lab still functions as well as it does. He's incredibly good. He years ago was a professional skateboarder for Santa Cruz, mm. wrote transition, freestyle and street. Wow. Kind of like they did, he was a generation above us, okay. right? Okay. And knew a lot of people at NHS and still does and still skates big transition, full pipe mm. stuff. He's good friends with Stevie and, and you know, he okay. can throw down. So, sure. you know, he can throw down on Big Vert. He can throw down on the flat ground. Love He's that. kind of that, that all ATV. around skateboarder, yeah. ATV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, wa and walking by him on the street, you wouldn't know he was a skateboarder, but put him on a skateboard and he's super Kills comfy. Wow. So I always kept tabs yeah. um, and then, but Instagram definitely helped. Helps. Yeah. And then I look at what people are doing oh, and God. I don't know these guys, but you know, I look at like what Clay Kreiner is oh doing. My God. Oh yeah. Perfect example. Yeah. Jeez. Just, I was trying to think of, you know, in the world of genetics, you would think, okay, so who crossed with who crossed with who would give you a Clay Kreiner? I feel like it's sort of like a, like a Danny way with a John Cardiel and then there's something else in there. And, they, and then they birth a child and you do some gene editing and you get Clay Cry. <laughs> yeah. I love the way that you analyze this. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't try to think about it. It just kind of happens. <laughs> yeah. um, and then of course, you know, still in touch with Jacob. And then years later when starting a podcast was thinking about, you know, how do we do a podcast? How do we teach science? How do we make it look cool? Fun. But yeah, make it look fun, but yeah. also have, a, have the right tone. And uh, I'd met Mike Blayback at um, a, actually a backyard party at Jacob's. Hmm. And um, our, our first interaction was kind of interesting. Um, I don't think he'd mind if I say this, sorry, Mike, uh, in advance. But I met him, I was like, oh yeah, playback, playback photo. I'm like, of course, you know, and, um, and Mike a Midwest guy, right? I know you guys should have, him. he's like, he's like, I have a question. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he's like, I think I need to get in shape. And at the time he was carrying like an extra 50 or 60 pounds mm -hmm. of weight, not to embarrass you, Mike, but you had what he called himself a pile. So <laughs> yeah. you were not a pile, you're still vertical, but. Sit right. And, um, and then he said, uh, yeah, you know, I just don't feel good, you know, smoking too much, drinking mm -hmm. too much, I just don't feel good. And people ask me this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. Like, what do I do? How do I sleep better? How do I stop stressing? And usually I find that people are not serious, meaning they, they want an answer, but they don't want to do the work. Right. Yeah. right. So I was like, look, it's really simple. Can you not eat until 2 PM? Mm. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not hungry in the morning. I'm like, great. Drink coffee, drink water. And in the morning, get up and just get on either run or get on some exercise bike and just pedal like someone's chasing you with a syringe full of poison. Right in the morning after when you wake up. Yeah, or, you know, after a few minutes, okay. you know, give okay. yourself some time, <laughs> go to the bathroom. I mean, I mean, that, so no, you're no, serious. I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, well, I have questions yeah. about this Early because day. I'm yeah. the opposite, right? Yeah. I, I, I find it hard for me to gain weight and stuff like that. So please continue right. though. I got a, this question yeah. after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, and... The reason I felt any, uh, you know, uh, sense of agency in giving this information is, yeah, I've done a bunch of different things in neuroscience related to vision and neuroplasticity and stress, but I, I've done some work 
and continue to do some work with special operations and some of these groups that are interested in how you use biology to improve human performance mm -hmm. over long periods of time. Okay. So, you know, basketball players, you know, yes, military, yes. you know, these kinds of things. Um, and so there's a pretty straightforward formula where when you've been asleep all night, your fuel reserves, like you've got fuel in your fat. Well, you, you guys don't have any of that, but you got fuel in your fat. You've got fuel in your muscles that can mm -hmm. be burned and you've got fuel in your liver. It's called glycogen. And mm -hmm. when you wake up early, all of that is as low as it's going to be because you haven't been eating anything. Got you. And so if you exercise, then your body starts dropping into your body fat stores quicker. So what I was trying to give Mike was a, was a tool that would allow him to see some results really quickly. Oh. So I said, look, do it fasted mm -hmm. and then continue to hydrate and then eat your first meal in the afternoon. And I said, and also, it, you know, do you like drinking? And he was like, well, I don't know. I drink mostly because it kind of sets me straight up here. And I was like, well, we can talk about the stuff to kind of set your head level. I mean, he wasn't spun out. He just obviously was medicating with alcohol. Sure. Um, and not in a severe way, because he's fully functional. He's an amazing photographer, yeah, raised two kids. Yeah. And so I sure, want to be sure. clear about what we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, I didn't detect anything dysfunctional about him. He was just reporting to me that he wanted some assistance. Right. So I said, you know, would you be willing to drop the drinking or, or you know, pair it back? Yeah. And he said, sure. So, okay, so explain that. And I said, look, and you know, here's my number just, um, for the anxiety and stress management, uh, I'll give you some breathing, some respiration tools that work really well mm -hmm. that are not, you know, woo mysticism. Mm -hmm. It's not, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you to meditate 30 minutes a day, although that's a cool practice too. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some tools you can use in real time as you're working hard and okay. dealing with whatever it is you're dealing with in life. Okay, so that ends, the conversation ends, you know, and um, Greg Hunt was there too, okay. I knew from growing yeah. up. Yeah. Um, talked to Greg a little bit and then, a year later, Mike reach out, reaches out and says, hey man, thanks for all that stuff you gave me. I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, I lost 60 pounds and I <laughs> haven't had a sip of alcohol since we talked last wow. and feeling pretty good. Damn. And I was like, so how did you do it? He's like, well, I get on the bike and I pedal as hard as I can and like someone chasing me with a <laughs> syringe full of poison. Sure, sure. And, uh, I was like, he remembered. Yeah. You know, and I was so impressed, like very few people can just take the the menu and just do it, Go. right? Right. And maybe it's his Midwest upbringing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did get gifted a AK rifle for his ninth birthday, living in Ohio, Jeez. growing up. I mean, okay. that. I mean, Mike's. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but some people yeah. also, I feel like, reach that point in their life where they're like, "It's time. This yeah. is a, right. whether it's smoking yeah. or drinking. Like they, you can't quit smoking unless you're mentally prepared to, right? It's like there's that 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 switch. Look, I always say, the beauty of being young is that neuroplasticity, your nervous system's ability to change mm -hmm. in response to experience to learn things, mm -hmm. is at its absolute peak. Mm -hmm. However, you don't have that much control over your life when you're young, right? Especially when you're really young. As you get older, it gets harder to change your nervous system, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. But the advantage you have is that you can direct exactly what changes you want to happen. Mm. And so there are two different ways to change your nervous system, depending on whether or not you're younger or you're older. And it's not like the gate drops right at 25. Okay. It just tapers off. But Mike made the decision. And I always say, you, you, if somebody is an adult, you can't change their mind. Right. You literally can't. They have to make the decision to do that. And he flipped the switch. He flipped it. He flipped it and he's still there. And um, I think he feels much better yeah. physically. And then, and I feel guilty for this, but then I started getting him really hyped about all this stuff. I was like, oh, there's, I started sending him athletic greens. I was like, yeah, drink yeah, athletic yeah, greens yeah. and, and uh, check this shit. out. You know, you can, uh, uh, I have a, one of those barrel saunas. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I like just like sweating all that out. Mm -hmm. And it, when you sit in the sauna, your heart beats mm -hmm. and, your, and your vessels dilate. So it's a little bit like, exercise, which most skateboarders don't need because they're really active. Got you. But as you get older, you want to keep all the plumbing working really yeah. well. So I was like, I'm going to send you a sauna. I'm going to send you a cold dunk. Cause I got, you know who the Iceman Wim Hof is? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah. So in 2016, I heard about this guy, Wim Hof, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. bought a plane ticket, went to Spain and just started hanging out with Wim and doing wow. crazy breathing and ice bath stuff. Wim's down just to kick it? Yeah, Wim should get, we get Wim here. Okay, wow. let's do it. We'll do yeah. some breathing yeah. exercises. Strongest human being I've ever met. Sure, guy, sure. We were hiking in the Pyrenees, French Pyrenees, uh, mm -hmm. excuse me, Spanish Pyrenees, we were in Spain. 
and there was a cliff. We get to the top of this cliff that we never should have climbed in the first place. And he went to the edge and did a one arm planche. The guy's like 60 years old, one arm planche hanging out over what? the valley. Yeah. And then, you know, literally like this. And then just kind of pops back on and his daughter was like, that makes me so nervous oh my every yeah. time he does it. But he's figured out how to use adrenaline, mm -hmm. which generally makes you kind of shaky, like stress when you're shaking, that's because adrenaline is trying to get you to move. What Wim understands is that under those circumstances, the last thing you want to do is to try and stay still. When you're stressed, you need to do something with your breathing or with your body in order to funnel that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think um, skateboarders understand this too. I mean, you look at the kid who's like trying to drop in on virgins up there for a half an hour. It's the worst. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's the worst to watch, but it's all. <laughs> yeah. I think but there was, everybody's rooting him for him. Yeah. You know? well, did, wasn't there that, that one video of a dad pushed his kid in and then I think got went to jail? Really? For, for I don't remember that. Really? really? Yeah. In danger yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. In because he pushed him and it yeah. didn't, yeah, it didn't work out. Well, yeah. you know, he can't he push somebody. Well, you my first him? drop in on Vert, I had no choice. That guy, Gary Hall, because mm. Gary Hall, the guy from my lab, growing up, he ran the skateboard shop in Palo Alto. And it was old school rules. So we went to page mill ramp, Mike McIntyre's ramp. It was, you guys probably, no, anyway, no, no, no. it was off page mill road. There are a bunch of old, old photos of bones brigade types on there. And I put my tail down and Gary said, I'm going to ride back and forth across the deck twice. And the third time I'm pushing you in. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I dropped oh, in the first wow. time. You had to, you had to get, uh, he was coming at me. I yeah, just yeah, went yeah, in to yeah, avoid getting yeah. pushed in. It's a true ramp. And I think that's actually the, the way to do it. Yeah. 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 Well, you got it like a band aid. rip, rip it. it off. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, Take the ride. Going yeah. back to the blayback thing and him losing weight, because he he did tell the story when he came here off camera. He was like, "Yeah, I did this whole thing and blah blah blah." I mean, Mike looks great nowadays. I looks mean, great not that he didn't. Yeah, you know, and years sleep, ago. But... He's done all this stuff to work on his sleep. Yeah. Also, like I always say, and we can talk about these tools. Like the, if you want a better life in any way, mentally, physically, mm -hmm. let's say you're already killing it, you want to do even better, sleep. The, the way, and you can get better at sleeping. Yeah, that's my, I, I have a problem. I, I go through spurts and I'm sure everybody does with yeah, sleeping well, issues sure. and stuff like that. And you know, there's all kind of types of things, but in my case, there's a, like I, I'm skinny, I guess my metabolism, my mom's skinny, my dad's skinny, like just in, good my, in my nature. If you had to pick. Right, if I yeah. had to pick for sure. Especially but for skateboarding. I'd love to, you know, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, but there's all this stuff really? out you there. Want to put on I would love to. Yeah. Of, of solid weight. Just anything, yeah. Just anything, yeah. In my ass, <laughs> even just yeah. in my ass, just whatever. Even yeah. just a yeah. little pocket of fat. Yeah. 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 One, butt, yeah. if one butt cheek was ten pounds, I'd be I'd be content. No, but I'm local lately. We can get ten pounds of you of solid that of solid mass okay. that will help you skateboard better. That's in. Two months. D okay, hey, I'll, do I'm, that, I'm down hey, for the hey, challenge. I'm down for the challenge. He's been trying to do this for. He's been saying this for a long time. Well, listen, I bought a pull-up bar. I did all. But here's the thing: <laughs> there is. You so bought it, or you, did you actually pull up, or you just bought the? I got bar? to like maybe five, and then I put it in the closet. But that's beside the point, though. Um, <laughs> you carry it around. It's there's about so much. I got it in the closet. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's in the closet. But it, but there's so much information about losing weight, right? right and to right. gain weight, right. it's a whole. You know, we right. talked to Nick Dompiero. Oh, eat this, do this, breakfast. You know, this, that, and the other. Is he into to fitness? Fitness. Or He's a very fitness. He's a big yes. dude. Big dude. Yeah, yeah. works no, out. Funny. It's always weird to me when. When skateboarders work out, mm -hmm, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving them a hard time. Obviously, you know. I oh, he's not, killing it though. I mean, yeah. I enjoy. I figured out pretty early on for whatever reason, didn't have the pop for skateboarding mm -hmm. in my legs at that age. But I mean, I can look at a weight and I grow. Yeah, there must be some genetic thing. It's got to be some myostatin gene or one of these genes that controls cell growth. Okay. Um, but I. For the longest time, I always thought, you know, the worst thing you can be in skateboarding is muscular. Like that, you don't want that. That's ridiculous. I remember seeing Sluggo the first time. If you have a head the size of Sluggo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then you can be a big dude. Sure. Right? Sure. But if you're big and you don't have the big dome. Yeah. I got a small yeah. head. You know, well, so I got I got it needs we'll, to. We'll distribute it evenly. Okay. Okay. But yeah. I remember Jacob got into working out. Yeah. Because uh, Jacob had some extra weight and he started pedaling like a maniac. Mm -hmm. I said, the pedaling is, is great on the bike and everything, but you know, you do want to do resistance training because also old guys start complaining about their back. I'm very mm -hmm. proud of the fact that my back is, is solid, mostly because you have to do certain things for your back. So we go to the gym and I think it was somewhere here in LA. I walk through and see. Brendan Beeble. Yeah. Is that how you yeah. pronounce his yeah, last yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. enormous. Yeah. Yeah. Dude turned sideways like this thick. Totally. Yeah. Big so dude. I was like, whoa. Well, he's he still made, skateboard he's like made this? A, he's made a change. Can he's you skateboard yeah. that way? 
he, he was, was doing it for really? he was but he wasn't working he wasn't out how he big. was now yeah. right, right right and it was right. starting to look a little bit different you know because I mean? yeah. like he when you start skating like this it's just like you're but you could tell he was getting more out of skating and into that yes. right hey look right. when right. people are doing something in the direction of their health mm -hmm. i'm a fan yeah. i mean i'm also just a brennan beeble skateboarding he's, fan he's right he's amazing yeah. from so sacto sick. right yeah, yeah. Yep. The, the sacto scene was always oh, kind of crazy Stephon there was a Janowski. guy from up there jeff toland do you guys remember that i know a couple like, like five well. five people who listen to this Roger, podcast Roger, Roger. who do you yeah. write for he wrote for think as well think yeah. okay, five okay. people listen to this podcast would be like oh yeah jeff toland um but the sacto scene always had um some really hard players. Like mm -hmm. they just dug in deep on everything. And Still, also the Far East Bays yeah. guys, like the Wade Spire and all the guys oh, out from, man. all right. the places where it's boiling hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But in any case, uh, you know, Beeble, I saw him there, I was like, dude's big. And that's when I realized, you know, skateboarders are hitting that age where they have this question, do they start taking care of themselves mm. or not? Right. And, you know, I think it, no matter who you are, it, it's probably not a good idea to be really large. It's actually, any large animal lives less long hmm. than the smaller version of that same animal. Okay. So in the animal kingdom, little animals like honeybees survive. And, and, the, the, and well, and um, hummingbirds and honeybees, they have short life compared to like whales. Sure, sure. But within a species, like you yeah. look at dogs, uh -huh. Great Danes have a short life, yeah. Yeah. a little Shih Tzu or whatever that, I, no disrespect yeah, yeah. to the Shih Tzu, <laughs> but you know, and the yeah. Shih Tzus, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> Shih I think that is the yeah. current yeah. <laughs> pronunciation. Yeah. They have a uh, much longer life. Ah. And it's because of the dosing of this one gene called insulin growth factor. Okay. So uh, Andre the Giant died young. Mm. Uh, people that have acromegaly, you know, the, the forehead yes. ridge and the huge Big. hands, they don't live very long mm -hmm. because all their organs are huge. And they're make, they're, they have to produce a lot of yeah. stuff to keep the body running, yeah. right? Most everything that extends your life yeah. has to do with keeping a lighter weight. Okay. You okay. are very likely to live longer well, thank you. than most people okay. because of, okay. of being slightly, for in your words, underweight. Right. Um, now, there's nothing I, wrong with putting on a little bit of extra muscle if you want to be stronger for whatever reason. Yeah. But when you get past a certain point, it does shorten your life. There's right. no question right. about it because it's like mm -hmm. a second puberty. Yeah. Right. And the fastest rate of aging that you will ever go through at any stage mm -hmm. is puberty. Underweight is a, is, a, is a wrong word. I think for me, it's more about like, I just feel skinny, right? I feel uncomfortable sometimes you look because right, I'm, but you look right. I, like you I look, look right. Like you can tell if somebody's the, the right size. Okay. Right. You don't yeah, look yeah, unhealthy yeah, yeah, yeah. or anything. No, yeah. right. I, mean, we're yeah, yeah. I don't feel from, unhealthy. We're not far from Gold's Gym, right? Right. And there you'll see guys that they look right, even though they're huge. Yeah. And then other guys, it looks like a little head. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanna, <laughs> you know? I want to avoid that. Like, yeah, a little head that. on wide shoulders right. is always right. bad. I would love to see that with Chris though, but yeah, let's not get Little head. We don't need extreme. Yeah, no, no. One thing that's good if people want to protect their body skateboarding, and actually Danny was early to this. And my friend Laird Hamilton was early mm -hmm. to this too. Some of it might've been genetic, but those dudes have big, big necks. Now Danny- a skinny neck. Well, Danny broke his neck, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, I remember when that happened. That Danny broke his neck, but most people don't train their like, neck. Yeah. And there are certain parts of their body where you're really vulnerable. And skateboarders are two areas of the body that regardless of the you know aesthetic thing that if you want a long life in skateboarding, you want to keep your neck strong. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to do that. Don't do bridges because mm -hmm. eventually the discs go and it happens know. overnight and then you're, you're messed up. But basically just like resistance from side to side with a towel, it's not going to make your neck big, but okay. having the ability to not um, whiplash Whip. yourself yeah, is, you. okay. and it also protects your, your brains. Oh, and so all the F1 drivers, they train their neck. Hard, oh, because they're, right? yeah. Right, you got to stabilize. And then the other one is the front of your shin. Hmm. is this anterior tibialis muscle. It's the one that raises your toe up towards okay. your knee. Okay. And had I known this a long time ago, there might've been hope for me in skateboarding, but it gives you a ton of stability in the knee and allows you to jump much higher. So just with the, in the yeah. front of the, in the front of the shit. Right. And there's a guy on Instagram who shows how to train this up and it's totally cost free because it's on Instagram. He's uh -huh. called literally, the, well, his real name is Ben Parker, uh, but, his uh, handle on Instagram is knees over toes guy. Okay. And he, he always had bad knees and he started training that anterior tib thing, but doing hmm. these toe raises and he shows you how to do it. You just lean against the wall. You don't need a gym or anything. You raise that. That's going to create a ton of stability in the knee and he can dunk a basketball at like 45 years old or wow. 42 years old. And he's up above the rim. How tall is he? Again? Yeah. 
Uh, he can't be. Su- I don't know how tall he is exactly, yeah. but he he's not super tall. He's seven okay. six. No. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well. And and so so much of skateboarding, right, is about knees over toes. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, in every other sport, you probably, well, I don't know if you know, but they always say, don't let your knees travel out above your toes. You're going to tear your ACL. Mm-hmm. Everything in skateboarding mm-hmm. is land. Right. You know, knees over toes, knees over toes. Sure, sure. And you can prevent a lot of injuries in the back. And in the elbows and in any kind of um, land and slam type event, and this is you see a lot of this in kind of any ballistic training, military training, where people are jumping down off things. Mm. If you create stability in that lower part of the leg with the anterior tib, Mm -hmm. you are giving yourself a ton of longevity, and you're giving yourself a tremendous amount of hop and presumably pop. Okay. Wow. So, so like. The other day, I was actually trying to dunk a basketball, and I can just, I could touch the rim. Okay. How? Yeah, I was like, how do I learn how to jump higher? So, uh, check out knees over toes. Okay. Um, ben is actually from Sacramento. He's living down this way uh, these days, and um, I don't know him personally. We've mm. only talked once or twice by text because I wrote to him and just said, I think what you're doing is amazing. I, you know, I'm a huge fan of people giving health and fitness and mental health information sure. mm-hmm. for free online, mm-hmm. and um, he can get people dunking. Wow. You'll, you will that's, be dunking a basketball. That's you know? crazy. Well, yeah. I, I'm making I, promises I probably shouldn't make. But <laughs> no, that's amazing. Not, maybe no, a tennis ball. You yeah. know? No, but I, I always trip because I, I won't, maybe in my prime, like five years ago, I, I, I had a lot of pop. Me too. I did. And I could never dunk a basketball though. Mm. And I always thought it was like, how can I get up onto this, but I can't yeah, right. do that. Well, right. it's the springiness and the way he trains it also is, you know, he'll get up on a ladder and it's, so in, in any kind of movement, any muscle contraction, there's what's called the concentric movement like this, like moving the wrist towards the shoulders, like bicep, and then moving it away. When you lower something, it's called the eccentric movement. Mm-hmm. And the eccentric movement is actually what makes you sore, but when you, when you do that very slowly, but it's what builds strength and explosiveness in the muscles the most. It's like loading a spring. And there's a million neural, there's a muscle spindle and all this stuff I could spin off into, into the geekiness of this, but I won't. So a lot of the way that he trains this is to have people jump off something and break their fall oh. and to let their knees travel over their toes. Now mm. it's a buildup that's right, gradual. Right. And as I say this, I'm realizing, you know, one of the beautiful things about skateboarding is that there aren't training protocols or, you know, people doing pushups or mm-hmm. sit-ups on the side. And that's what's so refreshing about it. So I do want to mm-hmm. acknowledge that everything I'm saying could potentially ruin skateboarding, <laughs> but, but uh, I also hope that it would help people skateboard longer or for the kid that is like me back when who just somehow structurally or whatever was going on i didn't have the Mm -hmm. i had the mental oomph but not the physical throughput that that can help there are things that you can do Mm. just like blayback was able to drop drop 60 pounds and 60 pounds is a lot of weight a lot of weight to pick up a 60 pound dumbbell that's half a meter yeah yeah you know how he lost you know what literally how he lost it people don't know this do you know how you get rid of fat in your body how breathing you breathe it It gets converted Mm. into a carbon dioxide and you offload it okay yeah so for all of you taking laxatives to lose weight that's not so i need to i need to hold hold my breath to gain weight (laughs) (laughs) but not too long yeah 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 well we can do some breathing stuff it'd be kind of weird if we did breathing on the nine club but i my lab does do a lot of work on how you can use respiration breathing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and vision how you view things in order to adjust your level of fear, adjust your level of stress. We can, mm. we can throw Yeah, I mean, that, that's oh, what you were, yeah. you know, kind of covering in the Jankum piece. Mm-hmm. And that's why I thought it was so fascinating because, I mean, our mind is so important, it's right? Powerful, and powerful. powerful. Yeah. And here's a question. I mean, this is totally off skateboarding and topic, but you always hear like, we only use like 10% of our brain. Yeah. Is that true? Or is that, how, how do you? Okay, so yes and that's a good thing. Mm. The reason it's a good thing is that you wouldn't want to use more than 10% because mm. the way the brain, and we really should say the nervous system. Okay. So you've got your, your brain, your eyes, which are part of your brain. Mm-hmm. They're hanging out outside your skull, but they are part of your brain. They're the only piece of your brain that's outside your skull okay. if you're healthy. And then you have all the connections through your spinal cord and connections to your muscles. And all of that is controlled by the nervous system. Okay. Okay. The reason I say that is because the way that the nervous system can do incredible things like fakey 360 flip up the courthouse, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. You know, so things like that is by coordinated firing of neurons. Neurons communicate by electricity and chemicals. Mm -hmm. Okay, neurons, just a nerve cell. By coordinated firing of those nerve cells and 
everything else not firing. So the way that you learn, let, let, let's pick a trick. Okay. Uh, are you working on anything now? Probably um, not. What, Andrew, what? I'm working <laughs> on a lot of stuff. No, I mean, um, yeah, besides nine club. But the, I mean, uh, if you want to pick a trick, how about a nolly heel flip? Okay, nolly heel flip. Sure. Okay, so the first time you try a nolly heel flip, mm -hmm. unless you're one of these people that's just tremendously gifted yeah. and it just, you know. I can relate. <laughs> it, it uh, you do something and it doesn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. You do something again and it doesn't happen. You do something and eventually, usually after a few nights sleep, you land it, it's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then after a few days or weeks, it's locked in. Consistent. Right. What happened for you to go from unable to do nollie heel flip to able to do a nollie heel flip is that all the incorrect commands of your nervous system had to be eliminated. Hmm. So the process of motor learning always involves removal of incorrect commands and movements. And that means taking 35% of your nervous system being engaged to 20, 25, and eventually 10. So what I'm trying to say is that basically if you want specific portions of your nervous system to be activated at once, and that's gonna represent maybe just 10% or even 5% of what's possible to be mm -hmm, activated. Mm -hmm. But that's where you get the precision of movement. When babies don't have this precision of movement. So when a baby comes out and is just flopping there like a potato bug, yeah, right? Yeah, I hate the reason is bugs. all the motor neurons, all the commands are getting sent down in mass. It's like a, it's like a traffic jam. It's just a, it's chaos. Sure. Yeah. And then over time, they learn how to coordinate their movements mainly by suppressing certain aspects of movement. Oh. <laughs> and and to and we could talk about the process of going from learning so into so when you start off you're unskilled mm -hmm. as you go from let's say from unable to do nollie heel flip to able to do nollie heel flip mm -hmm. then you become skilled in the nollie heel flip yeah then as you go from skilled to what we would call mastery mastery is where you can start to introduce some variable conditions you can do it on bricks right just incidentally first time all those EMB guys yeah. came down to a indoor quartermaster cup it was hilarious. I'm sorry, but I just remember they were sliding all over the place. <laughs> there are no bricks. They'd never actually ridden on a smooth surface. Okay. Yeah. Right? It was like brown marble benches was like only this big. Yeah. That was the only smooth surface they ever ridden in all of San Francisco. So I remember they were just sliding, Kelcher screaming. I was like, where are my bricks? Where are my bricks? <laughs> are my bricks? So once you have mastery, then you can start to make the adjustments to be able to do nollie heel flip on different surfaces. Mm -hmm. You can even talk to somebody. You could hold a camera while you do it. Yep. You probably text if you're you or mm -hmm. you or you. Do it down some stairs. Yeah, do it down some stairs. Yeah. And so then what you're starting to introduce is you're starting to do some variability in the movement. You're starting to introduce that back in. Mm. And then there's a fourth level of any trick or any, any kind of motor or even mental type of ability. And that's what we call mastery. Uh, excuse me, sorry, it's uh, unskilled to skilled, skilled to mastery, mm -hmm. then mastery to what we call virtuosity. Virtuosity. And virtuosity is a very interesting and not often discussed aspect of motor learning. Okay. Think about somebody in skateboarding who has true virtuosity. Um, Shane O'Neill. Ishad. 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 Where? Shane O'Neill. Right. Shane O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah. I would just get totally silent know. on this. No, I know. I'm just like, I'm, just, I'm captivated by you, everything you're saying right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't want to I don't know what that actually means. No. Guy, Mar Guy, Guy Mariano. Guy Mariano. Guy Mariano. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Guy Mariano, right? right. right. Let's, just, let's just face it. Guy, sure. I knew Guy when he was little. And he was coming around to uh, when him and Rudy and Gabriel were coming around the Reno Nationals, hung out with those guys a ton. And Guy, back then, even though it was this big, just had, he had the something, right? Yeah, I don't know what it was. Definitely. Who knows? But sure. something there. Okay, he has true virtuosity. He can make anything look amazing, mm -hmm. right? And the stuff mm -hmm. he's putting out in his little oh my stories. <laughs> my only regret is that those disappear after I know, 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, I know. He's like sliding into, Ooh. I was on these, it's no, crazy. But you can he's record those, you can hmm? record them. They're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever he's doing is amazing. Uh, virtuosity, what you see in a guy Mariano, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Or somebody like that, is that they start introducing uncertainty. So going from unskilled to skilled is all about reducing uncertainty, right? When you learn how to drive a car, you learn how to skateboard, and ollie heel flip, it's about reducing uncertainty, about limiting the amount of your nervous system that's activated. When you eventually get good at something, you master it, then little by little, you start introducing uncertainty. And that's where virtuosity starts to emerge. Are you doing this consciously or unconsciously? Probably not. Well, right. I guess it depends on who you are, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it, I will say this, and this is a little bit of an editorial, I don't have any specific scientific experiment to back this up. But when someone has everything on lock and they're not introducing that uncertainty, it looks lame. 
Oh. When you see guys are just like bang, bang, right, bang, right. bang, you know, like, like robot like, yeah, it's yeah. boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, boring yeah, yeah. because it, it's cool they can do it. But when we talk about style, what right, we're talking right. about is that lack of uncertainty. And sometimes the uncertainty, it's it's something a different way of carrying the body, like you know, like Kareem Campbell, like somehow he's always got like one arm thrown across his body and then it's like, you know, there's something about the way he moves his arms. Yeah. Other people do that and it looks ridiculous. Right. It works for him, yeah. right? It looks super explosive just the way he skates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Never forget first time seeing him do like, you know, kick flick fake, he just on a bank and you go, looks amazing, so yeah. right? Cause so you good. sort of didn't expect it to be done that way. Man. And you're not thinking about, it, so it's not really conscious, right? Right. right? And then there are people who I feel like their entire you know, their entire time on skateboarding is virtuosity. And, I, and Gons comes to mind, mm. right? Because with Gons, you, you really don't know what he's gonna do next. And I'm not sure he knows what he's gonna do <laughs> next. <laughs> and that's the beauty of virtuosity. Huh. And, and I don't surf, I think I went out once. It's a weird sport. Unlike skateboarding where everyone's friendly, you show up at, or mostly friendly, you show up at a skate park and you, if you don't know how to skate, like people are at least friendly, you try and surf. Yeah, get yeah. out the water. No, they'll beat you yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're yeah. not gonna beat me up, but they'll beat you right. up. They'll beat, <laughs> beat me up? Okay. Not That's you, why I don't not surf. You oh, okay, not okay, you okay. specifically. I'm not, not you specifically. After I put on watch, the, watch, I'm gonna get my ass kicked by a no, bunch no. of surfers <laughs> this <laughs> afternoon. After I put on yeah. the 10 or 15, pet, we'll, we'll see, okay? Yeah. Yeah. What's weird, because the whole essence of their sport is supposed to be this like really laid back, chill thing, the ocean and like this whole thing. And then they'll beat you up and slash you tires. Think there's like one. It's like a one. That's what they say. Set. I see a lot of waves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're yeah. right. There now waves, the virtuosity yeah. thing. Uh, would it be uh, like equivalent to like confidence? Or well, you definitely kind of have to. In, it is inviting uncertainty. So mm -hmm. let's pick an example. Um, well, okay. In, in you look fairness, at Nigel Houston, right? I mean, he is just. It doesn't look like this man has any fear. He goes for it. If you're just watching him in person, it's like this, wow. Yeah. It's like crazy. Yeah. How is he this good? I don't know. I grew up in Davis. There's not much crime there. Jesus no no fear. No, I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I think that, um, look, there are a lot of, we're getting into the kind of subjective stuff that's sure, a little bit sure. hard to pinpoint, but I think any skateboarder would say, okay, yeah, Guy Mariano, Mark mm -hmm. Gonzalez. Yep there's this uncertainty about it. And like a guy I always think is, it, you know, sometimes when he's riding out of things, it almost looks like he's gonna fall and then he does another trick yeah. or he rides away in a way that looks incredible. Yeah. Okay. So virtuosity is when you have so much mastery over something that you're not just trying to make it, you're, you're sort of inviting in that kind of looseness and that relaxed, yeah. lo you know, it's 5% relaxed. Yeah. It's not you know, right. super laid back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and then when people try and do this, it never works. When people are like, oh, just try and look casual, it yeah, just looks yeah, stupid yeah. because there's <laughs> something, it's at that edge of really trying and also allowing whatever to happen. Yes. And that's where really the magic takes place, right? And this is true of other things too. This is true in basketball, um, in fairness to surfers, like, you know, Laird Hamilton, he wants the wave he can't quite understand mm. because he's mastered all the ones that, you know, he doesn't want to see the same thing he's seen before. Yeah, sure, sure. He wants uncertainty, he wants fear mm. and just a tiny bit. And so I think that motor learning involves this progressive narrowing of the amount of your nervous system that you're using and then kind of opening that up a little bit again. Mm. That's what it's mm. about. And so if you activated 50 or 100% of your brain and nervous system, we have a name for that, it's called an epileptic seizure. When everything is active at once, it's you know, that's an epileptic seizure. You don't want that. Right. So everything about learning is about precision and limiting the amount of activation. And to learn things faster, you essentially need two things. You need focus. You really have to be focused on what you're doing. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean visually focused but you have to be paying attention to some of the cues because what your nervous system is amazing organ, right? Your heart pumps blood, but your nervous system, its job is to figure out statistics, meaning how often when I do this, does my foot land on the, like right above the front truck? Yeah. yeah how often yeah. when I do this, and but you're not thinking about it consciously, your nervous system right. is problem solving in the background. Mm -hmm. And so what's amazing about that is you, the main way to learn is focus and just increase the number of repetitions. Mm. Now what the thing, maybe this goes back to the why tantrums are bad. When you have a failure, mm -hmm. when you, Nolly heel flipping is just, just nothing. Failures, they create the sense of frustration, but that's your forebrain, the part of your brain that can pay attention, turning on to pay more attention on the next try. Okay. If you made it 
and made it again, you wouldn't pay attention, mm -hmm. right? So if you wanna learn something, you have to pay attention and when that frustration kicks in, mm. that's when you don't start throwing tantrums. That's when you know that the next trial is the one where you actually can learn the most. Sure. Whether sure. or not you make it or not. And then over time, as you start getting better at it, that's usually because you had enough focused repetitions where you're really trying, 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 focus, 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 mm -hmm. failing, failing, failing. And then all of the changes in the nervous system that allow you to do something that you once could not do occur during sleep and what we call non-sleep deep rest. So your brain rewires while you're asleep. It takes the events of the previous day and it makes adjustments in its connectivity literally the connections between neurons, sometimes new neurons, but mostly the connectivity between neurons. And then you step out on it, it's like, <laughs> not well, that, that, that's the th part of it, right? It's like, you could be trying a trick for seven hours one day, right. you come back the next day and you do it really quickly, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And there's also the part, it's a phenomenal, it's like, it's all, you, you try a trick for the first time, you know, maybe like kick flip front crook, fucking, you know, nollie back heel out or whatever the case may be, you almost do it first try, right? Because maybe you're not trying or anything, then you get into it, okay, you're filming, let's get this, and then six hours later, you're still trying it, but that first attempt mm -hmm. was it, you got into it, you flipped it, you right. didn't land it. Right. right. Well, the mind is a tricky thing because it can cause problems or it can make things better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but then, you know, you have those, not to cut you off, but then you have those moments where you, you black out yep. and you make it and you're like, I just did that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's a name for that in the Buddhist community or in the high performance community even, they call that wordlessness. When you're not in a mental script that involves language. Right, I mean, a lot of skateboarding it kind of defi it defies language. We have names for all the different tricks, right? Mm -hmm. and all the different things you could do, but it defies language. Uh, there's a, a guy, Josh Whiteskin. He was the small kid that grew up in Washington Square Park and would observe the people playing chess, mm. and he became the, um, the he was essentially the character that was uh, played in the search for Bobby Fischer. Okay. Wow. Became a grandmaster in, mm. in chess and then went off and got into something called Tai Chi hands, which is a little bit more combative than kind of just the movement Tai Chi. Mm. And then now he's into stand up paddle boarding and he got really into Jiu Jitsu. And he's done, there's a great book that he wrote called The Art of Learning. Mm -hmm. And it talks about this, how through repetition and through creating times when you're in wordlessness, that's also when the nervous system can change and function really well. So to make this practical, if you've been working on something, working on something, working on something, and then you're pushing home at the end of the day, mm -hmm. just push home. Just let the brain go idle because you're giving it an opportunity to start making the adjustments. Mm. If you're like, ah, oh, nolly of flip, nolly of flip, nolly yeah, of flip. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? It consumes you. Yeah. Exactly. And this is part, you know, and there's a little bit of, of shame in this, I, I confess, because when I was younger, Maybe that was another mistake that I made was just trying to like train skateboarding, that super neurotic, gotta get it, gotta get yeah, it, gotta yeah, get it. Yeah. When you're having fun yeah. and you're relaxed, that's when it comes together. Yes. And so this is, you know, and nowadays I think things are probably different. I think maybe more people are not obsessed with getting good. Mm -hmm. That's the one challenge with seeing a lot of your friends get really good. You, you feel like I should be better at this than I am. When in fact, there's so much to be enjoyed and to benefit from just skateboarding. Right. Mm -hmm. And also I always say, if you wanna get really good at anything, science, skateboarding, just do it for 10 years. There you go. Yeah. Just do it right. for 10 years. It's a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Do it for 10 years, don't get incarcerated, don't get an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> don't have kids too early, yeah. but, and then, uh, and you'll be all right. Yeah. But I think that, a good example, and I'm, I'm huge fans of these guys, even though I haven't met them in person, but I've talked to them on, uh, by phone, is um, Dan Mancina, mm -hmm. blind skateboarder. Yep, yep, yep. Right, we got in touch um, after, I think it was after Rogan, the first Rogan, when I mentioned Dan, mm -hmm. I didn't know him. We've had some conversations. Blind people have a lot of issues with their sleep mm. because lights are, and, and sunlight is a lot of the ways that uh, the body and brain know when to sleep. Mm -hmm. And they don't have that cue because he's right. actually missing an eye. He, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And then um, Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins. Someone yeah. reached out and was like, you got to talk to Nick Mullins. So talk to Nick Mullins. So Nick is blind, right? And it's a, I mean, it's, I don't want to call it a tragedy because he's thriving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and amazing. And he's a great dad. And he's also a great skateboarder. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's doing it purely by feel. Right. Right. And if you think about how challenging it is to walk out your door in the morning and you have to take in all that information, imagine being completely in the dark. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's doing all of this by feel. Now, granted, he had some time on transition and on the flat and skateboarding beforehand. Mm -hmm. But he's feeling his way through it. And he told me, he said, the main tool that he uses is when he starts feeling that stress, which is just adrenaline. You got the, your kidneys are back here and your lower back. And on top of them, you have your adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. And when you feel stressed or excited, adrenaline is released in your system. 
half a second, 500 milliseconds, bam. Hmm. Fills your system, makes you shake, makes you wanna move. It contracts your focus, so it's hard to kind of take in the big picture. Hmm. He's learned how to lower his level of what we call autonomic arousal. He's learned how to calm himself enough and just feel where he is on the board. And I mean, his blunt game is better yeah. than a lot of sighted oh, yeah. guys, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and also he can fall and falling for him is a, is a very uncertain thing. So I would say Nick and Dan have reached virtuosity early mm -hmm. because of the way that they have so much uncertainty that isn't a question of inviting uncertainty. The uncertainty is just there. Right. Now, for most people, we get just so, you know, tunnel vision. When we get stressed, there's actually changes in the optics of the eye. The lens of your eye can move and it's actually squishy. It's not like a, like a, like a camera lens. Okay. It doesn't move back and forth like this. It actually can get, the lens actually can, can bend. Gotcha. And when the more amped up you are, the more your visual world narrows. It's mm -hmm. like a soda straw view of the world. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the more relaxed you are, the more dilated your field of view is. So I always say if you're stressed, one of the best ways to just relax quickly and it's totally covert, it's like I can look at you guys and now I'm gonna expand my field of view and now I can see the bookshelf and I can see him yeah, sitting yeah, over yeah. there mm -hmm. and I can see the whole scene and that relaxes your stress system. Mm. And when you do that, and if you're like, you're trying a trick and you're failing and failing, just try dilating your field of view a bit. Mm. This naturally puts your nervous system into a place where it can access more information. Interesting. And it can access what we call motor maps, memories of previous things. So nollie heel flip is a nollie and a flip. It can access the nollie part and the flip better mm. than when you're like staring at your board. So yeah. on the one hand, I'm saying focus but it's really be in that sweet spot between relaxed and focused. Wow. Right? Yeah. Now, once you have something dialed in, then it's a totally different story. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's when you actually wanna start playing little games. When you wanna just kind of do it just because or try it on transition or try it, I don't know, just try it however. Sure. And that's when you start to discover that you actually know a lot more than you thought you knew. Yeah. Because the nervous system is storing this information and it's thinking, well, how would I do this in the rain? How would I do this? off a curb, how would I do it? All that's packed in subconsciously and you can start to access it, but it's, so that the really the, the key is learn how to hit that or place yourself in that relaxed but alert state and learn how to get good at falling asleep and staying asleep and waking mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the nervous system's um, memory. It's not the muscle memory, yeah, which, no you, muscle which you memory. touched on in the Jankum thing, which I was like, what? I've been lied to my whole life. This well, muscle memory yeah. thing. I mean, like, yeah. The muscles don't, muscles are dumb. The nerve nervous system's really smart. Sure. The, the other thing that's really interesting about how stressed or not stressed you are and how that serves you is time perception. Mm -hmm. So you guys will know this because skateboard movies often involve, you know, some slow motion, or some freeze frame, sure. or some speeding things up. You know, they've played a lot of games with that. Mm -hmm. The more amped up you are, the higher your frame rate. A really good example of this is you're at the store, you need to get home or you need to get someplace and the person in front of you is returning something. Oh, yeah. It feels like it takes forever. Yes. Your yeah. frame rate is very fast. Mm -hmm. And so therefore it feels like they're moving very slow. Right. This is why when people get into car accidents or there's trauma, they it feels like slow, slow motion. motion. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, frame rate's high. Okay. When you're relaxed, your frame rate is really slow mm -hmm. and the world seems like it's going really fast. Like if you have to go someplace and you're tired, you're like, oh, this is a it's lot. It's a lot to take <laughs> in. It's a right, lot to right, take right, in. Right. And people go through all sorts of gymnastics with drugs, with um, all sorts of, even in the, the non-illicit drug world of trying to find the right compounds and supplements and meditation mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all the conditions that are gonna set their frame rate right. And look, I'm not gonna pass judgment. I don't care what people do to get where they want to go. Mm -hmm. Although I would hope that people would think about their long-term health too. Sure. Just what skateboarding needs to hear. Sure, Somebody, sure. a scientist <laughs> telling you about your long-term health. <laughs> anyway, um, you wanna get really good at something? Do it for 10 years. You wanna get really, really good? Do it for 30 years. Sure. So, uh, so time perception and learning how to contract and dilate your time perception. Mm -hmm. This is actually what very, very skilled basketball players do. They know how, when they're running back up court, play defense, they know how to relax during that time, set up and then set the focus. And then they're constantly updating their time perception. Right. And good fighters know how to do this. When fighters are in the appropriate kind of level of, of arousal, as we say, and alertness, 
they actually see the punches coming in in slow motion, slow motion. and your visual world start it starts to arc. The world looks differently because when you're in that panoramic vision, it's a little bit of fisheye. Mm -hmm. It's not full fisheye. It's not early '90s fisheye <laughs> right. Right. with yeah. the cliffs yeah. and the corners. Yeah. So it's like yeah. wide angle. And then when you're really dialed in, then it's just a ton of attention to detail. And it's very hard to learn things when you're in a ton of attention to detail because let's take the extreme nolly heel flip to stay with that example. Sure. You don't want to be counting the the you know the the bumps on your grip tape. Right. Mm -hmm. That's too zoomed in. Yep, yep, too yep, zoomed yep, yep. out would be paying attention to everything and thinking about what happened last week. Yeah. So there's this sweet spot and you have to learn how to toggle that and contract and dilate. And that's what you do with your vision. Mm. And then there's some stuff you can do with your breathing. We can talk about that, but mm -hmm. learning how the visual system and your perception of life line up with one another, this contraction and dilation is a very powerful tool. Yeah. Uh, and it carries over to every endeavor. Good hunters know how to do this. They walk mm -hmm. through, uh, you know, I'm not into hunting, but lately it seems like a lot of people I know are into like elk hunting and this kind of thing. And they'll walk through a, a, a territory and they're in panoramic vision because your motion detection is better when you're in panoramic vision, four times faster. Mm -hmm. Try and catch a ball when you're looking just at the ball. Yeah, it's actually yeah, pretty right. tough. You kind of relax, you just you know, grab, grab it. it. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. So then, but then when they're gonna line up on, on a, on a kill, yeah. then they're gonna like cross air. It's all about getting in that soda straw yeah, view yeah, of the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they dilate again. Right. So anyone can do this. You were equipped with this technology. And that's what I was gonna say is I think we are, as skateboarders, we do that unconsciously. We try to find that middle ground without knowing, you know, we finding this out now from you, you know, how that middle ground is. But it's almost like if I knew all this stuff before, I yeah. could actually then try to really harness that middle ground, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting question. You know, the, the subconscious genius of skateboarding is that it doesn't know all this and yet it knows, right? <laughs> it's just like, it's this intelligence without knowing, yeah. right? To get to be very martial artsy about it. Um, and uncertainty is a big part of skateboarding. It's part of what makes most street skateboarding really beautiful compared to say vert skateboarding where mm -hmm. there are guys like Danny who brought a ton of uncertainty. Clay Kreiner seems to, the, oh my God. it's like, who knows what that is? Right, it right, just right, is right. amazing. Um, and there are other, uh, who's that guy, Jimmy Wilkins? Jimmy Wilkins. Can make, so here's a, a good example of somebody that can make things look up. It's already amazing, mm -hmm. but it looks that much more amazing because he's clearly moving his body the way it should for his body type, right? right? Yeah. You can tell when something doesn't line up right. Yeah. And so I don't know, I don't think about this enough. I don't analyze skateboarding, I'm not a skateboarding analyst, but um, but uncertainty is a huge part of it. I mean, one of the reasons I, I confess I really enjoy the GX1000 mm -hmm. pose, it's insane. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because oh, the, yeah. The un, they're inviting uncertainty in of the lady with the stroller. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with the, the, right. you know, yeah. or the whether or not you're gonna die. I mean, I can't recommend anyone do what they do. Oh my God. I wouldn't be I, in good conscience, yeah. but yeah. to me, they represent, <laughs> The first time I saw GX1000 and one of those hill bombs, I, I literally thought these guys are 100% in their limbic brain, which is the kind of primitive part of your brain that mm. just wants fear mm -hmm. and enjoys that. Mm. And yet somehow they're in just enough control that you're right there on the edge watching. I mean, it's it's crazy. I don't sure. like yeah. it, bro. It, it, I mean, I can't encourage it. It's sort of like watching that Alex Honnold movie, the um, what was rock that movie? climber. Yeah, the rock yeah, climber, yeah, free, yeah. Solo, free, right? solo. free solo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know he lives, and yeah. it's still scary. Oh to my watch. god, yeah, I'm yeah, watching yeah. that movie. Right? right? Sure. I'm, I'm, oh my, it's insane. You're I love right. That movie. It's amazing. So, movie. so good. It's so amazing. Good. But even as skateboarders too, you're talking about bombing a hill. But even if we're skating out in the streets and there's like you know cars over here, there's huh, there's people walking by. Like there's so much madness going on, and yet we still try to have that ability to focus and try to meet that middle ground to land that trick, yeah. you know? Well, I can't, what's interesting is there were no cell phones when I was coming up. Sure. And um, coming up makes it sound like I eventually arrived someplace. <laughs> 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 um, yes. But, you know, there were no cell phones and, and you you didn't listen to a Walkman. That's what we had back then. You didn't have ear, ear, no. ear oh, AirPods yeah, yeah. or right, anything. Right, right. So that I can't imagine when I saw, you know, and I, the Olympics was a weird thing for me to watch. I enjoyed that it was there. Mm -hmm. I, I confess mm -hmm. the, the the happiest I was about it was I think that that girl Sky Brown. Oh yeah, it's awesome because she, to me, embodied what it's really about. Oh yeah, she was just having so much fun. Oh, yeah. she was and just amazing. It. You think about neuroplasticity at her age. Oh, think about God. her skateboarding in fifteen years. That's what we, yeah. it's crazy. It's, a, it's, it's crazy. amazing. Yeah, I almost don't want to say it because I don't I don't want to jinx anything about it. Sure, right. Sure, I mean sure, she's. Sure. I mean I think she's going to do for skateboarding all skateboarding 
male, female, yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I truly believe this. I think she's going to do for skateboarding at least what people like Danny and them have done in terms of breaking new new barriers, right? right? I mean, right. Danny's thing was to basically just just Go crazy. agree <laughs> with the laws of physics, sure. but then negotiate with them too, <laughs> right? He right. was like, I'll tell you what, like there's gravity and there's this and there's velocity, but let's just negotiate at the margins. And he's done that. right? And that's why it's, you know, it is what it is. Incredible. Beautiful. But I think she's also doing that because what she's showing is that even though she's small, even though she's a girl, like she, she can do big stuff and make it look right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there are Impressive. others too, but, um, but yeah. So in the, how do we get into the Olympics? Uh, we were talking about the Olympics. Um, well, funny enough, what, what, it's really quick with the Olympics and you were talking about like having fun oh, yeah. doing stuff was the thing that I noticed about like, I mean, especially with like the Nija thing, right? Like everybody, he went in there, everybody thought he was going to yeah, win. I didn't track and, this that much. I mean, okay. Yeah. So this is what I observed, right? But there was, so, a, there, was a, there was a documentary or something being made about uh, it. This is there true. Is, this is, is true. Yeah. Is there one still? Yeah, Ty still going See, I think it's more, oh, it's Ty. Yeah, okay. he's working yeah, yeah. on it. Yeah. I got so many stories on Ty. <laughs> Ty, I promise not to use them <laughs> okay, against you. Okay, okay. You touched on a lot of people. I mean, you know a lot of people in the industry, bro. Yeah. Well, and I doubt most of them would remember me, but. I must say that uh, skateboarding has been very good to me. Mm -hmm. Even you guys bringing me here is really, I really, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm touched because it's like the skateboarding has been really good to yeah. me. And skateboarders have been really, Salmon, right? Oh, I mean, Salmon people were afraid of that guy. Yeah. Black Sox, like listen to Henry Rollins, super nuts. He's always been yeah. super kind oh, to me. Great. Oh, he's super nice kind, like nicest dude. dude. Yeah. Nicest right. dude. You know, I was scared for his skateboard when he skateboarded. He's so big, like shove it. I thought it was going to like, <laughs> just, like go down into the concrete. For he's just, real. But he's just super kind. Yeah. Right? Really and um, skateboarders have been, have been extremely kind. Yeah. So. Well, we appreciate the, uh, you know, like you coming here and doing all this. That's the best for yeah. I mean, I still feel like, like, you know, skateboarding is a lot like science mm -hmm. in certain ways in that mm -hmm. it's progressive. Yeah. It doesn't look anything like it did five years oh, ago. And yeah. yet the core elements are still there. Even yeah. a year Kick ago. Ollie, it's like crazy how there. fast it's yeah. growing. Well, and science changing. is the same way. Yeah. You have your basic rules of biology and physics and all this. And that's mm -hmm. just progressing so fast. And so I just feel so blessed to be alive at a time where you can just sit back and just watch all this stuff oh, happen. Yeah. But yeah. Me too. So you, but you had a question about, well, you were, you, I you were going to go to the Olympics the Olympi just really quickly, because there's one thing that I did notice. And like, I think when I look at Anijah Houston at a street league, oh, right. right. He is smiling. He's having fun. Mm -hmm. He's laughing. He's pulling tricks. Like there's this like ambiance to him that he's having fun. He's with all his friends, like where there he's skating really well. Right. The Olympics, I didn't see that. I didn't see mm. the laughter. I didn't see the smiles. I didn't see that that love that he portrays in the street leagues. He didn't do well. I see. Right? And so I, I don't know where my question was going with that, but I noticed the two, the, the, the extreme differences, mm. you know? And yeah. I feel like if he had the same kind of vibe in the Olympics as he does with street leagues, he probably would have done fantastic and probably won. Well, I don't know him, but... Yeah, I would ask him a couple of questions. Like if he was somebody that I worked with and um, you know, consulting isn't a big part of what I do. So mm -hmm. this isn't a ploy to get consulting. <laughs> yeah. um, I always say on any podcast I've gone on, skateboarders get a straight shot to me. I get a t thousands of questions about stress and anxiety. Oof, skateboarders, if they just say like skateboarder, like uh, I most likely will, oh, will dude, reply. You're going to get a lot of DMs yeah, after this show. Um, oh, wow, yeah. I do my best Man. to try and to try and reply, but mm -hmm. it takes time. But, um, yeah. but I do wonder, that, so the shift in time over to Japan mm -hmm. is not insignificant. And some people do really well with, they don't suffer from jet lag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically your body and brain needs to know when it is in time, not just where you are in space. And the way you do that is by, and I highly recommend everyone do this because it's just a nice practice. When you get up in the morning, get some sunlight in your eyes early in the day, that basically sets everything, your immune system, your digestion, your mental health, everything. It sets it down the right path. Mm. Also makes it easier to fall asleep at night when you finally decide to go to sleep. Okay. When you travel to Japan, yeah. I don't know how early he got there, whether or not he was up late texting. I have no knowledge about it at all. Sure. But a lot of le subpar performance that you see in athletics, but also mental performance yeah, yeah, is yeah. because people travel to other time zones. So a lot of the work I do actually is trying to help people shift their circadian clock fast. Oh. You actually have a group of neurons, little nerve cells right above the roof of your mouth. It's a clock hmm. and it secretes this thing that goes to all the cells of your body and coordinates it. Sort of like if this was a watch or clock shop and all of the 
the watches and clocks were at different times, just alarming. It would be chaos. Yes. That's what happens to your body when you're jet lagged or when you're up in the middle of the night looking at your phone really bright. Oh, yeah. So I always say, get some bright sunlight in your eyes early in the day, 10, 15 minutes. Get some bright sunlight in your eyes in the evening. Avoid bright lights of any kind. Just keep them dim from about 10 p.m. till 4 a.m. Okay. And of course, okay. skateboarders, right? A lot of skateboarders are going to be out night skating. This is- Stay up late. Yeah, yeah. this is this is kind of, uh, if you're thinking about performance, okay. if you're thinking about mental health, this is not uh, this is not to limit your partying or to limit anything, yeah. right? So- <laughs> I just want to acknowledge that it's sure, not the sure. kind of sport that's trying to do optimal performance through all the tricks and tools that other sports do. Right. I think that actually, I guess we keep coming back to him, but, and there are others too, but I mean, it was interesting because when Danny started working with Paul Check, or when I saw a video of him, like actually physically training, I remember thinking like, this is skateboarding. This is crazy. But yeah. he saw what he needed to do and he needed to keep his body strong. Right. Right. And what he was doing was in, you know, so damaging to the joints and connective mm. tissue of his body. Mm -hmm. That's what he needed to do. Skateboarders typically aren't of that, right? right? Ilk because they're not pushing themselves to that point. But I do wonder sometimes, you know, when I start hearing about so-and-so committed suicide or so-and-so is depressed or, you know, I don't know all the names and faces anymore because, and the, you know, skateboarding has gotten huge, but every once in a while I'll be like another person clicked out. Like, right, what is the right. deal here? Mm. That means that something went off mentally and typically unless it was a serious drug alcohol thing uh -huh. typically almost always i'll say preceding a suicide preceding a major depression are disruptions in the sleep wake schedule hmm. it's across the board it makes everything worse and when you get that back in alignment everything gets better oh. you feel better you feel stronger your immune system works your digestion works your your mental health is better yeah and so it's so simple, it's cost-free, and it's one of the things that we have a ton of science to support. Mm. So this isn't like a supplement or a thing you have to take. This is literally getting sunlight in your eyes early in the day, avoiding a lot of bright light in the middle of the night, most days and nights. To me, you're not talking about an actual, like go to bed at, at 10 and wake up at this hour. Like you're talking about more of like a routine of sunlight and all this stuff or would you recommend like a certain hours like what's your schedule like what do you do yeah i mean I th well i go uh, if i can i you try play video games at night you stay no, up late i don't, I don't, <laughs> play, I don't play video yeah, games yeah. I, I don't get the video game thing okay it's fun. i just i just feel like the video it, it is oh it's so fun yeah yeah GTA i have, I have some criteria for whether or not i will or we're not will not engage in an activity mm -hmm. and um video games just don't make the, yeah make the cut yeah. <laughs> uh, i don't know it just feels like it yeah. doesn't make money it doesn't um i won't list the other things it doesn't doesn't yeah. get <laughs> we don't it's, know people are making yeah. fucking a sure, of that's, money true, nowadays, that's true that's true that's true that's true but i wouldn't suggest it as a career path for, okay. for no, most people but it's fun yeah. it's fun it's a release yeah so maybe fun is something i'm um, i'm not as good at as i should <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, so, tend to, I tend to work a lot. I got a lab and a podcast and a, and a bunch of other I things. Know, but, I know, I know. But I like work. Yeah. But let, let me rephrase that though, yeah. maybe. Maybe not your schedule, but like a, a, a skateboarder's. Sure. You know, like yeah, we're I'm out up there at, skating. Yeah. Sure. We're, we're, we're ex exerting stuff. Maybe uh, skaters like to smoke and drink at night, you know, right. party or do whatever. Skateboarders, right? really? Yeah. No, no, just not. <laughs> but you know, it's like, God, how do you, how do you get that back into alignment, mm -hmm. right? So- there's perfect and then there's enough, right? Okay. Okay. Um, and also if you're young, you have to enjoy life. Yes. And if you're old, you have to enjoy life. 100%. So you don't wanna be neurotic, right. right? Nobody wants to hang out with the person. It's like, it's 1030, I go to bed because Huberman said I gotta wake up, I gotta optimize my neural plastic. <laughs> yeah. It's all Huberman, yeah. exactly. Shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think, you know, so, I mean, I go to bed around 1030, wake up around 530. Ouch. Yeah, but I like that schedule. Okay. And then I take, but I always do the same thing when I get up, which is go outside, get some sunlight in my eyes. Isn't I walk to five thirty in the morning. Well, then I'll take, I'll walk until, until, it, until it comes up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Are you drinking coffee? Get some right. Uh, I so this is to avoid the coffee crash. Mm. I highly recommend people wait ninety to one hundred twenty minutes after waking up. Okay. Ah. So well, let's start with this, and then we'll go to the sunlight thing. Okay. Because okay, um, okay. I'm going to get teased because I. And this is this is the thing about skateboarders, right? I acknowledge that the life the life that is a beautiful life of skateboarding is not about regimen. It's about a lot of spontaneity. Yeah. There you go. Right? Spontaneity carefree. is you know, carefree. be carefree. Right. And so I would never, ever, ever want to short circuit that. Sure. Right? I never want to be that guy. Um, 
But for people that feel like they're veering off. And we were talking about the mental health issue the mental, too. And that's a real thing, yeah, right? I mean, 100%. I can't tell you how many people contact me saying, you know, oh, I'm a skateboarder and my friend killed themselves or this or major depression or anxiety. Mm -hmm. and, and I think one thing that makes skateboarding so special is that there isn't the oversight usually of parents and coaches, mm -hmm. but as a consequence, the peers, your peers, your friends, basically have to identify, help you identify that stuff. Mm -hmm. right. And I look back, I, and we'll go back to this, this uh, light uh, coffee thing in a second, but, mm -hmm. but I look back and I think about all of the unfortunate things, the losses of people along the way. And I think, you know, not all of them, but a lot of them could have been avoided. Right. Because people, sh everyone shows up with their own baggage. And look, some people are just happier. Their neurotransmitters are a certain way when they're born. They grow up in a house where it might not have been perfect, but there's a resilience there. Mike Blayback, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Definitely did not have a perfect childhood. I don't want, you know, I only know what I know, but you know, he's had his hardships, but he, there's a, there's an internal stability to Mike, mm -hmm. right? That sometimes people don't have, right? Right. I mean, he's also one of the hardest working people I know. Mm -hmm. He's always a half hour early, yep. right? There's nothing, it, I always t tell him, if there's any anxiety in there, no one can detect it. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people and they're just barely managing, right? And everything's a mess. And then, you know, so the point is that skateboarding is important for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons it's, it's important is that it governs itself. Mm -hmm. In fact, the the bit of work I've done with special operations, SEAL teams and some Canadian special operations, the communities actually remind me a lot of one another. Okay, It self-regulates. Yes, people have their ideas from the outside, but if you are part of that group, there's an understanding and it manages itself huh. for better or for worse, gotcha. right? Mostly for better, but there's a lot of dysfunction that can slip through. 100%. That's to me is skateboarding. Mm -hmm. And so, there are a couple of things that if one, for instance, is feeling an afternoon crash, like if you're just ugh, like, despite getting decent sleep, you're just crashing in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. A nap is a good thing, 20, 30 minutes. Naps. By the way, so neuroplasticity and learning mm -hmm. is, is better and faster if you take a 20 to 30 minute nap in the afternoon. Okay. There was a study published last year, a really good journal, showing that if you're working on something, trying some motor learning of some kind, and then you take a 20 or 30 minute, just total decompress or shallow mm -hmm. sleep mm -hmm. nap where you just sleep yep. 20, 30 minutes, you learn much, much faster. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's what yeah. I do. I nap. I'm a yeah. napper. That's great. Yeah. I That's set a my good alarm. skill. I'll set my alarm. Yeah. You yep. don't want to go longer than 90 minutes. Okay. Or it can really mess up your sleep. Usually I'll, yeah. I'll set it for like, you know, maybe an hour or something sure. because fine. I know it'll take me like maybe 10, 15 minutes to fall asleep. So I get a good like 30, 45 minute nap. Naps have been shown to improve creativity, Amazing. motor learning, I immune knew, system function. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And some people don't like napping. Some people don't like napping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're crashing in the afternoon in a way that you don't want to, wake up in the morning and try not drink any caffeine for the first 90 minutes, maybe or even two hours. It's kind of painful at first. Yeah. But first of all, that cup of coffee tastes amazing Ooh. when it does come around. Yeah. It hits your And lips. then it kind of takes you all day long. And Basically, you get sleepy because of the buildup of a chemical in your body called adenosine. Huh. So if we were to stay up for a day and a half, you just are worked, you know, right. you're just exhausted. You have a lot of adenosine in your system. When you sleep, that gets cleared out. Mm. Caffeine is an adenosine blocker. So when you drink caffeine, mm -hmm. you block the adenosine sort of places where it parks, we call it a receptor. Mm -hmm. But when the caffeine wears off, then the adenosine binds at much higher, what we call affinity. Okay. And all of a sudden you just get killed with that adenosine crash. Oh, yeah, right? I've gotten hit with that yeah. adenosine. Yeah. So when you wake up, <laughs> so when you wake up, <laughs> me. just straight, to, Ooh, straight in God. with the adenosine. Yeah. Yeah. Uppercuts, so, left hooks. Exactly, hooks. exactly. Oh, just oh drilled God. straight in. Ooh. So when you when you wake up you're and you're kind of groggy, mm -hmm. your your body and brain are still clearing out that adenosine. Okay. If you hit the coffee right then, you're, you're preloading a bit of a crash. God, I do mm. that every morning. So just drink water. Okay. And then I brought along the stuff and no, I, they don't support my podcast or anything that, but the element, LM and T. You got them right here. Yeah. The, the point of bringing that was not necessarily about element. It's just, a, yeah. it's a high salt solution. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of- Did you drink it in the morning? I'll, yeah, I put some in water and drink in the, mor oh, in the morning. Okay. I think a lot of people underestimate the power of salt. Yeah. And you don't have to, to t get it in that form. That one just okay. happens to taste good. Although I think on the side, there are three uh, levels of water 
that you can put in there and one is salty one is salty uh, yes, af yes yes, yes yeah yes yeah exactly okay <laughs> yeah. salty af yeah it's yeah, actually, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. salty so, as fuck <laughs> but a lot of some people think they have blood sugar issues and their hands yeah, shake drink yeah, too much yeah, yeah, take yeah, a little yeah. bit of salt just sea salt put in some water and drink it okay you'll notice you're just rock solid isn't too much salt mm, bad wow. for you though no, only if you have hypertension only okay. if you have like serious hypertension that there's a a wonderful book on this, but it was also a whole um, issue of the, the Thrasher magazine of, of the science world gotcha. is nature and the trans world is science magazine. So in science magazine, uh, <laughs> top, <laughs> there was a, a, a whole issue about this, the myth around salt that surfaced in the early eighties was that salt is bad. It creates hypertension. Yeah. As long as you're drinking enough water, okay. salt is fine. In it's fact, fine. salt is great. Okay. And a lot of times you're hungry because you're not getting enough salt. You're shaky because you're not getting enough salt. Not getting enough salt will actually make you anxious. Mm. Yeah. And what? this is why um, people who starve with anorexics and stuff, mm. and then you lose a lot of water and they're just, you know, and they're bug eyed and shaky sure, and it's, it's terrible. Sure. Salt is a stabilizer. Wow. And it's because your nerve cells, your neurons, they can only send electrical signals if there's sufficient salt in your system. The yeah. way they, they work is amazing. They send electrical signals by literally creating these little pores and salt rushes in, sodium rushes into the cell. And sodium has, we say, has a charge. Mm. And so it creates this electrical signal. Without that, you can't think straight. You don't feel right. You feel shaky. You're not landing okay. your nollie heel flips. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, yeah. if, you're, if I get like the jitters from like too much coffee, is yeah. that the same situation? That's being over caffeinated, a little bit dehydrated. Here's mm -hmm. what I would do to, to solve that problem. Okay. Really easy. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to come back here with it with a bunch of, bunch of pills. Please, um, please. Legal pills. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would drink some water with some salt in it. And then if you're really jittery, you could take 100 milligrams of theanine, T-H-E-A-N-I-N-E. -E. Theanine, it kind of takes the edge off. In fact, a lot of energy drinks are now putting theanine in so that you'll drink more of them. Oh, okay. yeah. But the energy drink thing is kind of weird to me too. It kind of goes with I the earbuds thing. Like well. I'm glad there weren't energy drinks yeah, when I was growing yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. those took me a while to get, you know, get off the energy drinks. And, right. they, and um yeah, it gets you kind of cracked out. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> Coffee is my vice. Like great. I said, I it's do great I, in the morning. It's a great I'm going to curb that till. Yeah, you know, push it out 60 minutes. 60 minutes yeah, to an minutes. hour. Yeah, yeah 60 minutes to yeah. an hour. 60 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do some uh, elements. Citrus salt as oh. AF. Yeah. And. Uh, no, but it's interesting. So where were we going with this mental health thing? We were so, talking about- Well, we were talking about, he said in coffee. Yes. Look, if you're an anxious per person, oh, drinking a lot sleep. of coffee we're is not going to be- yeah. yeah. So you wake up in the morning, you get some sun in your eyes. Sure. Take the sunglasses off. Most skateboarders don't. Skateboarders don't wear sunglasses, do yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, when, not, you, when you have to. When yeah. You My, hard, I have sensitive night. eyes. So when I drive in the mm. morning, I always have to put- Right. But that's But yeah, driving. but not just get up and go outside for a few minutes. Take yeah, your yeah. coffee outside or whatever. Okay. Take it, you know, even if you're looking at your phone- get that sun in, in your eyes. It really does make it, it stabilizes your mental health and your sleep and everything else. Okay. And there are good studies on this. Uh, it makes it so that 16 hours later, your brain will start releasing its own melatonin, which help you get to sleep. Mm. I don't recommend people take melatonin, yep. which is a hormone. It's got all sorts of issues. It's what keeps kids from going into puberty early. Uh, yeah, whoa. it has all sorts of um, effects. There are other things if you want, you know, talk about supplements and sleep, but, but my, I cover all that in the podcast. If you want to do the deep yeah, dive yeah, on that, we absolutely. got a, a, an episode on how to sleep and okay. you can take magnesium, this and theanine that. And mm -hmm. I actually prefer to see people just look to the behavior, the cost-free behavioral tools. Sure. Sure. So, you know, take, get a nap in the afternoon. If you're agonizing over some trick, like just relax, just take a moment and just, or 20 mm -hmm. minutes and just push down the street and forget about it and then go back to it. Right. Um, but of course, you know, I mean, the young Henry Sanchez was the young Henry Sanchez because he got a hundred reps uh, at the block to everybody's, yeah, yeah, you know, three yeah. and just calling him reps. People would be like, who's this guy talking about reps? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking right. about? Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Yeah. But it's, it's okay. Um, a lot of people turn the podcast off right now. Yeah. No, but uh, but also um, the um, the sleep. Is there certain hours you okay. should be getting? Or okay, so some people, most people, are sort of designed, meaning their their genes are have set them up to go to bed around 11 mm -hmm. and wake up around seven. Okay. Uh, most people. Okay. Then you got your night owls. Yes, I'm a night owl. Who exactly. really feel great staying up till I about one or two fabulous. or three and sleeping till 10. Yep. Great, do okay. it. It's oh, probably oh. in your genome. Okay. Yeah, Okay. Your it's uh, in the, the nerdy version of this because are there any nerdy? There's some nerdy skateboarders. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, there's a what we call genetic polymorphism. Your genes are, you can have repeats of a certain gene mm -hmm. that make you more of a night owl. 
Okay. Okay. You've clearly got that. I got and it. Th- and then it. you got your what your morning people mm-hmm. who would like to get up at five. They feel great and go to sleep around nine thirty or ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is not me. I've kind of forced myself onto that schedule. Do you, do you feel? Okay. Is that you? I wake up pretty early. And yet, yeah. Uh, so you're a morning person. Yeah. Yeah. I am a morning. What time person. do you go to sleep? It depends. Uh, I would say like around eleven. Yeah. So I I don't know. I get like a good six seven hours. That's something. great. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I guess that's good. You I'm, look healthy. <laughs> Thank you. You do. He's got a lot of makeup on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what about you, Troy? I'm about a good six hours, give or take. Sometimes, I mean, I stay up till like twelve thirty one. Okay. And then I get up around six forty five for oh, my son. Great. So it's like, a, how old is he? Six. Okay. So what I was about to say is, what I just described—the variations in sleep schedules changes across the lifespan. Babies are sleeping random. Mm-hmm. Their melatonin is completely abnormal compared to an adult but normal for a baby so they're sleeping for 90 minutes getting up pooping change you know feed the whole thing Mm -hmm. then toddlers it shifts adolescents it shifts and then when they're really going through their growth spurt they're sleeping a lot teens and adolescents right and uh that's because growth hormone is released from you have this little gland uh also above the roof of your mouth called the pituitary Mm -hmm. and it releases growth hormone and growth hormone is released in the first part of the night the around the the first half of your sleep. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely important for repair of physical tissue in the body. Okay, This is why sleep helps you heal. Mm. And early in the night when you sleep is also when motor learning occurs. Okay, so it's when you're learning your nollie heel flips. Yes. Or well, I mean, y'all, it's when I'm learning my (laughs) nollie heel flips. Uh, And the second half of the night is when you have these really intense dreams. Mm. And that's a period of sleep when we call REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, where people's eyes are darting back and forth, Mm -hmm. but you're completely paralyzed. It's Mm -hmm. what we call atonic or atonia. Hmm. And the second half of the night is when you're working through your emotional baggage. It's literally like therapy or trauma release in sleep. So Mm -hmm. the hormone we talked about before, adrenaline, cannot be released into the body during REM sleep. So you're having these really intense dreams all about these emotional things that happened. And the brain during that time is also just playing games, sampling all sorts of things. We could probably even plant something. So like this cap, let's see, I bet if we pay attention, what does it say? Salty. Salty. There's a good chance that you might have a dream about this because we yeah, kind of cued yeah, it, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. in your REM sleep. Probably get an ad for it on my phone too. Yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. The, <laughs> the uh, in your sleep, you're, in your REM sleep, your brain has to make a decision. Is there an emotional significance to this? Mm-hmm. And so there could be a whole thing about this. I'll see you all with Salty tonight in the, right. in the dreams. But sometimes right? we don't remember our dreams. Right, so right? you'll wake up, but during this time, your your body is and your brain is having this intense experience, but you can't move and you can't release adrenaline. Okay. Occasionally you will wake up from one of these dreams yep. and you, all of a sudden you'll just be breathing hard. And it's like, whoa, what was that? That was all of a sudden your adrenaline kicked in and woke you up. So. If you can't remember your dreams, typically the thing to do is just stay with your eyes closed for a few minutes early in the morning. Mm. Also, the moment you pick up your phone, you're bringing in new sensory information. I will say this, if you can take five minutes or 10 minutes in the morning and not look at that thing, what's great is that all this subconscious processing that you did at night, all this learning, it's actually available for you to make use of. You will often get your best insights, your best ideas, all sorts of stuff can come to you in that first few minutes after sleep. Even if you're just getting up, doing the dishes, you know, yeah. whatever, making coffee, if you're drinking coffee early, mm-hmm. taking care of your son. Mm-hmm. If you immediately look at your phone, you short circuit that whole process. Oh. You're bringing in new sensory I information. I yeah. remember Andrew Rendell saying something about that. He's like, I, I wanted to cut off, yeah, you know, going right to my phone in the morning. Yeah. And he's like, it's been wonderful. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm having like, a wonderful morning, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not like you're having this anxiety now by just grabbing your phone right, right away. Because yep. sometimes yeah. when you grab your phone, you can get pissed off by something you see. Instantly, yeah. Instantly. Or you yeah. can like it. You flip it there on, and the guy's throwing up a story, totally. and he's doing something sick, right? right? And, but, and that's great. But that's gonna be there no matter what, yeah. exactly. right? It's gonna be there no matter what. And you know, the, the nervous system, it's really, it's customized to your experience, and it's always trying to offer you up things. I mean, it is you, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's trying to offer you up these, insights and learning and and it sends these subtle cues that if you pay attention you're like oh yeah i should contact that person or i'd want to do that or you know and the moment you're bringing in information that all gets shut off no doubt so you can learn faster you can 
Mm. Remember, sometimes you'll be halfway through your breakfast and all of a sudden something from your dream pops up. You're like, oh, that's right. Yeah, Wonder yeah, what yeah, that yeah, was about. Right. That was about, if it was emotionally intense, it was probably in your REM sleep. If mm. it was kind of weird and kind of, right, that's right, the right, early right. phase of the night, the slow wave sleep. Oh. Dude, what about, dude, I have plenty of questions about dreams, but like deja vu. Oh yeah. What? How does that even exist? Sure. Like, yeah, I can explain how deja vu works. Yeah. Um, this is now understood uh, by neuroscientists. So, and this is kind of an eerie thing about the the nervous system. So you have an area of your nervous system called the hippocampus. Mm -hmm. Remember that movie Memento, mm -hmm. where the guy had damage to his hippocampus, his hippocampus he called it. Yeah. So he was like tattooing all that stuff on yeah. him and, and the movie ran backwards. I'm still not sure that movie made sense. I don't know. It was <laughs> I feel like bizarre. if I was, right, yeah. It was very bizarre. Yeah, it was a bizarre movie. So the hippocampus is where you establish memories. And then it basically sends that stuff out to the rest of the nervous system and it deals with it elsewhere mm -hmm. or it just discards it. I mean, a lot of what happens in sleep is forgetting all the stuff you want to, you know, you don't want to remember everything. You don't mm -hmm. want to remember this thing. And now you sure. do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what a waste. Right. Do you remember your childhood phone number? Um... I've had my yeah of course yeah yeah yeah, 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 okay. yeah. well because I've I've only had like two I yeah. have I have the same number cell phone oh that okay I've had I was when I got it still it. exists and my mom and my where I grew up oh, they're same, still same, there same, okay same, same shit well I was gonna say usually if someone remembers their childhood phone number it's a complete waste of brain space that phone doesn't even exist that phone number just right. exists I, yeah. very hard to forget that early stuff okay. but that's a lot of what happens during sleep okay so there was an experiment that was done really cool experiment where. They looked at the firing of neurons. Think about neurons as they're just nerve cells and think about them as keys on a piano. The sequence that those keys are played and the intensity that they're played is the song, mm -hmm. right? You wouldn't say that a particular song is, you know, the E flat is a song. Yeah. It's the E flat that came after A, whatever. I'm not a musician, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. A memory is essentially just a sequence of neurons firing, just like a sequence of keys being played on a piano, okay? But what's wild is that a few years ago, there were techniques developed that would allow neuroscientists to play the, the exact keys that they wanted to in any sequence they want. So let's say that your memory of, what's a good memory of skateboarding? Just throw out one. Uh, just uh, my first kickflip. First kickflip. Yeah. So that memory is embedded in your brain. Yeah. That memory, whether or not you're visualizing it or not, is just a particular sequence of neurons firing. Mm -hmm. What they did is they took, let's just use this example. They took that, that set of neurons, let's say 10 neurons and the order that they fired and they decided to just start banging on all those at the same time, electrically yeah. firing them or playing them backward. Mm. And what they found is it leads to the exact same sense of experience. Oh, wow. So this is one of the fundamental mysteries about the brain is like, what is the brain? What is the code? Right? What is the code? Is it the sequence that they're played in? And it seems to be it's the collection of neurons, but not necessarily the order that they're firing in. Now, this is super important for learning. And there's actually a really important tool that comes out of this for learning. When you're, let's say with Nolly Heel Flip, because you must feel sorry for me that I never really, I don't, I have made a Nolly Heel Flip. Switch Heel, <laughs> switch heel Flip? Let's, let's reverse it. Let's switch turn it Switch Heel Flip. Switch Heel Flip to me. <laughs> oh, we can go kick flip. Eh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. What yeah. about a hard flip? Uh, no, it never had the hard flip. Hard flip back tail? Never had the hard flip back tail. No, no, no. 360 no. <laughs> Flynn Mose Blunt? No, and the people that knew me were just going to be like, definitely not. <laughs> like, they're going to call bullshit on Huberman if I try and say any of that. I had a decent just nose blunt. I that was decent. Say, That's a great trick. Though, I'll be really honest trick. that the one trick that I will live and die by that I absolutely love that uh, I really just mostly found in my 30s when I finally had the strength to do it's just a proper frontside grind on pool it. coping. Oh, sick. Like I, oh, I, I that if I'm dying, there are a few things I'll remember. I won't mention the others, but that's definitely up there. That's up the there. List. It's, yeah. it's right there next Love to that. the other things. Love that. So, so basically, when you try and learn something, there's this focused, relaxed state that you want to be in, and then you want to go into sleep and a nap, ideally, if you can. Mm -hmm. But there are a bunch of papers that have talked about what are called talked about what are called gap effects. So I just said a moment ago, you want to get as many repetitions, maybe just repeats of something. Repetition makes it sound like in the yeah, gym, but yeah, repeats yeah. of something. Nolly have lip, nolly have lip, not, trying it, trying it, trying it till you make it. Sure. However, if you pause and do absolutely nothing and kind of turn off your brain, not text message, not think about the nolly heel flip for about 10 seconds, every few minutes or so, what they've discovered by doing brain recordings during motor learning is that during those pauses, the same neurons that are involved in generating the attempts 
fire, but 20 or 30 times faster and in reverse. Now you go, what the hell is going on? This would be like, you're trying to learn a song mm -hmm. and then you stop trying to learn it. And then you're, it just naturally is happening 20 or 30 times over. Hmm. So you're getting practice without practicing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. And that's exactly what happens during motor learning in sleep. During sleep, your hippocampus is firing like crazy forward and back. It's training up the sequence. Mm -hmm. What they found is if you take these 10 second pauses where you just do nothing, you learn much faster because you're actually getting 20 repeats of nollie heel flip, right? Now you actually have to nollie heel flip at some point. Sure. Okay, you can't just stand there and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is why like video games, yeah, yeah, yeah. skateboarding video games came out. I was like, I was like, oh, God, kids probably think this is how you learn how to skateboard. God, I never got a new right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe if there was like a slam effect where someone actually like clubs you over the head with a bat, that would actually feel like falling. There you go. Right, but yeah. yeah. So, but these pause effects, these gap effects as they're called rather, allow your brain to learn more quickly. Mm. And so this is a lot of what's happening. So deja vu is just a repeat firing. So you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you go, I think I've been here before. It was just that that sequence was of firing in your brain was close enough mm. that it mimicked that. Yeah. And if you think sure. about it, there are a near infinite number of things in the world to see, to think, to hear, people yeah. to meet, et cetera, memories. You have to batch that. And so the brain is really good at eliminating information and only focusing on certain things, but every once in a while it overlaps, yeah. you know? And um, yeah, it's weird. It's also one of the more beautiful aspects of, of being a human being because every once in a while you start to think, you know, that person reminds me a lot of that person. Mm -hmm. That person reminds yeah, me. And yeah. pretty soon you start noticing patterns too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, there's a, there are a bunch of rabbit holes we could go down with this, but I would say if you don't remember your dreams, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not learning in your dreams. Uh -huh. Some people just don't remember their dreams. Yeah. And if you're one of these people that's waking up and you're still in that paralysis from REM, oh, yeah, stop smoking weed. Okay, well, I, I <laughs> okay, I don't smoke. We talked about the no, sleep I, paralysis. I, I think paralysis because of me, because I smoke weed, and that's why I tend. To, I think that I can't remember some of my dreams sometimes. Mm -hmm. So no, but we're, I'm talking about like sleep paralysis where you wake up and you're like, I can't move, right. and so I'm. That's more yeah. common in pot smokers. Mm, and uh, that never happened to me. Never happened to me. <laughs> but it happens to me. It happens to me quite a bit. I don't smoke at all. It happened to Roger too, right? You don't yeah. smoke. Yeah, it happened to me in Dubai. In Dubai. Yeah. 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 Where jet, you're just the sitting there and you yeah. just you can't move at all and you're just like stuck kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you wake up it's and then it's 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 and you feel like someone there. And then you jolt and mm. that and then you can sort of get yourself out of it. Wow. Now I'm not picking on the pot smokers. I don't judge. I don't care what people do. It was never my thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because um yeah, I mean, I think, well, for some people, you know, they like it because it puts them in that sweet spot of yeah. relaxed, but mm -hmm. but focused. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm a believer that, you know, you don't really want the young, young brain exposed oh, to okay. cannabis. Like sure. your son, yeah, like, would yeah, you, yeah. like, you probably want him to, no, to take some to, time, right? Yeah, I don't exactly. want him to experience how I experienced my uh, taste of smoking pot. Right. Right. But, right. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be... Uh, not open for him later down the line, like when he's like 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, we like, we like, we'll do that yeah. before. I don't know. I, you never I don't know. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I, I don't judge at all. I think that, um, you know, I would say there are five, maybe six ways that we learn to manage ourselves in life. First are behavioral tools, right? Mm -hmm. Skateboarding mm -hmm. being a great one, but we talked about like vision and breathing, or I guess we haven't talked about breathing yet, but sunlight, those are just some do this and don't do that kind of things most of the time. Mm -hmm. Those are very helpful in life. Yeah. Then there's a whole business of eating. You have to eat sooner or later. So yeah, yeah. good nutrition, that kind of thing. Then there's supplementation. Then there's mm -hmm. prescription drugs. Oh, yeah. Then there's non-prescription drugs. Then there's machines, brain machine interface, right? There's all sorts of things we can do to change our nervous system and how it works. And yeah. you know that each one has its benefits. And I think being flexible mm -hmm. is what it's really about. Being able to be alert if you need to be alert with or without caffeine yeah, being able yeah, to yeah. get to sleep even if you don't have your magnesium three and eight theanine and you yeah, didn't see yeah. the sun that morning you know right. being a functional human being is about having some flexibility it's yeah. never about being super rigid it, the, the brain right it's such a powerful powerful thing and the most never, powerful the most powerful yeah. you know and we never really you know growing up skating you never really like take into account like we were talking about before it's like unconscious versus conscious and being aware of stuff like that. And I'm just like, man, I wish I would have taken in. I mean, there's so many things we could talk about, right? It's like forgetful. Why do you forget something? Why do we go back to the place like in your house? Like you're like, oh, we'll go back to get the, or to get whatever you were forgot. Like, right. 
Like, why, is it just triggers in the mind or like, how does this? So we, like, I mean, we could do a kind of a two minute neuroscience one-on-one, how your brain works. Let's do that. Yeah, how please. your brain works. Oh, well, oh that's a oh, weird oh, one. Oh, Let's well, do I a normal naps. person. No, no, no. Normal person's I take naps. John. <laughs> yeah. you know, so. John yeah, seems like yeah. a pretty even keel guy. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you always <laughs> been like this? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have a big, yes. big family, small family. S- small family for the most yeah. part. Yeah. yeah. You've Live. always been like even. No chaos with you. No visible. I, I mean, chaos. to be honest, like I don't, I, I don't like that type of energy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I, yeah. I really try to, yeah, like I said, stay even keeled and really, like, yeah. not, yeah, bring in any type of negative energy at all. As far as I remember, I mean, you're as long as I've known you, you've always been just. Like you you've know, never seen me super. blow up or anything, right? No, not really. I mean, well, I, I know when you I don't. Speak, know. I speak passionately of about course. stuff. When you right, don't like something, you'll speak up on it. Yeah. but you're, yeah. you don't really calm yeah. disposition. Yeah. Right. I right. could. I could. Yeah. yeah I could it's very that, calm. Sure. But yeah. I mean, like you know, when the you know, um, please go ahead. What were you going to say about the about a normal mind, normal brain function? Yours or Geraint's? Yeah. We're all different, right? Yeah, we so, are all different. So th- there's some basic rules, right? Sure. First of all. A lot of the things that we do are reflexive, mm. and we learn those. You learned how to walk right, left, right, left. You had to think hard while you were doing it. Once you learn it, it's reflexive. Mm-hmm. The reason is most of what the brain wants to do is take learning and make what you learn reflexive. Mm. Sometimes that's a good thing. You learn how to walk. You don't have to think about it. Sure. Okay. Breathing. Breathing, for instance. Breathing is an interesting one because like walking, you're you're constantly breathing, mm-hmm. but at any moment you can take full control of your breathing and change the way you there breathe. You go. Yeah. Yeah. That's unlike most aspects of how we function. Mm. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. But learning we talked about, mm-hmm. focused calm, followed by, you know, focused calm states with these little gaps inserted, followed by some rest, a nap, and some mm-hmm. sleep. Try and mm-hmm. get that right, get the sunlight, etc. Sure, sure. Okay. But then you start thinking about all the other stuff, like what are thoughts, what are emotions, like what is all that? Why do the and bad thoughts are am- more and more amplified than the good thoughts? Yeah, keep you safe. Yeah, keep you safe. I mean, the number one job of any organism is to keep itself safe. Number two job is to make more of itself. Mm. That's basically okay. what every species of animal wants to do. Gotcha. And once you reproduce, there's really no more need for you unless, except raising your, your kids, <laughs> right? Young, yeah. You've yeah. successfully reproduced. Yeah. You're one of the few people, at least that we're going to, that we're aware of in yeah. this room that successfully reproduced. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Appreciate it. So that's good. Uh, but yes, every species wants to accomplish those two mm-hmm. things. But the reason why negative thoughts pop into your head so much is you're just your brain's way of keeping you safe. Okay. okay. And disturbing thoughts are something that a lot of people are disturbed by. But, you know, you go to an edge of a cliff and you know, what's keeping me from just jumping off? It's the thought and the question, what's keeping me from jumping off? Right. right? Uh, New mothers uh, report these really horrible thoughts. They don't like to report them, but they think, oh my gosh, what's keeping me from just, you know, smashing my baby's head? It's the fear that you're going to do that. It's like a break, you know? Okay. A lot of the way the brain works is all these reflexes, Mm. uh, you know, to fight back, to say something, to harm things that we are built for doing pretty much anything. And then you have this forebrain, the thing in the front, which acts as a break on everything. Hmm. No, don't do that. That's not appropriate for now. Sit still now. Don't talk now. Don't say this. Don't say that. Don't respond to that comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. yep, Don't respond to that comment. Right. And actually I'll teach you, uh, teach you a good one around the uh, comment responsive thing. It'll save you so much trouble in life. So you have chemicals in your brain and a a certain category of them are called neuromodulators, dopamine, Mm. serotonin, Mm. acetylcholine, et cetera. Dopamine, people always think of as a dopamine hit, like it's pleasure, but dopamine is actually about motivation and drive. It's about craving. When you want something and you're thinking about something you really want, that's dopamine. Uh, When you're getting really hyped up, that's dopamine. When you actually accomplish the thing, it's a different set of chemicals. When someone comments something on social media or just says something to you, it opens up what's called a, it's essentially a dopamine loop. There's this thing called reward prediction error, which is when we expect something and we want something and it doesn't arrive, you actually get a punishment signal in the brain and your dopamine drops below what it was before. Mm. So you walk in it, let's use a gambler as an example. Okay. They walk, a, not a compulsive or addicted gambler. You go into the casino, they're really hyped up, or they're betting on a game and their dopamine starts to go up. It's anticipation. Next time you go to Vegas, if you happen to go there or whatever, they're selling 
everything through this dopamine thing. Bitcoin right now, yeah, Ethereum, yeah, yeah. it's all about the promise of something, gotcha. yeah. right? Value in the brain has, regardless of whether or not it's dollars, Bitcoin, Ethereum, doesn't matter. It's all about dopamine. Mm. It's a value system. The brain is doing math with dopamine. And then when the reward arrives, it compares the expectation to the reward. Oh. And if the reward isn't that great, it's a letdown. But that letdown is actually a drop in dopamine below baseline. Damn. Okay? Mm. Yeah. When someone says something aggravating or is trying to trigger you, it sets in motion this dopamine circuit. And when you respond, no matter what you do, it actually gives them a reward. It right. rewards them. Right. When you refrain from that, it actually sends them below baseline. Perfect. So exactly, <laughs> just exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Just stoic, you know, mm -hmm. and it's hard to do, right? Because yeah. we get wrapped in, sure. but so never respond. Right, right. To, to, or right. delete yeah. it, delete yeah. it. Just, yeah. Yeah. Or delete it, right? Yeah. It's, it's your account, you can delete it. Right? Well, cause exactly. you that those 500 great comments are great. And then that one, you're just like, ah, hyper-focused on, right. you know. Just delete. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I never yes. respond to it. Or just write, neuroscience says that your dopamine is about to drop below <laughs> baseline. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's Tag also- Tag at Huberman Lab. But it, there you yeah. go, there you go. But it's also a, a, a you know, a, a comment battle that you will never win as right. well. And you're, you know? and you're shouting back and forth yeah. through, a, through an internet tunnel. Yeah. And uh, it's just, um, it's just no good. And, yeah, and so, and so the, the win is actually in not, not responding at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it really is. And this dopamine system is actually super powerful. I mean, not to get into the addiction thing, but every time you anticipate something that you like anything, doesn't matter if it's sex, skateboarding, porn, video games, ice cream does not matter. Okay. Okay. The dopamine gets released. And then afterward, there's a sort of a compensation it's like, it's like pleasure goes up, anticipation goes up, and then there's a little bit of a pain system that gets kicked in afterwards. This is the work of a colleague of mine at, at um, Stanford named Anna Lemke. She works on addiction. She actually mm. runs the dual diagnosis uh, addiction clinic there. She has this great book called Dopamine Nation, all about this. Which mm. And so it tips back. And then what happens is that scale doesn't ever really level out again, okay? And it means that the next time you're pursuing this thing, you have to go a little bit further, a little bit more, a little bit more. Then the, the pain side tilts up a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Pretty soon you're doing the thing over and over again and you're not getting any pleasure from it. At that point, that's addiction. Okay. okay? Uh, right. The, the solution to this is either A, don't engage in the thing that much, right? You know, and that's is particularly important for drugs of abuse like cocaine, amphetamine. Those things ruin lives, right? Mm -hmm. Heroin, everybody agrees. This is a bad sure, idea, right? right. But with things that you enjoy, skateboarding, good relationships, et cetera, coffee, mm. the key is every once in a while, you just don't want to do it. Just every once in a while, you just want to just keep your dopamine in check. So let's say you land the, oh, here we're back to the Nolly Hill flip. Yeah. We're, we're yeah, actually getting yeah, good at these Nolly Hill flips. Oh my God. I'm glad it's dialed. Yeah. Should be for dialed, now. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So now we're catching it with the back foot, the whole thing. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> at some point, you know, you make it, just don't celebrate too much, right? And actually, you, I mean, I don't know what the rule is now in skateboarding, but you know, there, there's no burst out of yes and went on. Like I know it's people- they're, they're, yeah. It's still happening. Contest. Yeah, it's still happening. Yeah. Yeah. With the contest. I always wanted to murder yeah. those yeah. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's somewhat okay. It really? is okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's street wise, yeah. street wise, it's kind of crazy. It's it allowed. Well, but it's been it's happening not, a lot more. Well, now. I guess this is good. The there used to be so many rules. This is a good thing about skateboarding. Now kids, there aren't as many rules. I've seen a lot of kids do it because they don't know any better. Right. Like little right. kids, because they're like All 12. Right, well, with little kids, let them celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But older yeah. dudes, yeah. I don't see it in the streets too much. In the you, you do, because it, I mean, you're, you're, everybody's there oh, and hyped, and you know you get yeah. excited. It's I guess if you're excited. We've been seeing a little bit more. We've been seeing a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is also the you know the post-win depression that people feel. Like if you guys have been out on a lot of tours, sure. and it's just so much fun. Yeah. Right. Oh my I mean, god. It's touring, touring, touring. It's just it's the best. It's a, it's amazing. It's the best. And then you get back. Oh my god. And it's a drop. You yeah, It's yeah, a drop yeah, below yeah. baseline. Right. Yeah. And then you come back to to normal. Right. Mm. And I think people who think they are depressed, they might be depressed. But a lot of times, you just have to understand that this dopamine system is like a currency. It's a it's a money system in your brain of expectation and value and letdowns and wins. And the rule is. 
to have a healthy, well-balanced life, be like you're on. Don't get too high or too low. Right, hey, right, 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 right. I, yeah. huh. I had this weird thing happen to me um, a few years ago, and I, I don't, I guess, and it's weird to like, talk about my own tricks, but I did this one trick on social media. So basically it goes to social media. I did this trick, it goes kind of viral. Which was the trick? It, it was the fakie trick, yeah. the fakie manual. And I was really stoked, you know, it was like something big for me. The next day, I felt anxiety, like I had to do something better than that. Oh yeah. And I, I fully had this anxiety come over me. And I was like, I gotta post something or I gotta right, do right, something. Right, right. And my friend's like, hey dude, you, you can just chill. Now you gotta keep right. up with yeah. what? Exactly, and, right. And like, uh, yeah, what is, is this your, I don't know. That's your dopamine. So you had the big dopamine surge. Look, yeah. let's, and, and none of this is pathologic. This is just how we're wired, sure. yeah. right? This is great. You made something challenging. You were celebrated by your community. These are all the elements of quality, healthy neural wiring yeah, and yeah. great community, which is skateboarding, right? Mm -hmm. I guess a moment ago we were kind of making fun of people were screaming after somebody makes <laughs> yeah. it, but let's face it, that's actually a beautiful thing. That's right. a great thing. So yeah. celebrating your friend's wins. Sure, right? sure, I mean, sure, you're sure. home, you make something that's Oh, great. you're hyped. Yeah, exactly. So. We don't want to punish that. No. Mm -hmm. But just let him ride away. No. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. 100%, 100%. So I didn't cheer for myself right. when I landed. Just letting you know. Let, us do, the, <laughs> let <laughs> us do the cheering for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> so the so after that dopamine surge, then there's a compensation in your body. Just like being awake too long, you need to be you need to sleep. There's mm -hmm. this drive for homeostasis, as mm -hmm. they call it. And so we call it that the pain system kicks up and it does, it creates this anxiety and this desire for more. This is how people end up gambling addicts. This is how, you know, you you party with people and then you wake up in the morning and somebody's still at it. And you're yeah. like, what is going on here? And you know, some of that has a pre uh, genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. Some of it doesn't. Some of, people always like to think, oh, what's the trauma that drove them to this? There's, there is that mm -hmm. sometimes, but sometimes no. A lot of it is just trying to regulate that dopamine system. So the thing to do that's really great is you still have that win. It is healthy now and again to just think about that win and how good it feels. I bet you if you think about it now, it just feels good in your body, mm -hmm. right? You can just, you feel energized by, that's dopamine. Mm -hmm. And dopamine is actually made from some of the same chemicals that epinephrine is made from, adrenaline. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so dopamine and adrenaline and the hormone testosterone, they all hang out together, they're homies, mm. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and after they hang out and go home, then you have the molecules like serotonin, oxytocin, they're more about mellow and chill. Mm -hmm. And learning how to go back and forth on that seesaw is really important. Hang out with dopamine, <laughs> right hang out with dopamine epinephrine and testosterone because you do get that surge it makes you feel capable right? yeah and this is a big part of our evolution as a species feeling capable of killing more of whatever species you were trying to kill and eat right sure um, more mates take over more towns whatever it was yeah, yeah. right it's a win and it doesn't matter what the win is there's only one currency of winning in the nervous system and that's dopamine uh -huh. right there's yeah. no debate about what currency which cryptocurrency dollar euro yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It's only one, it's dopamine. Mm. So you just have to give it some time. And people who are really functional and happy in life and high performers are people that learn how to go back and forth on this seesaw. Mm. So they get the big win and then they just chill and they know how to chill and they know how to enjoy that. Cause there's a whole other state of celebration that's with the things you have in your possession. You don't feel like you have to do anything. You're just good right where you are. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm not making this up, this isn't psychology, this is biology. So dopamine is all about pursuit and excitement for things beyond the reach of your skin. Mm -hmm. It's out there, it's something you're going to do that you're excited about. Right. Serotonin and that system is more about being really good just in the confines of your own skin. It's just holding your son when he was a little baby, just feeling like this is amazing. Okay, your yeah. brain's flooded with oxytocin it's just you don't need him to do anything totally. and he can feel that actually we know that babies they've done brain imaging of babies and and parents or friends when they hang out that feeling like yeah like this is amazing yeah. huh. that feeling of bonding is a mutual release of the same chemicals mm -hmm. And it's, it's an amazing thing. And so just learning how to go back and forth and just expecting that that's gonna happen. Yeah. And I think people get really hungry for more dopamine. Nothing wants dopamine more than dopamine. dopamine. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and so when you find yourself scrolling social media and it doesn't feel good, you're like, why am I doing this? Why right. did I pick up the phone? There are two reasons. One is that the behavior has become a little bit reflexive. 
it's sort of like if I had right now where no phones out, but if someone picked one up, we would all do it. It's just right, kind of reflexive, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. But another part of it is that you do get dopamine hits from it. I mean, I saw that kid do the impossible 50-50 down the Oceanside Hub, and I was like, whoa, that's a dopamine hit. So it felt so good. I didn't even do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Imagine how it felt for him. <laughs> so then you start scrolling and you're like, what am I doing? Well, you're you're you don't realize it, but subconsciously you're seeking more of those wins. Yeah. So the best thing you can do if you actually like social media, if you like video games, if you like skateboarding, if you like your girlfriend, mm -hmm. is actually take some space. Right. Right? Right. Take some space. Yeah. I mean, this is the new relationship phenomenon, mm -hmm. right? Where you're just kind of buzzed out yeah. on just don't need sleep. That's mm -hmm. just pure dopamine release. Yeah. And then when people come back from vacation, they're like, oh yeah, they're not that great. That crash, that's because there was too much of that and you're comparing what comes after to that. It's all about a comparison to where you were before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? So you just... You don't have to be super anal analytic about it. You just want to like, where am I at? Am I here? Am I here? Am I here? And just realize that being able to go up and down through these different chemical states and mental states, it's really good. Or just be like Jiran, just yeah. cruising. Yeah. You know? but is, there, yeah. is there different levels of dopamine that gets released? Or oh, yeah. is it all bigger wins, more dopamine. Bigger wins, more yeah. dopamine. Yeah. Okay. And more anticipation. More yes. dopamine. Yeah. But I know what you're saying though. It's like everything in, in moderation, right? That's what they say kind of. Yeah, right? with peaks, including sure. moderation. Because everything like, in moderation, including moderation. You, oh yeah. yeah. Cause we talked about like the video game thing, right? And it's like, cool, like I play some video games, but I can't do it all the time, right? Do, I can you, play like maybe twice a week, maybe but are three you a, times. Right, so you can set so, up constraints. Some people do that. Right. Look, right. I mean, addicts who deal with this, they're like calling the hotel before and get rid of the mini bar, yeah, and yeah, yeah, take yeah. away the TV and this whole thing. I mean, some people have to do that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Learning how to control your relationship to the things that you love yeah. is really great. Right, now, right, right. I, as I say this, performance and success generally correlates with throwing yourself at something full bore for a long period of time. Right. I mean, I used to, I literally, I lived in my laboratory. I didn't get paid much as a, as a graduate student. Yeah. I was like, you know, I'm a skateboarder. Like I'll sleep under the desk. Sure. I'll shower at the gym. Like I don't care. I'll brush my teeth in the thing. And I get the money and go do other things. I'm going to pay for an apartment. This place is great. <laughs> the skateboarder <laughs> mentality, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, there were nights I slept at EMB. I wasn't one of the, the main like slumber party at EMB crowd, but there were nights just stay there. Like yeah. why, why leave? Mm -hmm. So it didn't feel, I was like, there's a roof here in the lab. So, you know, you have to throw yourself at things if you want to get really good at them. Mm. But I decided that was going to be my career. But eventually, yeah, there were times when it's like, wow, maybe working 9,800 hours a week is not good. Or we published four really good papers, which are sort of the equip. You know, there's some papers when you publish them, it's like skater of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just like, oh, or like a thrasher cover or something. Mm -hmm. Had a few of those. And then your first thought, it's just like your example a moment ago, that your first thought afterwards is, will I ever do it again? Right. Yeah. And that's when you realize you're chasing something other than the experience. You're chasing this internal state a feeling, whatever, loved, wanted, celebrated, which is great. Yeah, I actually think with, um, with Nigel, mm. he's actually in a position now to do his best skateboarding ever. Mm. This is the, de the defining moment. Does he fold and go, oh, well, I was supposed to be the guy that got the gold in the documentary. Well, the documentary is still being made, yes. right? So now's where he actually gets to write the story, mm. right? And I think any big accomplishment that win or lose, right, that, raises this question of what next. And I, I don't want to keep blowing them up because people are going to think like, you know, there's something going on here, but like that's actually why I think Danny's successes have been on the mega ramp, which have just been so incredible. Mm. But the real question, and I'm sure it'll be amazing, is what's he going to do now? And now we know so many guys that are kind of getting to that stage of life where their body really can't hold up. Uh -huh. And if anyone can do it, it would be him or some of the sure. other guys, Mike Carroll, or I still think of him as Mikey. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> I don't think of him as Mikey, even though I think he's a year older than I am. But you know, people can keep recreating themselves. It's a question of what are you chasing? Because there's also the option to just enjoy it. Yeah. Right. I think about a Jim Thebo. I've never really, I've probably had three conversations with Jim. Seems happy to me. I don't know what goes on in his head, but somehow he's found meaning in what he's doing. Yeah, I really yeah. do sense that. Yeah. You get that sense. Definitely. Totally. You know, and finding meaning in what you're doing next, that's where the real true win is because it's not that we ever give up our desire to be liked or socially connected. It's that you find a place that fits with your stage of life and you find a place where 
you get dopamine hits from everything, mm -hmm. right? I always say addiction is a progressive narrowing of the things that give you pleasure, that uh -huh. give you dopamine. And I don't know anything about enlightenment, but if there is an enlightenment or a good life, it's about a progressive expansion of the things that mm -hmm. give you pleasure. Mm -hmm. So these days I love science, I love skateboarding, you know, I live vicariously through Clay Kreiner, you know. <laughs> I, 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 we all do. I, we all do. do. You know, it's it's you know, I'm grateful to be friends with Playback. I watch your podcast, I mm -hmm. listen to the Rogan podcast, Lex Friedman podcast. Like I'm I'm loving all of it. Right. And the key is that you can't let yourself get high on any of it. That place, like you you said, I just never got into that energy mm -hmm. where you're just super, super high. That is a terrific mental preservation mechanism. Yeah. And it's not about keeping yourself guarded in. If you're somebody who gets really hyped up, get hyped up, but mm -hmm. understand that there will be a drop. Yeah. And people who don't understand this get into real traps. Well, it's kind of like I, getting a trick. We, Mark Johnson calls it, or like, what do they call it? The um, Cinderella effect or something? Get a pumpkin. Pumpkin, like we get a trick that day and then you're super hyped and the next day you feel like, oh, I gotta get a trick, dude. Uh, you, you need to yeah. get a new clip yeah. exactly yeah, yeah yeah well it's like winning on the craps table yeah mm -hmm. D who goes oh let's leave vegas now yeah right. <laughs> no and the reason is they understand that and so the intermittent reward schedule the one that's unpredictable mm -hmm. is actually the best one for learning the this is why skateboarding is so amazing is that if you knew you could make things every single time as crazy as this sounds if you knew you could make whatever you wanted every single time you would soon quit skateboarding. I've, also, yeah, I've often, yeah. I've often yeah, had that too. wish. Yeah. Have you yeah, heard yeah, of people sure. when they're younger, it's so easy for them, they just stop doing it. Yeah, right? yeah you Well, I hate that. to bring him up as an example because I have respect for him and admiration for him, but my friend Paul Zuanich, right? Growing up, you'd say, hey, backsmith that rail, Boom. do it. Yeah. yeah. You'd say, yeah. like, let's play soccer. And he'd just kill it out there, yeah. you know? And I don't think it, everything in life came easy for him, but he eventually moved into to areas of life where things were more challenging. I think we seek challenge, we like friction. We like a little bit of friction. We don't want too much. Mm. But I mean, I would have given both arms to have half his skill level. I really would, Yeah. yeah. you know? But I think that when we see people who have tremendous skill, we think that, oh, it must be just the easiest thing in life. But oftentimes, yeah, they don't stay with it. Mm. And offline, we were talking about some skateboarders with amazing style that we knew who just, just incredible, but they didn't actually love skateboarding. Yeah. I mean, I think, you, I think you have to love all of it. You have to love even being hurt, the highs and yeah. lows. I mean, science yeah. is like this. 90% of the time in science, you come up wrong. The experiment doesn't work. The paper gets rejected. And so it, it's a lot like skateboarding. You just hammer, 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 hammer yourself, mm -hmm. make it. And then you're like, oh, right. but it feels so good. <laughs> Here's a question I have for you because like, you know, you 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 talk a lot, right? You do podcasts. I don't do talk, I'm a quiet podcast. guy. <laughs> <laughs> you do your own podcasts. You, uh, you're on podcast. You do a lot of Instagram videos. You do a lot of teaching and stuff. You write papers, your notes, your drawings. I mean, like, it seems like you're always going, right? And I know we're all wired differently, but I'm the type of guy who I could sit here and do an interview and talk to people for three hours, four hours. I am done, right? I need to you're go done, home. Right? He's telling me I've been no, done. No, 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 But I'm just saying like, I need, I need that time after that to decompress yeah. and really re rejuvenate myself and really, it, 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 it's really like a draining level, you know? And I'm just wondering like, is that just me? Is that just how I'm wired? Or is that maybe something in my lifestyle or brain that I can like try to alter and really get my energy level back up and Hold not you. need that? I'm 22. I'm 44. I wouldn't try and change it. I mean, first of all, that's healthy. And, okay. and you know, and I'm here and I'm alert and it's nighttime and I'm, I'm wide awake, but I sleep great. Yeah, you yeah. know, I've got my tools. I know how to. Tr I know how to flip the switch. And that's the thing is like, you know? maybe I don't know how to flip that switch Wait, on but, and off yet, you know? Uh, you see what well, I'm saying? We well, have to know when you're grinding. You have to feel that yes, like, yes, oh, yes, like yes. I'm pushing. You know that feeling? Yeah. It's like it physically hurts a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's a good good idea to back off. Right. There. You know, I mean, for all that can be said about resilience and mental toughness and, you know, I David Goggins has been out to my lab. I know David and, you know, oh, he's yeah. great. I, I, endorsed his book and the whole thing, not that he needed my help, um, <laughs> but he is like that. I mean, he's up at three in the morning running mm -hmm. and he's swimming. I mean, he's a hard driving guy all the time, all gas pedal. Sure. Um, you know, that's what works for him. I think that, and he does know how to recoup himself mm -hmm. because if you really want to be a quote unquote high performer, right? What I mean by that is you have good social connections. People like you, you like you. 
you know, 90% of the time, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, you, yeah, yeah. you enjoy a physical activity like skateboarding, you have a intellectual life. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to be an, an intellectual or an academic, but you like to think and learn and explore that involves moving back and forth across a seesaw. And the real key is to not push yourself hard into the paint too often, or you're, you're in conflict with your nervous system. A, a good example of this would be if you look at certain dogs, I used to have a bulldog. They make very few spontaneous movements. Bulldog is a chill animal. Mm -hmm. They can get up and go, but most of the time they're just like pure economy of effort. You walk by, they move their eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a pit bull, a lot of spontaneous movement. Sure. Yeah. Right. And that reflects what we call the base level of autonomic arousal. Some people idle or hum at a higher you know, it's sounding a little mm. bit weird now, but a little higher frequencies. Zzz, zzz, zzz. And they move around a lot and their movements are kind of, and other people are, are comfortable being still. Yeah, 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 Some yeah, people yeah, fidget yeah. a lot. Right. You're a high energy guy. One of the reasons you're thin mm. is that there's something called NEAT, N-E-A-T, mm -hmm. which is non-exercise induced thermogenesis. The more you move around like this, it's like 800 to 2000 calories a day. Jeez. Yeah. In fact, people who are really thin, you, what you find is if you look at their spontaneous movements, they move a lot. Mm. Larger people tend to move less. They're like, right. they're like my bulldog, they're like, you right. know? Yeah. <laughs> and people who are chill, they have just real economy of effort and economy of thinking. And I would say, you know, 10% of adults and maybe even more of kids, they have a little bit of attention deficit disorder. Mm. A lot of them find skateboarding and mm. sports like that, martial arts. I have to say, you know, when I was younger, I had a little bit of a Tourette, <clears throat> like a grunting tick. Oh. When I'd slam skateboarding, something I probably should have done more of, but when I'd really just, <laughs> I'd feel reset. I was like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I feel normal mm. now, right. like evened out. That's a actually a, a pseudo clinical indication of something like a lot of underlying reverberatory activity, mm. right? And you know, we can sense this as we get older, that tends to relax, just like every puppy is like this, everything's a stimulus. And then you get older and you're like Blayback, <laughs> you know, or Jerome. Yeah. You know? So, or you probably sit a little bit mellower than me. Yeah. And you seem mellow and he's so mellow. He's just, I don't know what he's doing back right. there. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows. Nobody's still a mystery. I just watched the show. Yeah, exactly. Still a mystery. <laughs> exactly. So I think we all vary. Yeah. You know? yeah and yeah. skateboarding is a place where you can channel that. Like where you see people learn to kind of express that underlying mm -hmm. thing. Like uh, just to drop some examples that I love, Cardiel. Mm. I mean, I knew Cardiel. I got to see him do a huge frontside all, uh, 180 ollie at night over that uh, that gap at the, that Jacob shot that. Mm. Oh my God. First toe-ins with cars. Like that guy was just slayer, 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 slayer. Danny too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So much underlying, like in the Asian, uh, excuse me, the Eastern philosophy, it's chi, that mm -hmm. energy. You know what chi is? It's dopamine. Oh, okay. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, let's go, let's yeah, go, let's yeah, go, yeah. let's go, let's go. That, right? And then you have people that are super chill. Right. Yeah. Right? That are right. just mellow. And I'm not, you know, people use pharmacology and all sorts of things. A lot of that, there's a, pre, a genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you show up that way. And, you know, Mike, it was a shock when Blayback was like, yeah, I mean, I, a lot of like my thoughts are coming so fast. I'm like, Dude, you have like one spontaneous movement in an hour. I know, yeah. But you get him behind a camera and he's choo, 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 yeah, choo, yeah, 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 yeah. and he shoots photos all day and he's up at three. I mean, that guy works so hard. He'll go through 1800 photos mm -hmm. after a two day shoot. He would show up at my house in Topanga and just start going through photos. Like he's so dedicated to his craft. Right. And a lot of people who have anxiety or an ADHD or something, they learn how to funnel it. Right. And I, I swear that skateboarding is a place where, yeah, if you wanna just cruise, you feel mellow, you can do that. If you're just feeling super hyped up, you can, you can do that. And so what you're seeing is the expression of this underlying level of autonomic arousal. Mm, yeah. And um, anyway, there, there are a lot of ways to, to link up skateboarding and neuroscience in this way, but this is what gives us our individual differences. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess what I was just thinking right now was like after saying that and saying like, oh, I, I get it, I need to decompress. I think that after shows, like I get a huge dopamine release. Oh yeah, because I am like, you know, right now we're mellow, we're having a good time. You leave, and I'm like, dude, that was 
fucking amazing. Yeah. That was so yeah. good. So, so that was cresting. Yeah. You See, know what I mean? But that's then, great. But then I go home and I'm like, right. I cra- yeah, I'm like, but that's don't bother me. I need mm. to so fucking, that you can sleep. Yeah. It feels yeah. like we got to It feels like we got a skate clip after Cut. the totally. episode is done. We're like, oh, we got a clip. That, that was tight. So right. Good. It, it, right. You know. Yeah, but to you, we'll be like, hey, that was great. And when you leave, we're like, whoa. Well, there are a lot of cues, you know. And and as a neuroscientist, I'm always picking up on these things. Like, I don't want to call attention to him with because then he'll change it. But like, if you look at Chris's, eye, he's wide eyed. Yeah. Right. So we always think about like when you get scared, you go wide eyed. But okay. the more alert you are, the more wide eyed you are. Right. 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 right this right, is right. obvious. When you get sleepy, what happens? Your your eyelids close. Sure. Right. Sure. So we blink less often when we're really excited. Mm-hmm. Every time mm-hmm. you blink, it's like a, a frame coming down or a curtain going down on a play. Mm-hmm. It resets your time perception. Mm-hmm. That's why when you're really excited, you you don't you, blink. You're paying attention. It's like a take. That's the brain is taking takes of the world right. and processing that information. So if you want to remember something, yeah. you don't blink. Don't blink. Yeah, don't blink. Eventually your eyes will dry out. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try to take that. Never I know. Again. I should have not blinked this yeah. whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of information. And a lot of people who are have a photographic memory, mm-hmm. they don't blink very often. Actually, it's a good opportunity for a Phelps story. Mm. Um, miss him. Yeah. I was not close with him, but I miss his presence in the world and mm-hmm. in skateboarding. Yeah, yeah. He was Definitely truly in a minority of one. And... And you could you couldn't make up that character. Oh my no, god! Sure. So and yeah. there's a lot of mythology around him, but I'm about to add to that mythology. So when I was working with the, that was just a part time guy freelancing for Slap. Mm-hmm. When he, the Slap office was chill. They were down there listening to music. It was usually like guitar music, and like Whiteley was chill, and the other guy was was chill. They had fish tanks and all that kind of thing. <laughs> and then you go upstairs, and it was like oh, like war, right? Someone was always yelling, or someone was, you know. And so I went up there, and I was supposed to do some article on some some band or something right and uh so i stuck my head into phelps's office and people were just like don't do it don't do it and i just said hey you know i know there's a 10-year moratorium on any bands that can't be covered within a 10-year period do you want and he's just like that mm. like just grunts pulls me out into <laughs> the, the stacks of of old issues okay and he goes and he pull, pulls out the issue Shows me the, the article on that particular band. Wow. And I was like, how do you know? There's just stacks, wow. right? No electronic wow. filing system, sure. nothing. And I was like, wow, do you mind if I cover these guys again? And he just goes, <laughs> and goes back in his office. <laughs> I was like, this dude is amazing. And then, so I asked somebody, there was this guy, Eben, that used to work there that did ad sales. I was like, what was that? And he's like, photographic memory. So Phelps was dialed in oh, on a whole yeah, nother level. Yeah, really, yeah. really special person. And again, like, you know, here, at, you know, here and gone far, far too fast. Mm. But man, he left a mark. I mean, he, he you know, absolutely did. And if you didn't interact with him or know him, you'd think that the whole thing—the glasses and the tape and the thing—that yeah, yeah, it was yeah. all an act. This is it? Like he like pushed through Hunter's Point. Yeah, I know guys that won't drive through Hunter's Point. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, he didn't blink much. He didn't blink much. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Not a big You're blinker. Not to blink anymore. Not no, a big I'm like blinker. Thinking about, I'm fucking blinking a lot. Right yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're good. You're good. <laughs> No, but it's so uh, interesting. Is there? Oh, go ahead. Did you have a I, question? I just, I don't know. You kind of answered it on like the Cardiel thing, but like more like if you watch skateboarders skate, can you tell what their like personality is like? I mean, I, I like to think I can. Yeah. Um, and, you know, through social media mm-hmm. or a video, it's a little bit tough. Yeah. Um, Let's say you're watching someone skate freely. Like you can see them bail and the way they react, how they bail and the way they land tricks and how consistent they are because... I just went like thinking about myself. I'm like, sometimes I tend to like to really dial in on a trick. I have to fully commit, and if I'm not fully committed, I just won't even come right. close. I'm you like, know, you're gonna kick it away. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah. I'm like, do I have commitment issues? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, no, I mean, well, let's face it. I mean, skateboarding, you can get hurt. So yeah, yeah. when you're committing, you are committing to the possibility of wrecking yourself too. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I mean, can I tell? I mean. I can tell a lot by how someone pushes, mm, yeah. but that's just from having been around a while, yeah, right? Yeah, and you yeah. can too, right? When I don't need to see somebody do anything or land anything or try anything, I just need to see him push. You're like, he's super comfy on his skateboard, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, 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 right. But uh, yeah, the Olympics was weird. I, I don't know. I've, I've got such mixed feelings about it. I'm, look, I'm glad it was in the Olympics. So. Probably got a lot. I'm sure it inspi- got a lot of kids excited. Yeah, I mean that's oh, that's sure. a plus. I, yeah, that's I think plus. I'm still old enough and of that generation. That was that feels like part of what makes skateboarding so special is that it, it in my mind it doesn't want to be in the Olympics. Yeah, right. But this is also what holds skateboarding back. 
right? Mm -hmm. Because if it's super niche and it doesn't want to have these big sponsors, well then people can't have long careers in it either. Mm -hmm. So it's a double-edged you know, sword. It's a double-edged yeah. sword. And I have nothing but respect for people like Tony who, you know, do Uber ads and I'll yeah. go, yes. Like it's sort of like he got through the net right. because he's allowing himself to live what his life the way that he wants. And he's got nothing to prove. He's got to answer to nobody. Sure. You know, he's been around through all the ups and downs and he's still, still sits at a very top place. Absolutely. I mean, he, his, his legacy is cemented in skateboarding, right? right? Yeah, right. So, but I think that when I saw it in the Olympics, I just, I worried that um, people watching would think, you know, that uh, making a making all your tricks is what's important or yeah. something. But you know, th this is just sort of inside ball type stuff where you want whoever takes it up and to stay with it to get the best of it, which yeah. is, as you know, happens in a completely different way mm -hmm. in a completely different context. But hey, it, if they stay in it, they'll get that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. The magic True. is, you know, two in the morning in a parking garage with no cameras, no yes. Instagram with your friends and maybe even alone. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, that's the magic. That is, that is the magic 100%. right there. You nailed, you nailed it, you nailed it. Yeah, I think I, I, what I hoped that the Olympics would do is it, I hope it would trickle down, you know, the money coming in would help these skateboard companies yep. and skate shops and stuff like that. Because skateboarding is a roller coaster. It's up, it's down. It's, it's really hard to survive even as a professional skateboarder that's just trying to do this for a living. A lot of professional skateboarders have another job. Right. You know, yeah. and so it's like... I'm hoping that a lot of these companies and skate shops can take care of their riders and really, you know, pay them appropriately. And well, they're you know, making it, money off them, so that, you know, yeah, that's what's crazy. That's seen, what we're talking about. Everyone right? that was in the Olympics, you've seen they had these crazy sponsors like Calvin Klein and Polo, and you're like, whoa, this is this is different. Sure, yeah, yeah sure. Well, I think that for the general public, which I guess now, you know, I. I am a part of, I guess we all are. Um, I never saw myself that way, but I, it's true. It's true. Uh, from my lab, if I look out, I have a view of that hubba at Stanford. Oh, you do? And every once in a while, kids are out there and I see security coming around. And every once in a while, I think about calling security to just kind of like, <laughs> like, I just feel like, let them have it. Yeah, you know? It's a right, hubba. Right, it's a hubba. It's not like they're doing any any damage. It's like a little wax. Totally, and, I, you know, yeah. and, and I see what they're going for and, I, and they're out there with cameras and, you know, it's, yeah. uh, they're making history. Um, so, I, I mean, to me, I think that there are places where skateboarding could really benefit from having, um, you know, relationships to bigger sponsors and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Part of it, and I'm probably not the best person to comment on this, but part of it is skateboarding also relaxing itself a little bit and understanding that it's not going to lose its identity if it does do that. Yes. Right. Right. Because right? yes. skateboarding as a community really thrives on, let's be honest, on a kind of dislike of a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. It's always pride itself on being different than that. Sure. Like that, but not like surfing, but not like surfing, right? Yep. Like mixed martial arts, but not like mixed martial arts. But look at mixed martial arts. That's actually a decent example. I just gave myself a decent answer. It's <laughs> a decent example. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm just surprised. Is all. Uh, sorry about that. Um, you know, jujitsu, Thai kickboxing. I mean, these were sports that were not as popular as Western boxing, stand up, mm -hmm. conventional boxing. Sure, sure. And the UFC has created a billion dollar industry no, out of damn. this, thanks to the genius of Dana White and everyone around. Conor, you have your Conor McGregor's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't worry about having big sponsors and making money and putting, you know, uh, asses and seats, that's what they do. And that's what allows them to keep going and to recruit really terrific talent. People mm -hmm. can go into that. Sure. So, you know, skateboarding could do the same. There's just always been this complicated thing where the best skateboarding is not done in arenas and parks, you know? And right. so, I mean, vert's kind of an exception because that is how vert is done. Yeah. But uh, it's tricky. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do. Look, if I had a major corporation, I would say skateboarders first. To me, it's the the be, it's the ultimate sport. It's actually the only sport I really care about mm -hmm. because it because um, I can feel it in my body when I see somebody make it. Right. I get I get a vicarious dopamine hit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, that's yeah. me. But I do think that um, in thinking this out, that the Olympics hopefully netted a bunch of kids right. who totally. are going to. Get into this. Thing. Go buy. Yeah. Go to their local shop and yeah, buy. Yeah, that trickles and, down. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The trickle down. Right, sure. right, right. We just right. hope they learn the way that we all grew up, loving skateboarding. And, right? right, like that's, it might be a little different just because we're in a different time. You know, for yeah. sure. It changed. I mean, the guys yeah. that were older than us, and it was mostly guys. Let's face it. Now you have girls. Oh women, yeah, women doing yeah. skateboarding yeah, yeah, before yeah. it was not the like that. The landscape is being changed real time. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, we. I mean, we thought those guys were kooks, and they hated us. 
and it's probably going to be the same, except there seems to be more love across the generations that's, now. That's mm-hmm. right. It does right, seem right, that right. way. Like, sure. I, yeah. I don't see this like, oh, like millennial skateboarders or whatever it is. Well, <laughs> I feel know? like whatever generation you grew up in was the best generation, right? Yeah. It's although like, oh, I'm so glad I grew up in this. Yeah, although I came up in the like micro wheel thing and that was really depressing. Oh. Big clothes, <laughs> micro wheel. But listen, bad. you're trying to we skate. We some phases, really. <laughs> that was bad. You're trying to skate EMB okay. with fucking bearing covers as wheels. Yeah, we did. crazy. We yeah. did do that. I managed to escape that a little bit yeah because even though i never could have hung in there with them i always had immense admiration for julian stranger and those guys who oh, grew man. up in the city that generation like tommy julian yeah all those guys shrugi and those guys that like rode the whole city not just embarcadero right, 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 right. and they just took over the city and i see what gx 1000 those mm-hmm. maniacs are doing totally and i'm like wow yeah what does anyone actually th- what do, do people even have they Check those guys out. Brain scans. Are they all right? Are they all right? You should talk with them. No. Yeah. No, I'm not going to talk to them. I actually saw some of those guys in the city. I was uh, up near Bernal Heights and I saw some of those guys. They they look like a gang. Right. Yeah, they really like, And I'm yeah. scared of very few people. I'm not trying to draw fire by saying that, by the way. <laughs> I'm scared of very few people, but they look like a gang. They do not look like the kind of guys you just roll up to and like, hey, what's yeah, up? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, they're, they're probably hella cool. Yeah, I don't no, know them personally, sure. but I'm yeah. sure they're like fucking. Yeah, like, no, I'm not uh, afraid of them. I just think yeah. what they do is uh, psycho. It's psycho. It's putting everybody in danger. Fuck. And I think it's that they do it with no, they don't smile, nothing. They don't just they, like beer, cigarette, let's bomb go. this hill. Let's go. Someone <laughs> dies, mirror them. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Sound. It's crazy. It's crazy. Man. I don't know, dude. I is there anything that you learned in your, you know, the, studying the brain and everything that you were just totally fucking blown away by? Mm. Like you're like, I mean, I'm sure you get Every blown day. away, but just <laughs> yeah, something probably. like that. You're just like, God damn, that's fucking crazy. Our brain is. What blew your mind about the mind? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The um, well, there are a couple things. One is just purely structural, but like there's no actionable tool, but it proves that as much as our brains are all the same, they are also very different. Right. Yeah, and uh, and the example I can give is a pretty basic one. Um, so you have blood vessels in your eye. Your mm-hmm. eyes are part of your brain, as I mentioned, mm-hmm. and light comes in, obviously, but because you have blood vessels, they cast a shadow onto the what's called your retina. So it's sort of like having uh, a camera and a light, but then you're casting a shadow onto the camera. Mm. So it looks like fingers. So it's literally, but you don't see those fingers. In fact, if you close one eye, you actually have a big old hole in your visual field called your blind spot, yep. where all the neurons send connections into the brain, but you don't see that. Right. I've the seen- brain fills in and makes a best guess. So like I'm here and I know that's drawn and that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and I can do this a million times. And so my brain is is making it a very good best guess. Right, but you could find that little hole. You could, there's yeah. a way that you can do yeah, it. Yeah, In yeah, ophthalmology yeah. clinics, yeah. we do this all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And you also have all these shadows, like a spider web being, like your, your visual field is actually like this, but you don't see those. And it's because in your, what we call your visual cortex in the back, if we were to take out your cortex and I've taken out some brains of human cortices and laid it out flat oh. yeah we got we got one of these actually a colleague of mine to be fair got one of these from a one-eyed guy a guy who had one eye cut out in a knife fight the guy went to san quentin mm. died i'll never forget this this neuroophthalmologist i won't mention where this was this is an amazing paper though went brought the head back in a bucket in a bucket took the brain out flattened it out and then stained it up for some markers that allow him to see the structure of this guy's visual cortex. Okay. And what you what he saw was amazing. What he saw was that there is literally a fingerprint of the blood vessels in your eye in your brain. The shadows are cast onto the brain. Now they aren't actual shadows, it's just that the the neurons of your brain have moved over to make sure that you don't experience any spider web oh. image in your visual field. So why am I telling you all this? Well, you asked me like something that just blew my mind. Yeah, well, yeah, first yeah. of all, seeing someone's head come in in a bucket was pretty I weird. Mean, <laughs> yeah. um, but I it hope is, he got permission. Is neuroscience. What's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, got, he got permission. Uh, <laughs> Dude donated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got a bunny over the donated. Taliban. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, God, but the other thing is, is that as much as all of our brains work the same way, dopamine is the currency, you got a forebrain, you got areas that make you sleep, blah, blah, blah is that all of our brains are also a unique fingerprint of our early experience. Mm. And you live your entire life through that filter, through that map. It's like if, as if your Google Maps and my Google Maps and your Google Maps and your Google Maps were all slightly different based on the places we had been before and mm. the things that we like. And 
Uh, and so that means that we're, we are all experiencing the same reality. And there are some universals, like things fall down, not up, gotcha. uh, et cetera. But we are probably going through life experiencing things slightly differently too. And uh, I don't, to me, that just um, blows my mind. In terms of what way you like experience him differently? Well, anytime there's a difference of opinion uh -huh. or that two people see the same thing and one, like occasionally I'll send something to playback. I'll be like, do you see this guy laying this thing? And he's like, yeah, no, not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> not, not cool. And I'm like, really? I was like, all right, I guess I lost my taste in skateboarding. And I just realized we just have different tastes. Now we right. mostly converge, okay. right? Yeah, right? Yeah, 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 he yeah, has yeah, good yeah, taste. Yeah. I have good taste. No, but, uh, <laughs> But you know, Mike's seen a lot of skateboarding. Mm. And so occasion occasionally there's just a difference of taste yeah, or opinion. Yeah, 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 for sure. And this is also what makes contests complicated. Is like yeah, how yeah, can yeah. you really put something like skateboarding through that? It's like yeah. art. Yeah, you know, yeah, say yeah. like I like Rothko's, I don't. Like I like Basquiat, I like exactly. Picasso's. It's, it's a lot of that is truly in the eye of the beholder and it's based on our experience. So I try and keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Everyone's showing up with a different kind of template or map of reality. There are some universals we all have to agree on, mm. but everyone's showing up that way. Blue dress, gold dress. Well, that's a different phenomenon. Yeah, that was, that's that's a background contrast phenomenon. That as a vision scientist, uh, sometime I could walk you through it, but that has to do with what's next to it mostly. Oh, yeah. what's next to yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, the same color placed on a different background looks very different. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in that case, it's sort of what you're setting as foreground in the front and what you're setting as background. Because a lot of people were looking at it on, on their phone. Right. It's like a white background right. picture. Yeah. And it once you see it, it doesn't tend to flip the other way either. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yep, 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 There's yep, some yep. visual illusions that they flip back and forth, like faces, vases, where it's two faces. Yeah. And you got to see the faces, see the faces, see the faces. See the faces. Um, or something yeah. like that that has something in it and you and then you see it and then you can't unsee it. Right. Can you do those dot stereograms? Oh, you know? yeah. I love them. Yeah. I, I can't, can't see them. You can't, I can't do see it, it all either. either. No. I have like, my binocular vision. Really? Not very good. I have no, no idea. Yeah, I could do that. I'll look yeah. right into something. I'm like, I have no right. idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And these individual differences show up with things like that. They show up with perfect pitch. Mm. Some people just hear a tone and, and pick the correct key on right. the piano. Most right. people have to try a few keys. Mm. Right. Perfect pitch. Um, you know, I mean, it's clear. I mean, earlier offline, we talked about the young guy, Mariano. I remember me and Guy when he was super, you know, at the first quartermaster cup. Mm -hmm. Then he was coming up to the Bay Area a lot, hanging out with Jacob and, got to see him and skateboard with him a lot. And he had something, he's just, kid was m wired for skateboarding. And actually I was thinking, oh, when he grows up, finally like grows into, when he hits puberty, right? Balls drop and grows into a full body. <laughs> yeah. Will he still be able to do this? And he just got better, yeah. right? And that's, uh, you know, early wiring. And um, it's like certain nervous system meets perfect match mm -hmm. sport. And, you know, but that's also where you get your, you know, your you know, your Jordans and your, yeah, it's that beautiful people. match. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. starting early helps. I mean, there's a reason why like Williams sisters, Tiger Woods, like, right. you know, when right. you start something young, it really, really helps. Yeah. So kids start skateboarding start young. Right. and don't quit. <laughs> yeah. Don't quit. It, let's, can we, can we just talk about like health and fitness and also like, you know, uh, just not necessarily working out, but more of like, you know, supplements and different things like foods and different things that you've kind of experienced that could help like other skaters sure. kind of, uh, yeah, maybe I mean, not get to optimal performance, but long lasting that, that will help them, yeah. you know? Sure. I mean, since you asked, uh, yeah, with all the caveats that I'm not trying to change skateboarding, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, skateboarding no. wants to change itself. Those tools are available and I can help, you know, if people want to make a change. Listen, so, I mean, listen. It's, it's, it's happening. I mean, it is, it is, it is. a lot of people very conscious of what they're eating, how well, they're going good. about their, you I mean, know, yeah, taking, yeah, taking care sure. of oneself mentally and physically, and that's, those things are linked, is especially always- Especially when we're getting older, right? Mm -hmm. When we get older, it becomes harder to perform and different things. You're losing your touch a little bit. Like, you know, there's certain things sure. that could play a part with the low dopamine uh, <laughs> levels. Yeah, you don't know. seem to have any trouble with dopamine, but yeah, I'll, I'll set that. some of that. Up. I'll set aside my kind of um, affinity to skateboarding as I knew it and just tell you what I would tell anybody, sure. there which you go. is how do you take really good care of yourself yeah. mentally and physically across the lifespan? Right. We talked about sleep. Yeah, we talked about sleep. Sleep's we talked about key. learning and yeah. how to learn better. So. Okay, so fundamental layer of mental and physical health is sleep. So yeah. get that morning light, 
get in the evening as well. If you can get sunlight all day, great. Then avoid bright lights at night. Get off the phone in the evening. There you go. At some point, read a book. It's good for you, not mm. on a Kindle. Okay. <laughs> Your brain will, you, trust me, fiction, nonfiction, you will grow. Okay. You're gonna, your skateboarding will get better. It actually will. Your, your, your mind was designed to read. If you don't want to do that, write, draw, mm. whatever. Hang out with your family, hang out with your homies. Just do it. Okay. The, you know, it's, the, the phone isn't terrible, but it's not everything. It's consuming us though. It really yeah. is. And if you want to continue to enjoy it, because now you know about dopamine reward prediction yeah, errors, yeah, right. put it away every once in a while. Yeah. Right? Put it away. Put yeah. it away every once in a while so that it continues to give you that hit. Right. Otherwise, it will give you a progressively smaller and smaller, smaller dopamine. Right. right. Exactly. People on TikTok, man, hours at night man. just fucking scrolling oh, yeah. and scrolling. You know? Yeah. We're headed for a crash with that. I don't intend to be part of that crash, and I don't think anyone wants to be a part of it. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna be the of our primate species, be yeah. the ones that escape there through, you go. through the net. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Also, all the people I know who are really good at what they do. Mm-hmm sport or academia or art or anything they know how to put the phone away yeah uh, you know you're rewarded for the amount of focus that you bring to something and the amount of relaxation and self-care that you bring after that mm. not for how much you think it's for how much time you're online but you get the trick offline mm-hmm. yeah, and then you bring right, it right, online right. Yeah, right? yeah yeah true. right i mean that's the way it works but i think a lot of people don't have something right they go to work they right. go home they eat dinner right and, and like, a lot of people don't just, have that right release right. that well, like us skateboarders yeah. have mm-hmm. right. right so and that that phone thing is there sure and one issue and uh and we'll go through these other health mm-hmm. uh promoting sure. tools but one issue also is that you know for people starting out now and they're seeing the clay criners and they're seeing all this like jimmy wilkins you know you kind of wonder why they would ever start right well you start because to this day a front side grind on pool coping just even a, a little one feels amazing yes. also Right. I'm sure what they do feels even more amazing. But remember, I don't want to give them any anxiety, but they also have to keep for their own well-being in their mind, they have to keep besting all this. Mm-hmm. So with the with the progression curve going like this, it's like this hockey stick shaped curve. Yeah. Yes, it could progress infinitely, but sooner or later there's a limit. Yeah. So, okay. So other things you can do, get your sleep right. I, we didn't mention supplements. Uh, and I always say behaviors first, but if you do have trouble sleeping and you're doing all the other things correctly, Mm -hmm, not drinking mm -hmm. caffeine, alcohol and cannabis do disrupt your sleep. If it's your thing, fine, that's you. All good, but is the caffeine thing? No, should I, you I'm, should you I know it does. Cut, yeah, should you cut the caffeine? Cut I mean, caffeine by yeah. three in the afternoon. Today I had a cup of coffee at four because we're here late. Right, right, right. right. But, but but caffeine's not caffeine's not bad for you. Okay, no, okay. as long as you get enough hydration, sure, get some, sure. get your salt, get okay. your sodium. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, then you're good. Okay. No, it's actually probably good for you in some ways. Got you. Yeah, Thank I mean, you. if you have hypertension and you're drinking nine espresso yeah, right, a day, right, right. Ooh, that's no, not no, good. No, but we're talking about averages. Yeah. So if you're having trouble sleeping, there is a form of magnesium called magnesium three and eight. Okay. T H R E O N A T E three and eight. eight. Yeah. Okay. Or another form called magnesium bisglycinate. B I S glycinate. Mm. Okay. 140 to 200 milligrams of that before sleep helps a lot. 30 minutes or 60 minutes before sleep helps a lot of people transition into sleep. Interesting. You kind of uh, like a, you're thinking too much. Oh. Okay. Um, it's very inexpensive. Shop for price. Don't you can get on Amazon or any oh. yeah, a bunch of brands. I don't want to promote brands because sure, sure, sure. we do have a, a a a brand that supports our podcast, but I don't want it to be about that. Yeah, I and you. I don't care if you take I these supplements you. or not. That's up to you. Yep. Talk to your doctor. Right. I always say I'm not a doctor. I'm a professor, so I prescribe things. <laughs> I profess things. Yeah. Uh, so, so. There's another thing called apigenin, A-P-I-G-E-N-I-N. Okay. It's a chamomile derivative, 50 milligrams of that. Swanson is the only brand that sells it. I have no relationship to Swanson. Uh-huh. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. And that taken with the magnesium 30 to 60 minutes before sleep and you are uh-huh. headed off to dreamland oh. most of the time. Okay. Blayback, who we talked about a lot, mm-hmm. took the magnesium. He did not like it. His stomach fell off. Uh-huh. About 5% of people get a stomach disruption from it. So it's not good for him. He takes apigenin and there's a, a third one it's called theanine we talked about it earlier for getting rid of the jitters mm-hmm. if you drink too much coffee ah, it's so t yeah t-h-e-a-n-i-n-e so i'm talking about three three and they're three okay. and and the, theanine yeah. magnesium threonate threonate yeah, threonate <laughs> theanine 100 to 300 milligrams um, we're talking about sleep right now. Yeah. yeah. And apigenin. And I will say that theanine, don't take it during the day. Take it before sleep, unless you're trying to get rid of the jitters. Okay. And theanine, don't take it if you 
sleepwalk, have night terrors, oh. or really intense dreams. Oh. Okay. Mm. But theanine, magnesium, three and eight, and apigenin, that little kit, you know, for, you know, pennies on the dollar, okay. basically, is inexpensive. Safe. Way, Safe for, for almost everybody. I mean, talk to your doctor. I don't right, want anyone, right. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you have a heart condition, magnesium might be an issue, oh, but yep, yep, you yep. would know most likely if you have a heart condition. Gotcha. So I don't want anyone to get scared, but I also don't want anyone to get crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So you're, I don't say that to protect me, although I do. I say it to protect <laughs> you, right? Absolutely. I don't want anyone getting harmed no. or harming themselves. And then, you know, so that can help the transition to sleep. Let okay. me ask you, yeah. uh, I take CBD pills yeah. every now and then, the, the sleep form. Yeah, do you like it? I, I find it helps to a degree, mm -hmm. and I don't wake up uh, cloudy or I don't wake up like, you know, with no energy. So, what do you think about that? Yes, I mean, CBD can help anxiety and help you relax. Not that you're anxious, but, you know, it can help people relax a little bit. I like Apigenin better for sleep. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll by here with a, a whole kit. Of, of these do. so don't yeah. you guys wow. don't have to buy these then you can just try them okay mix and match them and okay. um and you might just try that for a couple days okay. you know occasionally someone will say i didn't like theanine i didn't like magnesium but i would say 90 percent of the time i'm getting emails and dms and things that are saying oh my gosh i have not had real sleep in a <laughs> long time wow. and some people need to back off these dosages because they're waking up and they're like that was a bit much that, that was a little right. too much sleep oh. but what, all what was, of, well i'm sorry, sorry to interrupt really quickly what yeah. was the one you were talking about that if you have night terrors or extreme the, theanine theanine yeah. theanine okay and if you want what we could do maybe is uh we could put this in the caption yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah, this episode absolutely. or on, um, yeah, we just put in the caption. Cause I did hear you talk about this stuff on Joe Rogan, yeah. but I, you know, I'm in my car, I'm listening sure. to it. I can't sure. write it down yeah. and everything. Oh, so. Absolutely. Does and, it uh, intensify your dream of some sort? Is yeah. that? Oh, so uh, all of these things lead to a release of a, of a chemical in the brain called GABA. Mm -hmm. GABA is what we call an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It's what kind of um, a couple alcoholic drinks will do this too. The problem is drinking alcohol before sleep will also disrupt your sleep. These help you get into deep sleep. Okay. And unlike melatonin, unlike tryptophan, there are a bunch of things out there. 5-HTP, you hear about that? I don't recommend that stuff. Mm. CBD is all right for some people, but what we're seeing is that the amount of CBD that's listed on the bottle rarely matches what's actually in there. There's a lot of variation batch to batch. Uh, um, to be honest, I haven't used CBD much. I got nothing against it. Mm -hmm. But um, these other things are much bigger margins for, for safety for most people. But CBD is not going to harm you right. in reasonable doses. Right. Of course. So that's what I recommend before sleep. And look, if you're getting really good sleep on a regular basis, everything gets way better. Okay. So that's, you know, you may find that you are not ac currently accessing a lot of powers of your nervous system and of your mind yeah. also for your immune system getting good sleep is terrific for healing up your body so getting good at sleeping is a skill yeah the other thing that i can recommend is there's a free resource called reverie.com mm -hmm. you guys will probably like this this is a um r-e-v-e-r-i.com this is an app for android and apple phone iphone mm -hmm. that was developed by my colleagues at stanford it's actually self-hypnosis for getting better at sleeping, focus, learning, pain management. Wow. And the science on this is really, really strong. Okay. They've done clinical studies, lab studies. It's my colleague, David Spiegel. He's mm. our associate chair of psychiatry. Mm. And hypnosis is not like stage hypnosis, making people you know balk like chickens yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, hypnosis is interesting. It's a state of mind that brings together the two elements of plasticity, which are relaxed and focused, mm -hmm. followed by deep rest. Normally those are separate. And you get, you know, you trigger the plasticity with focused and, and relaxed, and then you go into deep sleep or your nap and your brain rewires, you mm -hmm. learn. Hypnosis brings those together at the same time. And so you can accelerate learning even further. You can also get better at sleeping. There's a, uh, a tab there you just hit and it's completely cost-free. So that's reverie.com is really okay. terrific for that. You can do that any time of day or night, but if you wake up in the middle of the night and are having trouble getting back to sleep, Oh. Something that's pretty common. Okay. Uh, first of all, if you drink a lot of fluids before sleep, chances are you're going to wake up to use the bathroom right. in the middle of the yeah. night. There's literally a neural circuit that goes from your bladder to your brainstem that wakes you up. Oh. If it doesn't, you 
you pee, pee your bed. Right. That's yeah. what little kids do. That circuit isn't developed yet. Oh, okay. And when people drink too much as adults, right? Someone pisses it their bed. That's happen, what happened. Yeah, yeah it yeah. happens on tours. It happens. Yeah. It's right. happened on tour. Yeah, it happens on tour. Wait, but what happens on tour? Stays on tour. Not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tour. Not me someone right. else. That's right. Uh, when it comes to hypnosis, man, it's a whole different conversation, I guess. But like, I would trip out. I remember going to high school the the last day when they had this hip, the guy a hypnotist come, and these kids were going. I wasn't school with all year they were doing the craziest shit after hypnosis and yeah. i was like are they just acting or is this some serious they kelly show? cluck like a chicken yeah, yeah they are in an early stage of sleep where you're very suggestible there's actually mm -hmm. some people are are more uh susceptible to hypnosis than others there's actually a test that we can do right now on this uh -oh. so and but i'll explain <laughs> i'll explain how it works and but i can tell you i i couldn't predict just by interacting with you so when you look up it generates more alertness okay. okay this actually makes sense right when people nod out they're like this yeah, typically yeah. right occasionally yeah. you'll fall back but usually it's it's like this when you look down actually brains areas of your brain stem that trigger kind of quieting down or relaxation happen mm -hmm. so actually looking up for a short while um especially if there's bright light above will actually wake up your nervous system mm -hmm. to some extent okay okay Looking down does the opposite. So we can do this test. Actually, uh, let's use Jerron because he's super chill. All right, just maybe tilt your hat back a little bit. Not, not a lot. We're not going to say mm -hmm. take it. Okay, so um, can you look up at the ceiling? Cool. All right, so now while keeping your eyes up, slowly close your eyelids. Okay, you're probably not super hypnotizable. Once I more. Close, I didn't close. Yeah, can you do it as slowly as you can? Okay. No, not super I hypnotizable. I can't, I can't yeah. close them slow. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Why? Yeah. Exactly. Why is? All right. Oh, well, let's. How about you? Really, no, no. Now you. Oh. Now you. All right. Slowly. Look up. Oh yeah. All right. Oh wait, 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 wait. One more time. Oh yeah. Okay. Muck, 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 muck. Oh sorry. No, I didn't. <laughs> Did you see how his, the whites of his eyes roll up? Watch. Do it again. You, it's subconscious. Watch. Watch how his eyes roll back. Just no. Look up. Can you tip your hat back a little bit? Thank you. Look up at the ceiling. Tilt your head back. Look up at the ceiling. Now slowly close your eyes. There oh, you go. Yeah. See how his yeah. eyes roll back a little yes. bit? What about you? Mark, 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 mark. It's hard Sorry. to do. Uh, I can't see it from here. Can you lower your chin just a little bit? Uh, so you, there see. we go. All right. Okay. You're sort of in the middle. So very <laughs> hypnotizable, not very Ooh. probably intermediate. Okay. What happens is for some reason, this is called the Spiegel eye roll test. You can look it up online. Oh. Spiegel's dad was a hypnotist and psychiatrist. These are not crazy people. These are real board certified physicians who are understand this relationship between vision and the nervous system. Look up, you're more alert. Look mm -hmm. down and close the eyes. What happens when we get drowsy, we close the eyes. Yeah. So you create these competing signals. And for some reason, when we do this, some people's eyes start to roll back into their head a little bit. Yours did. So my eyes- We saw the whites of your eyes go like this, and then right? Drawn's just like a steel trap, boom. Right, right. And, it's, well, and my eyeball stayed the same. Like yeah. your, your eyeball oh, okay. went yeah. back. Because it took me, uh, it, it actually took concentration to close my right. eyelids That's slowly. Right. It's yeah. sending yeah. two signals. It's like uh, trying to move your wrist toward your, your shoulder and away from it at gotcha. the same time. It's like bicep, tricep are antagonistic muscles. They, as one contracts, the other one relaxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. I mean, I can do it so you guys can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's more interesting to, to see if you guys are hypnotizable. Yeah. So I'm looking up and then- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, very yeah. Wow, okay. I'm like a four. I saw that. I'm like, I'm very, what, what am I? You're probably like a three. Okay, good. You're a one and you're probably like a- Two, although we were at a distance. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And he's sitting back there. He's completely out. He's like, <laughs> Sorry. He's, he's levitating right it. now. Yeah. <laughs> Raj is back there clucking away. <laughs> yeah. No. So, so reverie is great because once you're in that hypnotic okay. state, which is that relaxed, you're very relaxed, but you're also alert. Mm. You are able to rewire your brain. And what's cool about reverie is that it's a self hypnosis. And what I like about it too is, you know, it doesn't involve any supplements or anything like that. It's completely cost free. Mm. And um, yeah, you can play around with that. And, uh, mm. you know, they've used it for pain management. They've used it for people getting better at sleeping, for focus. Okay. There's so not only sleep. A lot of there's a menu there you can do it. Oh. Yep. Um, okay. I'm just yep. going to go out on a whim and say people that, get, that can take naps can get hypnotized. Because <laughs> I can't take naps. Like naps easily. You think? I, can't, I can't nap. Like, really? I, I can't. Like, Midday? Just, you sleep okay. I sleep okay at night, but yeah. I'm saying like as far as like trying to like calm myself down to like take even if I'm tired to like mentally calm myself down to like take a nap. I can't mm -hmm. do that. I just I feel that I need to 
be doing something. You know right. what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't Even watching it. TV, you don't, or like if you're, if I'm on my phone sometimes at night and I'm just scrolling and scrolling, like I start and I'm reading something. No, that's, that's, that's when I'm happening. reading, I start to like fade out You'll quick. You'll fade out. Quick. Yeah. Sure. Quick. Yeah. 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 yeah that's well, not necessarily a nap though. I'm more thinking about because that's Night. when you're tired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, when you're tired, that adenosine built up in your system. And when you move your eyes from side to side, mm. that actually shuts down a brain center called the amygdala, which is a fear and threat detection center. Oh. So let's uh, use an example. It's all line of tools. Like, so panic or trying to make a trick, you're afraid, mm -hmm. right? There's often fear. I sure. mean, you know, it's like, makes sense. You get, you get scary. Yeah, you get, yeah. Dam you get yeah. damaged. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that existed for a long time and then I thought was total quackery is this thing called EMDR, eye movement desensitization reprocessing, where some therapist named Francine Shapiro came up with this idea that if the patient would sit down in a chair and recount some trauma or some fear and move their eyes from side to side like this, that somehow they could move through it. And people would ask me about this stuff. They're like, you study vision, you study stress. And huh. I was like, this stuff is crazy. It's quackery. Somebody made this up. They'd say, oh, it coordinates the activity on the two sides of the brain. It mimics REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. I thought, this is nuts. It's nothing worse than this idea. And then I ate my words because I was, in science, we review papers. We're sent papers. You have to review them and critique them anonymously. Mm -hmm. And I got a bunch of papers to review that were focused on eye movements, not on trauma or fear or anything like that. And what they saw in these papers is they observed that when we move our eyes from side to side, a brain area called the amygdala, which is involved in fear and threat detection, okay. it's kind of universal neural real estate for fear, be alert, you know, all the, all the panicky stuff. That area was suppressed. And it turns out it makes sense because when you move forward through space, whether or not you're skateboarding, if it's self-generated motion, you're walking, you're running, you're cycling, you're skateboarding, as you move through space, the visual images are going by you like this, but you don't experience them as a blur. Just like if you took a picture on your phone and you moved mm -hmm. your phone, it'd be blurry, but you have what are called image stabilizing eye reflexes, or, and there's a well-known system for this mm -hmm. that involves the inner ear and the vestibular system, all that. Anyway, when you move your eyes from side to side, it mimics forward movement. And it seems that forward movement or just moving your eyes from side to side quiets the fear response. And this pr probably, and I don't know because I wasn't consulted at the design phase, but it probably is involved in our evolution of being able to move forward in the face of danger, right? And so this is now a an approved clinical tool. They sit people down, they have their move their eyes from side to side and they recount some, they Tra verbally recount some traumatic episode. Oh. It doesn't work for everybody or okay. every trauma. Okay. There's some nuance there. So I don't want to oversell it. Sure. But as a simple tool for reducing fear, fear of flying, fear of the handrail, fear, you know, yeah. be smart about your choices. But if you want to reduce your level of fear, you can do this for 10 to 30 seconds, just back where your eyes do have to be open and it looks ridiculous. But, <laughs> you know, moving your eyes from side to side, and it's actually a little bit, takes a little bit more effort yeah, than you might it does. think, it but does. it does tend to quiet mm. your system. The other thing that can calm you down really fast is something that was actually discovered in the 30s. My lab has now picked up with this and we're doing a whole, we've done a whole set of studies looking at how breathing can adjust our state of mind. When we get anxious, we our breathing changes. When we get calm, our breathe, breathing changes. But mm. also if we change our breathing, we can get more anxious or more calm. Mm. There are two really useful tools in this regard. The first is what's called the physiological sigh. So if you're feeling stressed out, do two inhales through your nose, even though the second one is a, is a shorter one. So it's... And then a long exhale through your mouth. Your lungs are two big bags of air, but they actually have little millions of little sacks of air oh. called avioli of the lungs. Those, when you get stressed, a lot of the reason you get stressed is because those flatten out like little balloons and you can't offload carbon dioxide and high levels of carbon dioxide in your bloodstream are actually a big part of the stress response. It's not the only part, but it's a big part. When you do that double inhale, those little sacks reopen, pow, like kind of blowing open a balloon. <sighs> They don't explode, but they reopen. And then the long exhale, you're able to offload yeah. the carbon dioxide. Oh, wow. So the fastest way to calm down really fast is that panoramic vision. And then just, and then 
you'll notice you just calm way down really yeah, fast. And yeah, you yeah. actually do this right before you fall asleep. You don't oh. realize it. A dog does this before it takes a actually, nap. I do take a big deep breath sometimes. <sighs> mm -hmm. And but so not, maybe, not, twi not the twice thing, but just one right. deep, bit, one deep, deep breath. breath to open yeah. the lungs up. Right. You know? And in sleep, we sponta all people spontaneously do these physiological sighs. Mm -hmm. When we start running out of oxygen, we do two inhales followed by a long exhale. You see this even when people aren't conscious. Some people have sleep apnea because they're carrying a lot of extra weight. None of the people in this room have this phenotype, but they're, you know, when people are obese in sleep, they've got to build up a carbon dioxide in their system and they're actually oxygen deprived. Their brain is becoming hypoxic. You're starving the brain of oxygen. Oh, wow. This is a huge part of, you know, some of the health issues related to obesity and, right. and breathing issues. You the CPAP machine and the all that CPAP stuff. The yeah, CPAP yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. so physiological size you can do anytime you want. But when you're stressed, if somebody says, take a deep breath, actually it's two deep inhales through the nose followed by a long exhale. Long One exhale. or two of those, and you're, you will be reset Amazing. very, very fast. Okay. And then the last one I would say, or, you know, cause I could go on forever with this. Um, and I handed this off to a couple skateboarders um, uh, that reached out about this is you can also raise your stress threshold. You can, let's say you're the kid or the person who is not super aggro. You're not a cardio, right? <laughs> yeah. You're just, you're kind of timid, right? It's chances are you're either smart about not wanting to damage yourself, right? Uh -huh. Or it could be that you have a heightened level of anxiety. So how do you reduce your just baseline? Hey, become like Jerron. Mm -hmm. This is really what this whole podcast is about. <laughs> <laughs> you know? How do you become more yeah. chill? Yeah. Which is what you wanna do is deliberately put yourself into a state of heightened alertness. You want to deliberately increase your adrenaline. There are a couple ways to do that. Mm. You can take a really cold shower. You can get into an ice bath. When you do that, there is no way around it. Your system will be filled with adrenaline. Like, oh yeah. And then you learn how to control your breathing and relax. Uh -huh. Or if you don't have access to a cold shower or an ice bath, you can do what's called tumo breathing, which is actually hyperventilation. Mm. And I'll do this since it looks ridiculous. I'll, you know, I'll be the, the canary in the, <laughs> the mind. This is actually a lot like Wim Hof breathing. Okay. So okay. it's very different than the physiological side. And the idea is to actually get yourself stressed and then to be calm in a state where your body is filled with adrenaline. Interesting. It's it's a self-directed stress inoculation. And so I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but sure. it would be 25 or 30 of these type of breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth like this. You'll notice your body starts to heat up. Oh. That's adrenaline release. You're literally heating up, uh -huh. okay? And then after 25 or 30 of those, you are gonna feel uncomfortable. You're gonna feel agitated. That's adrenaline trying to get you to move. You wanna stay still, be like you're on, and then just <laughs> exhale all your air, sit for about 15 to 30 seconds. You can time it if you want and try and just be relaxed with all that adrenaline in your system. Then repeat 25 or 30 breaths, exhale, oh. relax for 15, 30 seconds. Then do it one more time, 25, 30 breaths, Exhale for 15 to 30 seconds. And then comes the fun part. You take a big gulp of air <gasps> and then hold, but oh. relax. <laughs> and what you'll notice is you can hold your breath a lot longer than you normally would. Why? Because the impulse to breathe actually comes from carbon dioxide and you've blown off a lot of carbon dioxide. Now, mm -hmm. absolutely critical. Do not do this in water or a bathtub. Right. At least four people have died doing this. Oh, wow. Because they okay. did it in a pool. And then they were like, I'm gonna dive underwater for as long as I can. Oh, Morons. Hold their breath. Yeah, well now they're definitely holding their wow. breath because they're dead. So Jeez. they're gone. So don't do that. Don't right, do it while right. you're driving, be smart. Okay. But then what happens is you take that big, deep, uh, big, deep breath uh -huh. and don't push to the point of blacking out. When you feel the impulse to breathe, breathe. But what you'll notice is you're very alert, but very calm. And that's the perfect state for neuroplasticity, for learning. It's as if you took three shots of espresso, <laughs> just the right amount of theanine, perfect <laughs> night's sleep. You just landed the Nolly heel flip. Yeah. And you know, and you had the best night ever on the nine club. Right, you're right, right there. Right, right. And you did it all with respiration. And I recommend doing that one or two or three times a week. Mm. And what you'll find is you will start to discover all sorts of interesting aspects of how you work. You'll notice, you know, I don't wanna do it. You'll notice there's like this barrier that you're kind of resistant to adrenaline. Mm. You're definitely not Cardiel, okay? Right. right. He loves adrenaline. He lives in that zone, right? He, he went Cardiel at his skateboarding best and now on the bikes and everything he's doing sure. is like, 
that groove is a place he craves. A lot of people, they're not comfortable entering it. But yeah. then once they're there, they're like, this is pretty nice because adrenaline is amazing. Adrenaline not only makes you more alert, but it also is what activates your immune system. Hmm. We always think, oh, stress crashes your immune system. But no, no, no. If you are stressed, 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 you don't get sick. But afterward, when you finally relax, then you get sick. Um. So the reason is when you breathe like this, adrenaline actually tells your spleen the, to release these killer cells mm. that go and combat different types of infections. You heal faster. And this is stuff is not hocus pocus. No reference to the street. <laughs> that, was that was terrible. Long time ago. Yeah. That was pretty good. I mean, Hensley. Okay, yeah, Hensley yeah. made that movie. Uh, and it was too long. It was just too long. That Hocus Pocus was just too long. Sorry. Also, that team had like 900 know, people on it, wow. right? 8, yeah. H stood for yeah. huge yeah. street. Yeah. It was like, huge you know, street. You know? Yeah, no doubt. But, so, but if you do this, right? It, what there are papers that are published, one published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences showing, looking at all these immune markers and anti-inflammation and stuff. So activating your immune system is good. You can do it with mm. cold water, you can do it with these breathing. Mm -hmm. So I've just been trying to throw out a kit of tools. Yeah. So get good at sleeping, Okay. have a real time tool, as I call it, for bringing your stress level down, the double inhale, exhale, mm -hmm. the panoramic vision, increase your stress threshold, right? Danny doesn't need to do it, Right. right okay? Right, right. Guys like Clay don't need to do it, right? But if you're, facing a milestone and you're having a hard time getting past that, get yourself more resilient. Get comfortable having a lot of adrenaline in your system and being calm. It'll also prevent you from getting triggered. What mm -hmm. you'll notice is people will say things and you'll still get the release of adrenaline, but you're like, oh, I can make choices here. Right. And this is what mindfulness and meditation has worked so hard to try and create for people, but it's been very mystical. It's like 20 minutes a day, sitting meditation, yeah, third eye meditation, yeah. the gap between stimulus and response very mysterious, very hard to access. Sure. These are physiological mechanisms to access this. Oh. And then, you know, yeah, sleep, sleep, learn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are some other tools out there. You asked about nutrition, like everybody's different. Yeah. I don't know how big the plant-based thing is in skateboarding right now. Mm. I'm an omnivore. I like meat. I like right. butter. You know, I would say if you're overweight, try intermittent fasting, limit your feeding window mm -hmm. to like Mike. Yeah, all right, yep, yep. he needed to lose weight. So rather than tell him, eat this, don't eat this. I was like, look, start eating at two. Can you do that? He was like, yeah, no problem. Yeah. I'm like, cut that off at 10. He's like, cool. I'm like, eat whatever you want in that time. But ideally it's mostly meats, vegetables, and not too much sugar. Mm -hmm. Drop the alcohol. Yeah. I mean, he's 60 pounds it's down now for two years. So great. Mm -hmm. And I will say, and I hope he doesn't mind this, that during the pandemic, we were actually getting on the phone for a bit and doing that type of tumor breathing oh, wow. at the beginning, not because he was stressed, but because it just is the kind of thing where people tend to not do it. Yep, they yep, drop it. Right. It's just not because it's more of a leaning in thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, a reflexive thing to do. And so we were doing it for a bit just because to for accountability. Right. Hope he doesn't mind me uh, sharing that. And Jacob Rosenberg too. Okay. And then we kind of split off and just kind of stopped doing it. And so sure. there are periods of time in my life where I'll do more of it or less of it. Okay. But keeping your immune system tuned up, yeah, keeping your stress yeah. threshold better. This is what I think is the key to being healthier longer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's about having enough energy, but also being able to sleep. Right. It's about stress is not going anywhere, mm -hmm. right? St life was not more stressful five years ago, 10 years. Life is not more stressful now. It, everyone says, oh, it's only, stress is only to protect us from these saber tooth tigers. Look, 100 years ago, people still cheated. They went to the next town, they never came back. They dumped people, people got broke off. Right. You know, I mean, it was just, it, it happened. So stress is this universal way of, making us feel like we want to move. Mm -hmm. And this is a way of being very deliberate in how you make choices when you are stressed. Right. And that can save your life. It can also make you better person, better skateboarder, makes you less reactive, you know, all this stuff. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Why do, I why do I twitch when I'm going to sleep? Oh, because you're going into that Atonia state. I said that REM sleep in Atonia is the second half of the night, mm -hmm. but really what it is is that you sleep in these 90 minute cycles and early in the night, a small fraction of those 90 minute cycles is REM sleep. Yeah. And then as the night goes on, more of those 90 minute cycles are occupied by REM sleep, right? Everything is in 90 minute, what we call ultradian cycles. Oh. In fact, you're gonna learn best by focusing on something for 90 minutes. It'll be hard at first, then you're really in the groove and then you kind of exit that 90 minute cycle. Okay, okay. And so that's true for mental learning. It's also true for physical learning. God, a lot yeah. of the time I'm falling asleep and I twitch. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're, in, sta- you're in sta- stage one sleep. And yeah, I, I did that in school. Oh, sure. yeah, in school. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my best yeah. sleep was always in the classroom. Yeah. 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 People sleep in my classes all oh, the really? time. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Around. A lot of it's also the, the in the room, the oxygen's, oh, you know, there's oh, carbon dioxide's going up. Sure. You know, it's warm, post-lunch dip. It's cozy. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what a, a, yeah. What about if I see someone yawn, why do I have the urge to, why do I yawn? Nobody knows. Is that? <laughs> but the yawn is actually a little bit like the physiological sigh. It's an attempt to blow off carbon dioxide. Mm. So in a low oxygen environment or, you know. Yeah. You're filling up those oh. yeah, sacks. So are they breathing? They're kind of, they're probably breathing the same stuff yeah. you are. Yeah. So that's, so, probably, so that's probably why, but there does seem to be some mimicry there. A lot of animals yawn too. Yeah. You know, my yeah. cat just oh, wake yeah. up from a nap. She, yeah. yawns. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at little Larry's yeah. yawning. Dogs right? have an anxious yawn. If they're stressed, they'll sometimes go. Oh yeah. I've and then they that. also have a real yawn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, huh. There are a lot of behaviors like uh Here's a, there's an interesting paper published recently that looked at mounting behavior. Do you, you, know, you have dogs? Mount, oh, no, no, dogs. Mounting, behavior. mounting behaviors, humping. Sure. And sure. Um, there's a separate circuit in the brain for dominance humping versus mating humping. Because female dogs will, will hump other dogs. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. They're, Clearly, they're not trying oh, to reproduce. Okay. They're, they're, not, they're not stupid. Oh, it's a dominance thing. Interesting. Right? And you see this sometimes. Like, actually, I saw one uh, UFC fight uh, and... At the end of the round, the guy like humped the other guy. He was trying to tell him, like, you know, I, I you. dominated you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, the whole thing Hump of mounting and something? submission and all that. What's that? Hump his leg? No, nah, he humped. Oh, oh. I mean, you know. Yeah. Oh. I mean, they kept he the, that role. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he went extra. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, went, he extra. went extra. So, uh, you know, the, the point is that the same behaviors can have different underlying motivations, mm. right? A lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I guess I just make that point that. Why did I make them? I think I just want to tell the humping story. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the guy is d- displaying his dominance. He humped him. <laughs> uh, so you asked about brain function sure. and, and health. And I, I think we covered a, a good number of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think that there what are- about ginkgo biloba? Okay, so there's, okay, so then there's all the cognitive, nootropic, yeah. cognitive enhancement. Okay. Sure. I mean, I'm not a big fan of people taking things like Adderall, Ritalin, mm-hmm. Modafinil, mm-hmm. Or, or Modafinil unless they have a clinical need. Those are drugs that were developed for ADHD and that were developed for narcolepsy. Um, And they will, you know, I think 25% of college students nowadays take Ritalin or Adderall at some point. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, yeah, it's speed. It's pure, it is chemically, it is speed, right? And it, (laughs) it's uh, habit forming, it causes release of dopamine, epinephrine and all that, but it is habit forming. If someone has a clinical need, fine. If you don't, it's a, it's truly bad news. Um, there are some things that can give you a heightened state of alertness and focus for learning. Things mm. like um, alpha GPC taken at you know three hundred or six hundred milligrams. Mm. It's a choline donor. So chol- you have a molecule in your brain called acetylcholine that's involved in focus and learning. Mm. So occasional use probably fine. You know, it's it's uh, actually as you get older. Alpha GPC has been shown to offset some cognitive decline. So that's good. Okay. Uh, but none of you, I mean, you don't have any, I mean. What was your name again? <laughs> yeah. uh, concussions. You probably don't have any concussions. No, I never really hit my no head. No big head bangers. No, 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 no. 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 But for the guys who hit their heads a bunch, right. they are definitely, you know, Prone headed it. for it. I mean, not as bad as say like a hockey player or something, but. Football player. Yeah. Football. yeah. I don't know that many skate, you don't hear about that many skateboarders with CTE. It doesn't seem to be a thing. God, because you can knee bail. Like the vert guys are actually at at the biggest risk, but you can knee bail, so you're not really banging your head. Ah, And the way that people are jumping down rails, I mean, people get smoked. Yeah, yeah, but they hit their heads. Yeah, Yeah, I've seen people hit their heads. It happens. It happens. Yeah, homie, back in the day, he just went cold. Just I thought he died. Yeah, it was really. Well, the number one thing about a head injury is don't get a second head injury anytime soon Uh, or at all. There's a so-called two hit model where. This is also true for hearing loss. If you go to a loud concert and then play your earbuds or whatever, mm. at maximum, you're more likely to lose your hearing. Mm. Oh, interesting. Oh. About. Yeah, there's this two hit model. The, the two things combined yeah. wow. uh, to give a kind of exponential effect, um, a not good effect. Uh, head hits are the same. Mm. And then, you know, if you do get a head hit, that's a good night to not drink, mm. right? You know, and not just because you can die, that too, but 
drinking, less oxygen, hypoxia in the brain, neurons need oxygen, not not good. Right. But oh. but you know, here again, now I'm sounding like the you know the parent telling skateboarders to guard their no, their but it's important. It's you know, important I mean, things. Yeah, I mean, to, except for that one guy, I don't know yeah. who he is. Like people don't wear a helmet on the street, right? right? So I mean, and it's unlikely to happen anytime soon. Um, yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I think that. Because even in the Olympics, they let them know no helmets. No helmets. Right? Yeah. At least that that was I, accurate. I, if you're under a certain age, if you're under wear, eighteen, yeah. if if you're skating the park, you have to wear a helmet. Like right. the park, the that the, makes sense. There yes. was never any shame in wearing helmets on. No, dirt. they 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 didn't. Uh, I don't think the skaters wanted that. They were like, we don't want to wear helmets in um, and on I, vert. Uh, no, in, in, the, the, park, in the park. In the park. Yeah, oh, in, in the, the park. In the Which transition. So the yeah. big transition yeah, park. Yeah, and I'm like, dude. They're doing, but they're like used to. They're like they know what they're doing, kind of like how street skaters do, but. They're a higher risk, I feel like. Bro. I don't know. I mean, it feels great to skateboard without a helmet. Yeah. Just like I'm sure it feels great to ride a motorcycle without mm -hmm. a helmet. I've never done it. But, um, I mean, I growing up, I didn't know any kids that mm -hmm. wore a helmet. Unless you went yeah. to, the, like, a skate park or no, something. Like skate power. Or, like, yeah, very yeah, yeah, it was required or something. Yeah. But, yeah, where it was required. Yeah, and yeah. obviously, I'm a neuroscientist, I'm not going to tell people. You know, people should avoid head damage as much as Total. they can. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... Everybody I know that skated big, big vert seems sharp, and all those guys that are doing yeah, the they, mega ramp thing, they all definitely. they all buckle all, up. Yeah. Except except Clay and some of those other guys occasionally. And look, they're gnarly, right. and they they were probably born gnarly, you know. Yeah. Um. So who knows? I mean, yeah. gotta yeah. it's a it's a free world, but you gotta you gotta pay the price. You gotta protect yeah. the dome. Pay attention, bro. You gotta protect yeah. the dome. You gotta protect the dome. Yeah. Yeah, Listen, you do. we wanted to. <sighs> man, I feel. I can you come back at one point in time and, sure. and hang out with us? You bet. We'll yeah. stop and I, chat and I would kick be, it. I would be honored to. Because I, like, be I feel like interviews like this, and it wasn't really an interview. It was like, it's a conversation. You were schooling us on a lot of things, but man, a lot of this is like it's got to soak in. Yeah, you know, man. it's like I'm gonna it's go a lot. back. I'm gonna go back and listen to. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't go back and listen to too many episodes that we do. But this is gonna be an episode where I go back. I'm listening to it in my car. I, I think so too. A hundred percent. What I really love about it is the fact. That I mean, you're a skateboarder and we can relate to what you're telling us. Even though you're telling us a whole different thing that if someone that didn't skate came in here and told us this stuff, we would be like, what the hell? But you have a way of explaining it to us. Yeah, yeah we could all definitely relatable. We can, relatable. Thank we you. Can understand it. Right. That really, makes me happy. Yeah, yeah. I felt very welcome from the moment, you know, walked in yeah. and before. So that's great. Yeah. I mean, skateboarding is, I mean, it's a language, but it's also just an understanding. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's forever in my nervous system in the best way. Yeah. Right? When I see it, when I do it, and yeah, I'll get out and ride now and again. You know, we can, we that, can tell. I mean, you you know, can, it's just it's, it's just your life. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I I've shown up to everything else, academia, everything, with that skateboarder's mindset. Look, right. I walk past the front five every day, or I see a nice curb. I'm like, look at that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I see banks at yeah. banks at an airport. You know, I've, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to travel and give lectures all over the world. And you're, you're like, you know, you're in Hamburg. You're like, oh, look at that bank to rail. Like, right, that looks pretty right. sweet. You know, it's so funny. So, you you. You said your uh, place is right in front of the hubba. Yeah. The famous. I can see out to the hubba. So yeah. Wow. You know which one I'm talking about? Tall, sort of like gray, green block. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Sean Malto back, back those one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And I think that it's got uh, stops on it, but you know, uh, that, that okay. never made a difference. Yeah. You probably watched us. I mean, I didn't Not skate it, but I was yeah. there, you know. But, yeah. Uh, How long have you been at Stanford? So... I've had my lab there 11 years, but oh, wow. I was a yeah. postdoc there from 2005 to 2010. Oh, so you've been there. And then my lab was briefly in San Diego mm. and then moved. I got recruited back to Stanford. So now yeah, I've been there a while. I'm 46 years old. I've gotten to this thing young, you know, once I got out of skateboarding, you know, at the first, the first time, mm -hmm. then I, I had to lock into something and it, you know, science just seemed like the place for me. Oh, uh, listen, know? you, you love it. You could tell by the passion you talk about this mm -hmm. stuff. And also like, I love that you are now going in, you know, you have your own podcast, uh, the Hub Huberman lab, Huberman lab, podcast. Huberman lab, and you do a lot of Instagram stuff and you go live on your Instagram and talk about, ask questions, uh, take questions for people. It's like, you're really, uh, I love that you're sharing yeah. the information, yeah. you know, and you're doing Engaging. it, yeah, and, and you're really doing it in like a great way. Where like us, you know, stupid people. No, you guys, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what I mean. No, there. Are, I will say this on record that thank you, by the way. I yes. do love sharing information. Like it's I said, at the beginning, I'm science Tourette's. So I just learned something. I think it's cool. I got to tell everybody yeah. about it, but uh, and hopefully in ways that benefit them and they can do what they want with the information. Absolutely. But people are smart. You know, if you give yes. people, you assume zero background, but infinite intelligence, I really do. 
Some people learn differently than others, but there are so many different forms of intelligence. And, um, you know, neuroscience is just one lens through mm -hmm. which to look at any of this. You, we could have talked about all the same things, right? Everything from learning to stress to, through, a, through a different lens, lens of psychology, spirituality, whatever. Go. I just happen to, you know, look at things through this lens of, of biology. Yeah, and yeah, the one yeah. thing I can say is everyone has all these systems. There's no like, oh, you have to build this circuit in your brain to go get it. We all have it. So it's just a matter of, you know, plugging it in. And um, once you start tinkering with it a little bit, you're like, oh, that's nah, pretty good. Yeah. So it's like having a good Nolly heel flip. <laughs> and I, there <laughs> you trick. go. That's there the you trick. go. I think the problem with information these days is like, it's, you know, Google is a hell of a, you know, it's, you, you type something in and there's like, you know, 8,000 web pages. Right. There's this, there's that. Right. And if you could really tune into like, you know, a few people like yourself, Lex, like there's different people in there that you're like, okay, cool. Like these are the people who, are giving me this information, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like scientists, you know, this is like trustworthy. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, knowing you know? who to get your information from is tricky. It is. You know, it's like if somebody's showing up and they want to learn how to skateboard, I mean, should they look at an Instagram? Maybe somebody should teach kids how to skateboard on Instagram. That, I mean, there's YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah, YouTube. There's, there's, there's YouTubers YouTube. that, yeah. uh, that are doing that, okay. you know, um, and it's great. You know, it's like they're the entry point for the skateboarders, you know, and they have their own brands and all that stuff. Oh, wow. It, okay. It's, 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 so it's, it's, a it's a, it goes deep. Yeah. It's a big thing. Yeah, it goes okay. deep. As long but, as people actually get out there and do it, because I yeah. always say you can watch skateboarding endlessly, mm -hmm. but you actually mm -hmm. just have to get out there and let your yeah. nervous your nervous yeah. system can't learn just by observation. Right, you actually have to feel it. You, you got to slam a few yeah. times. Oh, so get out the there and do it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But but thank you for uh, doing what you do, and yes. uh, it was so amazing. I like to be honest with you, I never really heard of you or was aware of you. I no, should say. There's no say. reason to be. Like I said before in the beginning, the Jankum, I was not one of the big guys. Jankum bro, before Jankum. the Jankum thing. And right when I, I was like, oh my God, I got to get the, dude, this is it's amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Carl Watson. Bro. The, yeah. The, the, uh, thank you, Jankum. We got a well. Carl like, on the show. I can't, I still can't believe He Carl's, hasn't been on here? No. How has Carl, Carl Watson not been on the, and it, Carl he lives up north, so is ex know, still, still exactly the same as he was. I mean, he's larger, he's older, he's got all these children, but he is the same personality, same so positivity. Yeah, best dude. I love Seriously. it. Seriously, yeah, I love yeah it, and the Hubba trick, right? I mean, let's. I mean, yeah, bro, front 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 set pretzel, yeah, yeah. Yeah. pretzel. Yeah, yeah. Carl Legendary. Watson, yeah. man. Yeah, every time I see that trick, it's Carl. Carl Watson. Are you any, anybody else doing? Ask Carl. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Carl, Carl Watson. You yeah. know, but uh, listen, I we're gonna wrap it up. Can we give you some Nine Club stuff to take home? Maybe a little mug or something. Yeah, put your that. put your morning coffee yeah. in, but don't drink the coffee about <laughs> ninety minutes after you wake up. Uh, we do the hours, hours, bro. A couple yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. The coffee thing, see, but it's these little tidbits. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and, and you don't have to do things. it every day. People hear something, they're like, I gotta do it every day. Right, no, like, right, try right. it if you don't, I mean, try it. If you don't like it, don't do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. see how you feel. Yeah. And it's tough. It's tough to, I don't know. You always hear this thing, like, it, it takes a X amount of time to create a new regiment or something yeah how true? many rep yeah i mean it depends on the intensity of the experience right yeah. uh, so only one time if it's a super intense experience you okay. know, you're never going to forget your son's birth right right you right, need right, right 26 repetitions of that no, thank goodness no. i mean you it's know you, like you should have a big family life. but you don't want 26 so <laughs> but it's a lot yeah so there's that but then you know i think for laying down new neural pathways you know mm -hmm. 20 20 days or so okay you know, so there is yeah. a but you can learn amount. things quick and right. also like we said before yeah, to once, change a pattern in sure. your life to change a pattern thank yeah. you kelly you yeah. know if you're determined enough you know blayback flipped the switch i love like that i love that, I love like that. that. he's proof mike blayback is proof that you can rewire your nervous system mm -hmm. from one discussion a decision and just yeses about the right things and knows about the wrong things and just he blaybacked it <laughs> he playbacked it. Oh man! But that, that's true, though. It's, it's something you got. I think you have to be mentally prepared. Like I said before, you know, whether it's smoking or drinking, you have to be at that point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You need a strong stimulus, as we say. There you you go. know, mm -hmm. and that could be threat of losing something. And people have tortured themselves endlessly. Is it? Are we more? Do we work harder to maintain what we have, or work for something new? Mm. I, I don't know. At some point, you make the decision. It's also, you know, friction's good. Feeling uncomfortable for a little bit for the promise of a payoff later right. is great. And look, you can always go back to it. Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? True, so. true. It's true. Wow. 
I got, I'm thinking of more questions. Well, okay, listen. We gotta, <laughs> listen Part hey, one. <laughs> dude. Thank you very this much. Is Mr. Very enlightening, Do I, is so it Dr. Dr. Huberman you. or nah, Mr. Huberman? You can just call me Andrew. Okay. Yeah, yeah, With skateboarders, so. it's just okay. Andrew. Okay. Yeah. And I'll uh, say for uh, one thing, um, please. for the skateboarders, only for the skateboarders, please, please. Um, I will make a list. I'll, I'll put a, a one-pager PDF type thing that maybe people could download oh, or we can just post it someplace. It yeah. can live someplace in this incredible oh, yeah. studio yeah, yeah. if people only knew how many cameras were in this place I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 this is like this is probably what it looks like at the fbi central it's yeah. crazy <laughs> um but that way all the stuff the things the dosages the the protocols i'll it might take me a week or two but i'll create that so even if it comes up a little bit after the episode oh, yeah, just yeah, look yeah. for it oh we'll, that'd be amazing we'll do the skateboarder special oh too. yeah i love yeah, it bro love i love it um here we go this is a uh, listen we made her water bottles. We got to get the other ones in here. We got to pick them up the from Mike Mose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but this is a nine club water bottle love there. It. You know, is, keep hydrated. The gear here is amazing. Yeah, Skateboarders dude. know how to do good well, gear. Well, we try. Good gear and we great try. production. Damn. Yeah. 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 There go. No weak sauce. Our friend um, Scott Kane that owns that company, he made... He made that water bottle. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Like, Scott Kane, old skateboarder, bootleg skateboards. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we do have candles here at the Nine Club. This is the Lacrobe, <laughs> exactly what you're drinking, the Pamplemousse flavor. Mm, yes, which is guy. grapefruit. grapefruit. He's like, he's so confused. Yeah, grapefruit scent. <laughs> so it smells smell like, like that. Does it smell like the Pamplemousse? Oh, it does smell good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is good. Yeah, Pamplemousse. My house is about to get a step up. There we go. And of course, for your coffee, the Nine Club. Beautiful. Switch flip switch Manny mug. There you go. That is... <laughs> Yours truly on the courthouse stage, man, back in 2003. Was, that thing's high. It's high. People yeah, don't realize 18. how high that thing is. Yeah, it's tall. Yeah. No. Listen, yeah. Andrew, thank you for the gifts. Oh, of course. Of Thanks course. For thank you for show. coming yeah. by. Yeah. And thank you for your time. My oh, pleasure. Thank my you. pleasure. It's I've, been fascinating. But, like I said, I got to go redigest this episode. Well, like, just if you sleep at night, it'll all just get wired in there. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we I text you questions? Like, ask you questions? <laughs> yeah, of course. I'll pass along my number. You can ask questions anytime. And uh, thank you. I learned a ton. I had a great time. Bro. I feel uh, like this was time very well spent. Oh, and, yes. Uh, I'll be back. Please nice, come yeah. back. Oh, my God. Andrew Huberman. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't want this to end. You want to keep it going? Why do I... No. <laughs> <laughs>